Welcome to the only big time team event in the entire FGC. This is the Street Fighter League World Championship. You have Japan, what most hail as the strongest region in the world. They just had the hardest season of Street Fighter League to date. And who better to walk away as the champions than Team FAV? Early on, things were very competitive, but in the second half, they reached a whole new level. But what else could you expect when you've got two EVO champions under the same banner? In Street Fighter League US, things were a bit more personal. Week one, Mina RD calls his shot. He lets it be known. Team Master has to go down. Fast forward later in the season, he gets exactly that. In the RD and the Bandits, your SFL Season 6 champion! But please believe, it took more than a two-time Cap Thorpe Cup champion for Team Bandits to get to the promised land. He needed his teammates. Oh my god, he might just do it! Level 3, that's two rounds! Who's that? Oh, he took his back oh, And last but not least, Street Fighter League EU. Amongst all the chaos, amongst the madness, the fireworks, one team seemed to remain still. And that was Zero Zero Nation, led by the uncaged tiger that is Phenom. No, 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 and the calm confidence of Lord Venom, this team is the definition of a threat. We've got a problem. We've got three teams, but only one can walk away as champions. Bandits, Zero Zero Nation, FAV Gaming. Who you got? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the team battle of the century. It's the inaugural Street Fighter League World Championship for Street Fighter VI. My name is Vicious, here with my boy Jammers, representing both the US and the EU to see which team will be crowned our very first champions here in Street Fighter VI. I've been looking forward to this one for months, watching SFL US, being part of SFL EU. Shout out to Logan Summer and f -word. and of course, watching when I had a little bit of time for SFL Japan. Some of the world's best players are featured in these world's championships. As we said, just to recite the same lines, there can only be one winner by the end of the day. But we got to look at these fixtures that are coming up because I'm looking forward to just everyone playing, the team strategy, the self-analysis, and the teamwork that's going to be happening here. Boy, I cannot wait. There's going to be such an importance when we get to see who's going to be playing off against who and in what position. For those of you that have been following along with Street Fighter League, we have so many of the rules to go by in just a little bit. But before we get to that, let's preview what the brackets actually look like, or the matchups, I should say. Man, start things off. The representatives from Team US. Bandits going up against FAB Gaming, hailing from Japan. Yes, and then, of course, the next one will be FAV Gaming, then going up against the EU champions, Zero Zero Nation. And then after that, Zero Zero Nation have to play a game back to back, going up against the US champions, Bandits once again. So this group stage is going to be 
Probably just as deadly as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's gonna be a lot of a lot of flavor thing. when it comes to the matchups that are gonna be at hand. And also, I want to see what the research is gonna be like, and if it's gonna be True. executed well to a T. Because some of these players we haven't really seen just yet. I know we've been tuning in all week long for Capcom Cup. But before I digress, let's talk about the rules, right? The home and away format is still gonna be used for the qualifier stage. And of course, considering the three contenders, it's gonna be round robin style. But the point system, the point system remains the same in this phase with 10 points awarded in the first and second match, whereas the third match will be awarded 20 points. Now, if there's ever a tiebreaker within the team set, an extra player match will be played to determine that five extra points to break the tie. Yeah, and you can see it on there as well, just to clarify it for you guys as well. The group stage teams will be randomly assigned home and away sides. That's going to be important. We'll talk about that when we come to that. The away team has to declare their lineup in advance. And in the final stages, we're used to seeing in the regular season first to 40 points, but now it's going to be extended from first to 70 points, as you saw, where we got to playoff stages, and it will be the same here as well. And each time, there will be team swapping home and away side for their advantage. But they're not just playing for pride. They're not just playing for those rings. They're going to be playing for an abundance of prize money to fill up those bank accounts. I imagine playing some Street Fighter. Ooh, here it is, wait. right here. It's going to be first place awarded 80,000 USD, by the way. Let me repeat, USD, $80,000 there. Second place will be awarded 40,000 and third place will be awarded 30,000. So the fact is you're rewarded for just being in attendance. You get that, what we like to call the appearance fee. The appearance but fee is, is actually correct, yes. Listen, but then you have to get the cherry on top of that. You want the appearance fee and you want to get the dub and listen. I'm admiring those rings. I need some more yeah. glamour and glitz. You know, and those rings right there, I'll let you boy if you don't need them. I, I was really hoping that all the teams would kind of gather together on the stage with their rings on for a photo op. True. That would be actually godlike. I wonder if they would make like a separate ring for like the world championships. I would love to see that. But either way, as it stands right now, they're going for that title of the very first SFL world champions for Street Fighter Six, And that is a huge deal. That is the biggest title that you ever asked for. And also, it might be the biggest target on your back when it goes into the next season. I love to see that type of animosity when it comes to everybody gunning for the champions. Well, this is going to be interesting because we do have some very introducing, oh, sorry, interesting introduction videos for these guys. But I want to start off by introducing FAV Game. When it comes to the fighting game community, there are a few in the same tier as the man sitting to my left. Sako, it is a pleasure to have you, bro. Sako, Tokido, Bonchan, Ryusei, all on one team. That sounds unbelievable. How did this team come together? Uh, what does it mean to you to fight your way all the way to the Street Fighter League World Championship with this team? Yeah, more a cycle. SFL has a brand new champion with FAV Gaming. Everyone on your team has so many individual accomplishments, EVO championships, things like that. What are some of the challenges that you faced trying to win as a team? The challenge is that Street Fighter 6 is a very interesting あの、毎日練習してるの発見が多くて、ま、それをいかに対戦に結びつけるかっていうのは、ま、それはすごいみんな練習してるところだと思います。Stop ドクトクなプレイヤーなんで、あの、練習するたびに新しい発見があるっていうか、練習の仕方、ま、トキドはすごいストイックに練習したり、ま、ボンちゃんのそのプレイスタイルもかっこいいし、ま、流星のプレイ
mention that enough, but again, a lot of these guys have been such an influential part of a lot of the players, not only just in Japan, but also in the world. So it's really great to see such a powerhouse of a team really take it upon themselves to not only, you know, show up, do the work, and also lead by example, but also giving back to the rest of the community, because I know for sure that they've also taught a lot of the other players even after Street Fighter League had ended. So again, big ups to FAV Gaming. I love their work ethic. I love the things that they've been doing, but going into the next one, when we talk about really, really strong teams, really well-informed teams, it has to be going towards as well the Bandits representing Team US. Let's take a look at the team composition and what you're in for when it comes to the US champs. With Team Bandits, leader representing the Dominican Republic, Mena RD. It was a long four year build up, bro. It took a whole lot of time for you guys to finally win Street Fighter League United States. And now it has happened. What was that journey like? Bro, I remember like the, the first time uh, I was in Street Fighter League, it was because of people that, that missed. You know, Kaba and I weren't supposed to even be there. We were replacements. So it all started there. Man, let's go. Mena RD was the one who did it. Then I remember the next year we did the, the bandits thing and it was it was really rough you know it was crazy you know there was like a shot of me walking out and everything because it was it was too much you know then we did the the Nasrx bandits it came down to to the match that really mattered it, things didn't work out Chris ECH eliminates NASA bandits oh you know i lost to Chris ECH that is crazy finally this time i wasn't even thinking about that you know I, in my in my mind i, I was thinking about this i, I gotta beat Nasser. and everything happened perfectly you know i had to fight them in the finals it was like a movie too i remember the, the vibes that day everything was amazing so that experience it, it's hard to put it in words but it was it was just special this should be it man the rd and the bandits your sfl season six champions goals down. so in the beginning of the season week one you immediately called your shot I want to take the title away from Nasser this year. Oh, okay. So you bring up Nasser. You yeah. bring up Angry Bird right yes. there. I have a friendly rivalry, but it's, it's a real, it's a real rivalry with Angry Bird. You know, like in game, I don't, I don't want to see Angry. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to eliminate him. And he took evil from me. You know, it took away from from my legacy. And I wanted to take Street Fighter League away from him. Let's you go! thought and Mena RD, the runback yeah. is complete. Are you going to be the first ones, Team Bandits? Will you be the first ones? to bring Street Fighter League United States a world championship? I think that Street Fighter League US is the best Street Fighter League out there. First, we I think we have the toughest competition. Like, I don't think there's a team in the finals that's stronger than what we already fought. And the second thing is we have the best production, we have the best product, everything. And that's that's how I feel. And it's, it's a little bit disappointing, it's a little bit shameful that Street Fighter League US doesn't have a world title, you know? So, for sure, I think for sure we're bringing that title home. All right, Mena, uh, players talking to you, brother, and good luck today. Such a down-to-earth two-time Capcom Cup champion there. And again, it's great to have a player like him in the scene, and it probably is even better for someone as instrumental as Mena RD to be on Team Bandits. That captain's contribution, that reassurance that he has with the team and his confidence permeates throughout it. So I'm actually looking forward to how they play throughout the day today. Because again, what is there not to love about the guy? And of course, they had a rivalry, a camaraderie with Team NASA. And boy, did they regret not joining forces because Bandits did emerge victorious for SFO. Yes, you heard it there. I think we are the best league in all of the leagues there. So hopefully he can put the money where his mouth is because there is a lot of money on the line here for SFL US. So again, always love listening to Mena RD. Wise words from the young and like he said, the FGC is in good hands when it comes to the future of this community here. But now we've got to transition to people from my backyard, the respective region. They have some of the best Scandinavian players in the world. And with the addition of someone new, it brought them to the title. Let's check out Zero Zero Nation. Street Fighter League EU stand up. I am with the leader of you guys winning team, Team Zero Zero Nations, Dino. You know, I feel like a lot of people were looking at the other teams. They didn't look at you guys as favorites, but yet here you stand. What a comeback! I think most people looked at our team as like, they knew we were very good, but they were like, nah, but you know, they probably won't win or something. You know, that kind of, that type of mindset. Oh my God! What's I gonna do? Oh my play. God! Oh. No! And when do you think there was like that that big shift where you're like, yo, we really are, we really are the best team here, like officially in practice. It felt like it when because we beat BMS in the regular season, 40-0. 
And then we beat Mouse 25, 20 and 30, 10 in the regular season. So we beat both teams. The, the way we were playing against the best teams, we were, we were beating them consistently. That's when we kind of had a feeling that we just needed to play our best and we, we had a really good chance of winning. Oh. Sometimes, you know, a player on, on any given team might have a, a lull, a, a low moment where they're not performing that well. Yeah. How do you guys handle that? For example, like with Reichman, he had some matches where he was supposed to win, but then he dropped something. That loss spiraled into more losses in the regular season. However, don't focus so much on like win rate or, or these sort of things because that's all in the past anyway. Like the match tomorrow is the most, it's always the most important, right? The next match. And then when we get into the playoffs, he won at a very important moment, which is in the grand final against Mr. Crimson. Oh, Rickman's body gets his first points on the table in Yakas. And I would rather he win there. Where it count the most. Where it count the most. Mm -hmm. And uh, and losing the regular season, then the opposite, then winning all the time in the regular season, and then and then losing when it when it counts the most. So that was I was very happy about that. I think I think we handled that uh, that pretty well. I would say. You guys safe to say since yeah, you guys yeah. are the champions. Yeah. Oh, no, I believe it. Zero zero nation have secured their place at the World Championships. Phenom, congratulations on an amazing season, and I'm wishing you. you the best of luck in the Street Fighter League World Championships. Today. Thank you. Man, I love seeing those guys every single year because there's such there's such an energy about them, but also uh, it's, it's, they're, it's it's crazy. Like the way that they play and also the way that they held themselves on, on a personal level. Dude, Phenom is such a goofball, by the way. I absolutely adore that, and I think he's one of the funniest dudes. Loki, he's one of the funniest dudes I've ever had the pleasure to talk to. Uh, Veggie as well. I think you know he's such a sweetheart, but also a really really dynamic force and comes to his team right he knows how to really like talk it out with some of his teammates i've heard some of the discussion when it was in english of course because there be you know it's, it's a little hard to get the translation but uh I, I think with the addition of lord venom into the mix he's been so dominant at so many of the local and weekly scenes that i felt like it was just such a interesting fit right i think uh overall him just being on the team with his presence as jp and then immediately kind of like after what a couple of weeks completely gelling with the team, I thought that was great. I thought that was just because of the, the dynamic duo of Phenom and uh, and Veggie. But Rickman's Barnett also, we saw he had a little bit of a rocky start, but he finally found his confidence towards the end. I hope that exact confidence is still here to this day to see how he performs for the teams. Earning points when it matters indeed, but we will be seeing Zero Zero Nation shortly as we do set up this first match here to determine who will be actually going to the finals there. Because remember, if you don't do well here, you vacate the premises with 30,000 USD. So I think that's, uh, that's a little bit of that's a not bad. Hey, if you, consolation if they prize. It, we'll take it. Uh, you happy. know what I'm saying? And a ring as well. I'm going to keep going on about those rings. But hey, let's go and look at that first fixture here for the SFL World Champions. It will be Ooh. Team Bandits going up against Team FAV Gaming. So i got to say, I'm going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. FAV Gaming, statistically speaking, probably have the best team in the whole of all the SFLs. I think you are correct in regards to their win record, their personal record as well. You can see it, right? And this is the team order. We're going to talk about the significance, but as it stands, Tokido is the first match, followed by Ryusei second. Bonchan is going to be hanging out in third for that anchor seat. And Sakunoko, well, he's going to be coaching, I feel like. But just in case, he might be playing for that fourth match if need be. Well, this is the thing. Bonchan, you heard it from Sakunoki in the interview, his playstyle is cool and he is a solidified anchor player there. He is actually so reliable, it's ridiculous. That's why I said this team is all well-rounded. It's good to see Tokido playing here because I'll mention this later on as well. He didn't actually feature in the SFL Japan World Finals. That is how in-depth his team actually is and he's going to be going up here first. Ryusei, second place at the JP, not spoken about as much as Kakaru and Nemo, I would say, and other JPs around the world. But hey, you're not going to be disappointed with this JP from Japan. It fits his play style absolutely beautifully. Now, of course, just to reiterate, this is the away side. They have exposed their order, which means Team Bandits get to counter accordingly with the home side. So I am very curious to see who they're actually going to put up first to counter Tokido. So I did talk to the Bandits camp about this, actually. We were both kind of curious. Like, what happens if Tokido is up first? Do you send... Ooh. I was going to ask, do you send Mena to go in to face off for the Ego match, really, because Mena is a huge fan of Tokido, or do you even send up Chris Tatarian for the mirror match, because he would love to do that. But statistically speaking, Kaba being up first, this is just fine. This is playing to win. This is not playing to be fans of so-and-so. This is a challenge for the team. This is do or die time. So Kaba stepping up to the plate. I do like this against Tokido. If we're looking at it again on paper, 
<clears throat> this is strategical. This is actually perfect. However, as well, what you have to remember, just going off of my recent times in the Capcom Cup group stage, mm -hmm. Kaba had an amazing, sensational performance against Angry Bird in his group matches. So this makes a whole lot of sense here. Now, it is going to be interesting because they do have a wealth of Gal experience over in Japan. Well, I could say that for all 20 characters in Japan. But then, of course, how much true experience does he have against Tokido? Because I know these guys have been grinding it real hard in the practice room in the hotel here. So I have the utmost confidence how Kaba will perform here. Tokido, we haven't seen him in the group stage because he wasn't we qualified. Haven't. We only saw him at the LCQ, the LCQ which yeah. he did make it joint fifth there. But here is where he really shines. He's been making content. He's been practicing. He's been discussing. He's doing everything a true role model like him for the FGC has been doing. But now it's time to go back to the roots and play for pride and the points for FAV. Yeah, we talk about from both camps. This is an entirely different type of atmosphere. Normally we go head to head, one on one, whatever you like to call it. I think, I think having the, the team behind you kind of getting that extra perspective on what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, what to be aware of. I think that really, really adds that extra challenge against both teams. So we'll see how this is going to play out. Kaba and Tokido again for the rule set. It's going to be two out of three games for this stage. The first game, the second game. Yep, there'll be 10 pointers and the anchor match. It will be 20. And if we have to go to a tiebreaker, they will be playing a best of one for five points. But just to echo what you're saying before, this just goes back to what I said at the start of the hour with the whole self-analysis and the teamwork. How do they integrate with one of them, work in tandem? Because this is going to be huge. And remember as well, this is something myself and F-Word mentioned. Uh, yourself and Tacey might have talked about it as well. Yes. The characters in this game hold a different kind of weight team environments yes, than yes, yes. in solo environments. So this is why I do feel FAV on paper have the best team. Three of the top five, four of the top five, depending on who you ask in the game. It's well balanced. Bandits, just because of their camaraderie and their understanding, and of course, you haven't even spoken about Xiao Hai yet. Because Xiao Hai is He's got, a, a very good I think, roster. three different characters under his belt. Yep. Either Jury, JP, or Ken. It, well, yeah, there's all three. And he's actually been practicing all of them. I mean, if you want to throw in the Kami in there, you can. But the three characters I've seen him predominantly True, yeah. play is the Jury, the JP, and the Ken. And he's actually formidable with all three. And because the men has got a JP as well, so he's even got even more understanding right. of the character. Right. So Ryusei might not be able to catch him off guard. Makes sense here, but... This is going to be huge because it's to determine who gets to the finals. These these first couple of games are going to be so integral, vicious. Coming in from the home side as well, being able to snipe out some of the big counter picks to set things off is ever so important. That drawing also, I always blame the drawings on Rob TV. It's never really Ringe's fault. He's the guy just catching everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know Rob can hear me out on the stage. That is definitely his fault. So Group F and the current seeding for the group stage here for, or at least the, the, the team matches here for Street Fighter League. So, Be sure to thank Rob. Well, yeah, what, what you're saying is Rob's available for hire if you want to mess up the World Cup or the Champions League. Yeah. Final. Shouts to the football fans or soccer fans go. back at home. At Rob TV, you can find him anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> if you can't find him, you'll hear him. So it'll be interesting to see if this hypothetically goes to the bonus stage. Will they use Sakunoko? Will they just rely on the front three? Which will be interesting as well. Because again, most of these guys, they didn't make it as far as they wanted to in the LCQ. Mm -hmm. But I guess they were prioritizing. And priority in fighting games, especially when you're like competing back-to-back -back weekends and whatnot, is a huge deal here. I mean, looking at the way they played out in Japan, like you're not necessarily forced to play the fourth player. 100%, I think from yeah, it's not, any you're not moments, obligated. according to my stats, like any moment where they had to play in the tiebreaker, they would always send up like their strongest for that day. Yes. So it really depends on like how the matches go here. If they're not as confident, sure, they might just send up Sakonoko to kind of like refresh their spirits or at least give a different look to the other teams, right? But um, yeah, I think with their mentality, they're obviously going to go with their strongest suit, in my opinion. We did that in SFL EU as well. It was just like whoever the best three is. And it makes sense, yeah. Whoever's the most suitable, whoever is the most like frightening for the enemy team. Uh, that was huge there as well. And like you said, these characters hold a different kind of weight when it comes to team tournaments here. And again, it's going to permeate and affect the whole team. But like I said, with Bandits, having Mena there as that huge reassurance, even if they drop the 10 points, they're still in the dogfight because, yeah. again, there are possible tiebreakers that happen here. The guys are getting ready to go. We've watched this matchup several times throughout the past couple, eight, nine months. But will be the first match of the SFL World Championships, ladies and gentlemen. Let's bring it. Man, this is exciting. This is exciting. We spent so long covering all three regions, whether we were working it, whether we were watching it as fans at home. 
this is here. This is it right here. The culmination of all that hard work. Here we go. Game one, Kaba versus Tokido and Bandits versus FAV Gaming. Now we're already seeing Tokido trying to encroach on that space here and use normals instead, but he gets punished by one of the best crouching roundhouses in the game here. Not losing too much drive gauge or regular damage. The process here. I'm always so surprised how that target combo still reaches out that far. The second part Dude. of the down forward heavy kick. When F word spot it like showed me that like ages ago, I yeah. just can't unsee it now. And he done it again with the target combo into the gal high kick. <laughs> Speaking of which. Third time's the charm, maybe? You think Takino's gonna go for a sweep again? Uh, I think he's trying to... Uh, yeah. he went for okay. a sweep again? I don't know if he's trying to catch the extended hitbox to maybe a Sonic Cross or maybe the Sonic Boom as it comes out, but it's not really working out right now for Tokido. No, it looks a little preemptive, if I'm not mistaken, right? He's not really looking for the boom and reacting to it. Well, again, you can actually use these normals to actually... And that's gonna be the round, unfortunately. For Ooh. Tokido, that was a very risky and aggressive round that didn't work out there, so Kaba takes that quite comfortably. And I like that, assessing the risk, just a back jump instead of even trying to guess the situation where there's a frame trap to throw. I don't even think Ken can chase back jumps like that unless he has level 2 or something. I'll have to mm. double check later, but he is in the amber here until he replaces that drive gauge. Almost got a clean jump in there. Jesus, speaking of clean jump ins, Kaba does get one with a side switch from the knee bazooka. The forward throw as well, threatening with the blade. Upside down, that could have been punished, but he gets a punish counter roundhouse here and he will go for the dragon like side swap and he will chase him down again. He has to at this point. Out there, crouching medium punch, no good punish there for Tokida. Probably caught the movement, but now he's gonna pay for it. Level three, Kaba tried to escape with possibly a jump again, but Tokido making it hurt. He does have the drive out. gauge afterwards. Maybe he'll dash up and bait. No, he's gonna walk up nice and easy. Now, this works out for Kaba. I know he's low on drive gauge, but he's still got level three in the perfect parry. Something he was actually so brilliant at in the group stages there against Angry Bird. Could lose this round with the chip. Good block! And that's so difficult to manage, too, because Guile, you want to maintain that charge just for that factor of threatening with the CA, but still, Tokido testing his limits, Kaba responding in kind just wasn't enough, right? The chip damage was still going to be happening, but no, he actually got hit normally. Okay, not using Roundhouse anymore. Tokido, and he finally gets a fortuitous jump there into the story. You can watch Kaba's response. He will block it out. Go for the target combo there. Still coming it out here, and then he goes for the OD Jin right into the safe jump. Kaba's gonna need to, yeah, he's trying to get the level three. He thinks Tokido's actually gonna run at him, run into the roundhouse. Right, Rashid, he's got no level three. Surely he doesn't, but he gets the space generated. The aggression totally pays off of that drive rush. Still trying to recreate that space, but no Tokido on him again with the throw. Here's the setup. No, he didn't risk a defensive option. He's still not doing it here. He's on his last legs. So he's got to force something, but Tokido was well aware of that. Super vigilant. Oh my! He didn't have enough life to contest it with a drive impact. The only cho choices he had had were the parry or reaction super. Yes, and that could have been Sonic Hurricane or Crossfire Somersault. Those are charges. Hey, look, if he was audacious and he was super confident in that situation, which he probably weren't, he could have thrown as well for the back throw. There were Perhaps. tons of things he could have done from the third eye, but unfortunately, Tokido identified that. Yeah, yeah, I don't I, what a turnaround for the first round, by the way. We saw those sweeps. There's no context sweeps. And now all of a sudden, he's managed to get Kaba fixated on something else. Firmly on the ground, I should say. I like that. Just kind of walking into it. Kaba checked the space, forcing Tokido into that crouching jab. Now the low medium kick's ringing out. Tokido still trying to look for that space to let some of his own roundhouses fly and get at least a single to get started. Trying to chase down after the OD fireball. Well, Rinch pointed it out before how Tokido utilizes the stand roundhouse in terms of spacing and what his choices are afterwards. And that, that was a very lucky jumping roundhouse that connected there. It's too far away to punish the stand medium kick on that upside down kick. That looked like max, max distance. Still gotta get a sweep there. He's trying to catch a projectile. Yeah, it has to be. It's been a very sound start, I feel like, in the fireball war between both. But Hito, now with, while he's in that roundhouse range, he tried to throw out a, throw out a standing short. Kaba immediately punishing him for it for the roundhouse. But notice the buttons that Kaba's using, and then it's Tokido's win punish and gets the, yet yeah, full conversion. Punish counter light, love those conversions in this game. Tokido's got a bonus to drive gauge to work with, so he can actually turn this around, but it is Kaba with a colossal life lead at the moment. He ain't moving. He's yeah. willing to chuck booms at all times at that space. He ain't moving. Death by a thousand cuts, unless Tokido has other plans. Oh, he's, he's tantalizing the space for the roundhouse to see it either uh, be too close for the whiff punish or not, or be too close for the punish in general or not. The classic dial throw bait, jab after the drive rush, back that to the stand fist because it moves you forward and doesn't work. 
His walk speed is rather deceptive, though. I, I didn't get to see like the stats on it. I don't know if it's like normal or like average, but it looks really, really deceptive. Oh, he gets whiff punished for his button there into the crouching conversion. I know it's there from Tokido, and he's gonna go for an empty jump. Oh, but still, he's done. He hasn't done anything. Oh, I was literally about to say, he hasn't done about to say anything it. on defense until that point, but it will be the level two that does. Do you do it again? Oh, oh but it's a different look. The Sonic Hurricane rings out. Good call. He didn't want to burn himself out via the OD flash kick, so it was Sonic Hurricane. That was a safer option. Still punishable. Though. It's away. Yeah, oh, up. chase behind it. More than enough damage, and just in case. Peppering in the OD Tatsumaki, I like that. We gotta give Tokido credit for the spacing on that OD5. He moves back to throw it out to make sure that he was gonna get the drive rush down face afterwards. Oh, got the overhead. A lot more aggression coming in from Kaba. Ah, Damn! He got one hit. That was. I don't agree with that. I understand it sent it full screen, but what you got for what you spent was a way out. Mm -hmm. Punch a medium punch this time around. A lot more than crunch a medium kick. Interesting. And again, you have to remember the projectiles are poking tools as well here. There's a back face into the drag rush cancel. The spacing that Kaba is taking up is really, really awkward for Torpedo. You can kind of see it. He's very reluctant to throw out those roundhouses. Even in the medium range, he doesn't even want to try to counter poke. Without these booms coming out, he's not even trying to risk it. He's going to walk it up, try to parry in, and even trying to predu uh, predict the jump. Well, what's been interesting as well is Torpedo's actually been playing super patient, not belligerent. He's actually been playing at the pace Kaba has been setting. He's been comfortable doing that until he gets a perfect parry on the Sonic Ooh. move, but too close it seems to get the dry rush the appears from the roundhouse there. And again, he's gonna have to take a big risk at some point, but it looks like he wants to play that safe approach with the dry rush cancel from the catch immediate kick. And he yeah. will go into that super art three, and he actually will give him the advantage of the drive gauge here. And he's gonna be very careful with these defensive options, especially that level three. Walk up again, knocking on the door two times with the Fierce, ending it with the Jin Rai, Kaba. Now he's gonna get the Solid Puncher. Level two coming in, the, view, the drive reversal, excuse me. I was gonna say Street Fighter five things, but. Oi. <laughs> here we go, backs away here, burnout is Kaba. He still has level one to work with, so he can actually bait uh, Togeta to front of projectile, but he doesn't even need to because he gets the upside down wow. kick. Which clips Tokido and makes it one apiece there. I love the way that the higher level Guile players are utilizing upside down kick from its max distance, because obviously its properties have substantially changed from Street Fighter V's iteration till now. And again, there are ranges where Ken can punish it with stand media kick into the target combo. That's the safest thing to do. Mm -hmm. But it's the, it's, way, it's the way they seldom use it, just in general. Right. Now talk to me about like the pacing of both matches, right? I feel like, you know, Kaba has really adjusted to what Tokido's game plan was, so he started to play a little bit more compact, right? Tokido had a very unorthodox way of thinking in the first game because of how many haphazard sweeps we saw. Right. And then he just completely changed it up, played much safer, used the safer and faster kick buttons, crouching medium kick, stand light kick, was even parrying as well, throwing a fireball. And then he took a couple of risks with the jump, but then he's just been able to slow it down and match mm. Kaba's pace, despite this being not a diabolical matchup for Ken, but it is a pretty uphill. It can be a mountainous challenge. But I wonder if they're going to rev it up. It looks like Tokido wants to do that. Did check the walk back from Kaba, that's why we got that light conversion in the first place. That roundhouse bringing out again. A lot of heavy buttons coming from Tokido. It's only a matter of time before Kaba is going to strike with that counter hit. Of course, he, he actually determined he can use a heavy because of the frames that Tokido is trying to steal. A good punish there with the stand light kick. Got to be very careful with some of these normals Kaba's throwing out. And there will be a Sonic Hurricane to get the space he needs. No Sonic Blade yet. Great as well. And the DI, yeah, Ooh. you've got to be very careful throwing projectiles when you're trapped in the corner as Guile because. Even if you block, you'll get wall splatter because you're not ready to react in time. And it's going to put Tokido at match point here. Very, very fortunate to drive him back like that. And what a delayed standing jab after that drive rush. But luckily for Kaba, didn't have to face the rest of that combo. Tokido had dropped it. Interesting. Oh, nice my. check with the target combo and the crouching medium punch there. It's away as well. Again, I love Tokido's meticulous spacing up at this range here. Damn, that punish! Again, it was that situation where it was only one hit, though. It, it, it's fine, because it's working out in terms of space. I, I just don't disagree. I, I don't agree with the damage he's getting for it, but that's just me being finicky. Putting it down here. Again, he's always had substantial life leads, and Tokido just knows how to walk him down and pounce when it really matters. Leering at that drive Damn, page. that was meaty. Roundhouse again. He needs a charge. He's got the charge in that roundhouse there. OD flash kick to get him away. Yeah, uh, solid puncher. Perfect, perfect way to set yourself up. I like the micro walk as well, just in case the driver does to come out there. But Tokido has made his choice. He's probably accepted that he might get burnt out. But solid puncher disappears. 
played as well. Tokido still within enough space to get that parry off so he doesn't face any damage towards the drive gauge. And I'm liking this still. Kaba gonna be relentless. The was coming out, but... He wants one full combo from a crouch medium punch, a light or something, because he needs the drive rush cancel and he almost got it there. Throw. Closing the distance, reducing the deficit here. This is getting really tense for Kaba. It's a matter of who runs out of drive gauge first. It just might be Kaba. Actually, it wouldn't even matter if he could get himself into the yellow. And he will go for it's all or nothing here. Shinru Repa's going to do the trick. It's not going to be the round. But the only option is Sonic Hurricane. And I think Tokido is highly aware of that. And he's still through the fireball anyway. I can't believe he's still through the fireball anyway. There we go. Woo! I think he was very cognizant of how Kaba was playing on Wake Up, which is why he decided to take the risk there and throw that five when it beat you five. It probably would have caught him up at the start. I know something Hurricane is pretty fast, but you need a little bit of yeah, space for it to work and beat the projector. I couldn't tell you exactly in that moment which strength fireball that was. I'd have to watch the replay. I'd imagine he'd want to go for the heavy, but still, I feel like it's still something you could react to or at least slow enough perhaps but maybe you gotta make we'll the see. executive decision to charge and let go of the charge or just firm it out there right. but again like i said what a start from kaba setting pace tokido tried a different plan it didn't work luckily he had a contingency which turned everything around a few fortuitous jumps and then after that once he had the jumps it's going to be instilled in your mind that he might do it again and it's free of charge the cheaper and the more damaging it is the better whatever outcome you want when you go on the offense but he just perfect parried fireballs, walked forward. That too, I was going to say, I think yeah. there were a couple of moments where he had the right reads and also just threw that out, that drive impact. That also really, really lingers in your mind, especially in that corner. Majority of the time when you're looking for drive impact, it happens if there was a heat map in the corner. So having that stack on to the mental for Kaba, a lot of decisions to be made on defense, but Takeda was just picking it apart every single time. I'll tell you what's interesting, and I spoke to Takamura about this uh, back at the hotel. <laughs> It's the Ken players that are actually getting away with DI wall splat in the corner the most. You think so? Just, I, he, he, I do does, think it do is. They, do you and Takamura believe that? Oh, well, Takamura told me that, and I can't unsee it, and I have noticed it. You see with Angry Bird doing the special cancel right, buttons into right. it, I actually see like a lot of arbitrary DIs from the Ken players. It does work because of everything you've got to think about, right? His throw loop situation, just his pressure with the stand fears, mm. facing the stand roundhouse. I mean, it's not far-fetched, so... It's not. It's not. I, I would low-key kind of agree with you. I want, <laughs> I want to know, like, which uh, other members of the cast can kind of do that, but looking into it, too, anytime Kaba had had that level 2 from early on, it, it usually spelt trouble for Tokido, but I think he adjusted quite well to it as, uh, as, as the rounds went on. Yeah, he looked super comfortable as time went on, and again, this is it. This is why Perfect Parry makes a lot more matchups doable. Because again, if Perfect Parry wasn't here, I would have told you this is like a hard 6-4, maybe a hard 7-3 if we're talking about matchup numbers. But Perfect Parry, especially navigating those heavy normals and certain projectiles and this projectile speed, oh, it's a man. huge deal that he needs there as well. We, we, had just missed, we had just missed like the startup of the fireball and the speed of it all. I really wanted to see like how fast, if it was actually reactable. Probably, probably could have been a light fireball. Probably could have been like mm. viable, but even then, again, it all determines on the speed, and Kaba had a lot to think about as well, and he had a, a lack of resources because he only limited down to the Sonic Hurricane anyway. Right. But again, that was only the first match of the entire day. They're well played to Tokido for getting the 10 points for his team, 10 points closer to the victory, and a more conducive position for FAV Gaming. So who are you putting up if you're team, part of the Team Bandits cap going up against Ryusei's JP? Ooh, I, I like I'm, Chris Tatarian for this I, one. To I'm, I'm torn between Mena and Chris. Uh, you could throw in Zhao Hai. I, I probably think Zhao Hai might be a good pick here as well. And there nice you work. have it. It would be Zhao and Hai. And funny enough, it's it Zhao Hai's Ken as okay. the pick. No, I like that. I like that a lot too. Well, okay, we're on a similar wavelength because we assumed the Ken play was We thought it was going to be Ken, exactly. Step up to the plate here, and it will be Zhao Hai this time around. Like we said, he's got a main, a secondary, and a tertiary character, and it looks like he's going with the Ken here. Now, of course, FAV Gaming, in terms of balance and understanding, they've got a very strong Ken Tokido on their side as well. So they've spoken about this. They've, they've actually labbed things. They've talked about it. It's all there. And I want to see... What's interesting about Zhao Hai to me is his perception like mid-match because you play JP right. at a significant level. And it's not easy to do that, right? Especially when you're trying to juggle a jury, a Ken, and a JP in the game. So I want to see his perception on how to deal with it. Ryusei, like we said before, 
I don't think he's spoken about enough for me. I think this character fits in beautifully in terms of his anime uh, fighting game history, as well as using Yurin, one right. of the strongest Yurins right. in Street Fighter V. So I'm really looking forward to what he's Come got on. here to show us. He did have a bit of a rough season in the first phase of it all in Street Fighter League Japan. He also got sick midway through, but in the playoff stage, he was looking entirely different. There was something about him that had changed in terms of his gameplay and his recognition. His game sets overall had leveled up significantly, and his damage conversions have been so, so high up there. I think he's an effective JP machine now. Oh, there you go, try to check a drive rough, but we saw Zhao Hai hold it just a little bit and catch it, the crouching medium punch with a jab there. Again, there's an amnesia to kick things off. And there you go, oh interesting. That was a what fair, exchange. A very expensive exchange from both ends, actually. Awesome. JP can afford it, but can he's still working off those debts. Ah, uh, no, it's fine. Not going to take him a few years. Oh, there we go. There's going to be burn out there from the departure teleport. He's going to take off as much chip as he can while Zhao Hai tries to find a way in. Jesus, all that chip and plenty of dip left for Ryuse. He's still got some in the tank. That trade-off is great off of the overhead. That was delayed, I feel like, for the target combo. And I'm surprised Zhao Hai challenged there, knowing that that's probably a thing that JP can do in general against burnt out opponents there. So it actually gives him the first round there for Ryuse. Beautifully executed thus far for Ryuse. Again, the game sets and just the... The scenario recognition has been so on point for the young JP player. Hey man, the burnout situational awareness he had there, just knowing the frame advantage was huge. It's going to be pivotal in this long run here. Zhao Hai still Ooh, that was his how drop. to approach. That is punishable, but I can't remember by what. I think it's like negative six or something, mm -hmm. but he went for a safer option there with the drive rush cancel. She's in with the throw. He's going to risk it. He will risk it here. Sure, Amnesia is still an option. Yeah, yeah upon his counter as well. Good One call. more time. Oh, and he delayed it, just knocking on the knees. Crouching jab instead, and a little bit of a stutter step too to convince Ryuse to press that button. Good call on that, uh, throwing the parry there. Holding the parry, that was very audacious. And here comes Lavushka. What's the mix-up going to be from this one? And he actually let it go at the wrong time. So it's actually going to be an unscaled Super R2. No departure set up there. Boy, with punish with the standing fist. God, it hurts everybody. And there you go, gets the throw again. And then he had to Good bust reaction. out. Yeah, he made his choice. Parry, and he's going to get burnt out. He should burn him out, but the combo... Oh, no, he built level two in time. Jeez, he just got that. Yeah, he literally go. just built that up. Does he have enough of the tank, though? If not, he could set up a departure. Understand. His meter management and situational awareness to how much meat he could build. Beautifully done. Well orchestrated spacing. Full awareness, fully awake for Yuse. He's got it unlocked. I love the perfect parry into the dry rush cancel to build the necessary super meter for the Lavushka there. Because again, sometimes it's not about what you get in terms of regular damage. It's about can I build to a greater purpose? And that's what you did with the level two, which guaranteed the burnout. You don't have to do a short combo into the Chornobog level one. He just said, well, look, level twos just take a whole stock of dry gauge away anyway. That's probably the safer bet. I'm willing to do that. So that was, again, the situational awareness Ryusei has shown us in that match alone. I should tell you he should be one of the best around. Little side note, I'm glad you brought your kimono out today. I actually wanted to know if you've ever done the research behind like the special moves that JP has. Well, they're they're it's Russian a, names. So yeah, I know that of course. For sure. Yeah, but there's like there is like a, a little lore behind like each and every one of those things. Like the, the spike, the name of it in Russian. One of them like, is the, one of them is the boogeyman. I can't remember which one it is. Yeah, I think that's the. I think it's. I thought it was the level two. I level two remember. super. Look, they're all boogeyman to be honest. With you, to be honest, yeah, all of them come out. Yeah. Oh, and there you go. Oh, the amnesia gets baited, and he goes for a parry this time round. You should see JP plays using that more and wake up because of the threat of amnesia. And there you go, it's a parry instead. So Archer away. again. He's gonna walk up and take that space. There, he dashes up either way. The objective was get out of the corner quick. Regular jumps yet, sets up an early departure to still create some space and close the that gap. Was a counter. Yeah, it was. I think like Zhao Hai's letting go of parry at slightly wrong timings. Just a slight misjudgment there. Still getting pushed away. He's been very reluctant on how to approach. There but we go. That, and it's gonna be a crouching conversion as well. Beautiful stuff there with the OD Dragon Lash. Ah, uh, you see a little bit of hopscotch looking for the throw bait or any sort of amnesia. Okay, he didn't recover in time to get sure you can. That would have been a big risk there, but this. Throw. Explosive round for Zhao Hai. Yes, that was beautiful stuff there from Zhao Hai. I'm surprised that he's sticking this out with Ken. Well, DI counter. Beautiful read on that. And yeah, you have to read the gym right to make sure you get the punish counter there. So he's going to send in full screen. And it's going to be an arduous task closing the gap. And yes, for you, they have other ideas. Uh, uh, going in now for the corner carry. 
That trade could have been everything. No, that was a fireball. Had. That was supposed oh, to be a fireball or no. something else. Anything but that. But he's not going to cash out fully. He's going to conserve that meter for a better situation. I wonder what it will be. It's his fingers. What a response. Dude, he's not. He actually doesn't care where he lets off these OD Shore Yukes. Definitely not, no. The target combo activating into level two now. What's the defense like? The parry was there. Run out, burnt out. Hey, that's not too bad despite being burnt out. Rare footage of someone actually dealing with the whole thing and still surviving. But this could be the inevitable. Snaps his fingers, but a fireball hits him before Ooh. it comes out. And the standing medium punch closes out that round. And Ryusei is looking to get his team 20 points in the lead. Oh, damn, okay. that was active. Dude, how many he's, been that, he's been doing that a lot like, to, to just occupy that space in preparation for Shaohai moving forward. Any sort of like drive impact, drive rush, excuse me. Dude, that's one of the most peskiest buttons in the game, this crouching media kick. And it's not even special cancelable. He it's, does the job. It's so hard to live punish. It really is. There you go. Holds the parry there. And still, Hai looking for something to turn this around. Gets the Jin right into the shin kick. And he will not get the non cinematic. There you go, try to get delay. I think he's waiting for amnesia or something else. Here comes the Vushka. Is he going to get the side swap? No, he's going to attack the drive gauge instead. And he's still got the conversion. Good idea, but man, you say he's two steps ahead. He's a tenuous punish indeed. And he still checks in with the stand medium punch. Anti air with the Bailina. Oh no! Oh, it's going to be huge. Stab your fingers. He's going to move over. No, he's going to throw out a bunch of the boogeyman still. It looks like he's just going to do the departure and let it automatically detonate. He doesn't need to snap his fingers. Doesn't want to give him any free space here, Zhao Hai. Now he has to run in at this point. But I don't think he's going to get the chance. What a trade-off. He knew it. He was willing to risk it because it would only benefit him with the round win. An excellent, excellent decision. And the awareness overall. As soon as he sees that fireball up, he's like, you know what? This is my favorite. I'm going to go ahead and let this spike in. Once you get some form of knockdown or push your opponent away full screen, legit, just set up a meaty trick, lad, and then they'll just be frustrated. Yeah, they'll just be frustrated into how things work out after that, and then it goes into the whole zoning control yeah. game plan that JP is so notorious for. Now, I, I think my biggest concern with this approach from Zhao Hai was actually the typical approach. We didn't really see any jumps, so I didn't need to see the crouching hard punch anti air. I didn't see a risk with a special, sorry, a drive rush into Dragon Lash. He yeah, actually, yeah, when yeah. he actually did get in, he actually kind of utilized it to the best. He was actually very good at baiting out Amnesia and baiting out perfect parries on Wake Up. I just think when he was mid-screen, full-screen, it was too difficult for him to find the way he was comfortable with in yeah. terms of the approach. I feel like there was a, a lack of Amnesia from the side of you say in the later end of the round. Xiao Hai was looking for a little bit too much at that point, right? You there, was a, there were plenty of times where he was backdashing a couple and just kind of waited and gave Ryuse that space to kind of True. go in with like a medium punch or even check with the low medium kick to create that space, then make it even more so like difficult for Xiao Hai to keep that corner pressure. But I think the last couple of rounds, you see Xiao Hai trying to make that guess against the Amnesia, but overall the presence is neutral. When we talk about it, Ryuse just has so much control. A little bit of a mishap on Xiao Hai's behalf in that sequence, but talk about this corner pressure as well after this throw yeah again it was a mixture of him orchestrating his own difficulties as well as just the awareness and i love the burnout understanding he had <laughs> ryusei there it was really good and then, again even like you said we even see ryusei backing up to get that space and he knows he's trying to go he's trying to tempt jaha to really take that risk and counter accordingly like you see right here full screen and this is what we talk about with the frustration caught the trick left and that what was a guess too or what was a, that was such an assumption that he would dash but, forward but here's the interesting thing about a scenario right because he actually sent him full screen and he's used a phantom already you're going to want to do the od version for the projectile priority right then what do you do you want to run after it that's most, why most of goes, the time stalagmite bang caught you and that's it so that was actually phenomenal play there from ryusei the game says it's crazy right now Dude, man 20 points yeah, the true. FAB. Yeah, going into it. Uh, but this one's a big deal, right? Going into the anchor match, we had Bonchan, who's already solidified from the away spot for FAV Gaming. I'd imagine, yep, there's going to be Mena RD. Again, this is going to be best of five, but it's going to be worth the most, obviously. 20 points to the game. Now, there is a possibility for a tiebreaker. It's just up to Mena RD to make that happen. No pressure. He's a lightning in a bottle. He's done something. He's done the impossible, what we thought would be the impossible in the Street Fighter scene. But again, this is a tall order, regardless of how you look at it. And they will be setting up the Luke Mirror. Don't forget, you will see Men at RD in the last 16 for the Capcom Cup Finals tomorrow. But today, there is another objective, another MO, I should say. It's not a side objective. This is a, this is the main objective just as much. 
It's the other one here, but it looks like ah, he will go. I was yeah. actually going to ask you about that. Do you really think they would actually set it up with Luke for uh, Mena RD? It was a coin toss, essentially, but I think he's, he would have been like effective in the mirror match as well. But Blanca has been his go-to all week long. All it, week long. It Excuse makes me. so much sense. Like, he might have to resort to the Luke if he needs to, but if he's confident in this matchup, I'm not going to blame for it. It will be the illustrious Mena RD going up against Bonchan, highly revered around the world himself. A good start here for Mena RD with the, the hop into throw. A bit of delay there. And the carry into optimal damage. And he actually goes with the screen positioning instead from that perfect carry there. Hops gets the gimmick. He needed that. And it's so difficult to even try to keep Blanca in the corner because of situations of like, like that, being able to hop past your opponent. Well, the one thing you got to remember, we see this with Problem X outside of the forward heavy punch that we're seeing there. Crouching medium punch is one of his best neutral tools. It's so far and it extends past his nail, man. Yeah, five active frames, special cancelable. That's what he really needs to contest with Luke's normals, I should say. And because I feel... Okay, perfect parry. Chase him down. And that was huge drive gauge damage there. Oh, wow. The perfect parry in response, Ben RD. Getting the corner position. Jump. Man, just to jump out from Bonchan? We are playing so many active party games right now. Perfect Brother. parry once again. They are not letting anybody get comfortable with their pressure. He's almost burnt out here, Vicious. Oh! He's going to get it. Yes, sir, he is. Then RD wasn't ready for the counter DI. Level two. He's Razor. bold, baby. This is so important. Not only the damage, but the drive gauge depletion. One throw might do it. He's not going to do that. Instead, the Shelter Earth will counter the stun. He gives up Lightning Beast to keep himself in this fight. He wants to fight two for Nail, and he hops over the DI, and he burns him out. That is so clean. Men RD. No, he couldn't get enough damage, but still, that was actually the sickest play you could have done. Bonchan still ready to rebuttal. Can we just respect how he actually tempted him into doing the DI by staying on the ground with the hop and then timed the hop beautifully to get over that, despite him being in favor for Bonchan there. I thought that was going to be a cross-up, but he did it. Lovely walk back there into the flash knuckle conversion. I've never seen that one before, but I like the juggle to the shoulder tackle anyway. Chase him away. He's trying to get heavy blanket or something to burn him out. Watch out for Bonchan's perfect parries. Here comes the beast. The lightning beast off the OD electricity. What's the mix gonna be like? No, immediately drops down. Perfect parry again. No, he whiffs. And another one. He gets to do it again. Second attempt. Two. Ah, would he have done the medium? Would that have connected? Probably, but he didn't want to risk it. Okay, he's gonna test Bonchan's reactions there, and he's gonna burn him out. This is huge. Can he utilize the last rolling cannon? He's not gonna do it. He's gonna just keep him here. So just weighing it out here. Uh, I see the neutral drop as well. He's trying to goad Mena into doing a DI, but he's gonna threaten the stun instead. He might have to go for an exchange very soon. Let's see what he does. Back medium. Back medium. Back medium again. I love this. The side switch throw. is still a back throw. More than enough damage, Ben. He caught Bon Chan moving, perhaps. I didn't see counter hit on the board. No. And again, full credit to Mena for not even trying to get the obvious low hanging fruit stun there from a DI. Bon Chan, that's what he was looking for. That was an awkward exchange. He did get the counter hit, but Mena RD not going for the confirm. Confirm, instead, just going for the throw. Good anti on the hop. It's the back throw as well. Again, men are just still scheming, trying to test Bonchan's reactions Oof. with the parry, even with the reactions on the anti air as well. Doesn't want to stay cornered for too long. Oh, that was just so awkward for Bonchan. Even he, the beast. Even he kind of shook in his seat for that one. Bonchan's got to sit still for a little bit. He's got drive gauge and resource to deal with this. Yeah, he'll sit there and take this, but here comes the setup that I'm known for. Oh, Ooh. he said no. He said denied. The risk paid off. OD uppercut. There could have been so much more that Menard could have had once he got Blanca Chan electrified. But Bon Chan reassessing that. He's like, you know what? I'll go for that. Oh, Damn. and that's going to be the round, the whip punish on the rainbow roll. And the combo was not even finished. We have got to give again his flowers for dealing with the Lightning Beast and having the correct spacing. He has got well, he's well versed in this matchup, a strong understanding on how to deal with Blanca as a lead player. We've all talked about this before. We love to see what the defense is like once a person is burnt out. That so it really separate the men the from veteran, the boys, the, yeah. The, really, the men from the boys. I would say the veterans from the pros. Even then, because these guys are pros themselves. All right, okay, these guys are having a quick discussion. Those deliberations there. One nil. I remember this is a best of five because it is the anchor match. So the winner of this will be awarded 20 points. If Mena does win this. His team go to a tiebreaker, which they'll play that best of one. But Bonchan, again, his play style's cool. According to Sakanoka, and it's doing the job. It's true. It's doing the job. He's a pretty cool guy.
No. You know, it really comes down to his composure, right? His, his, his situational awareness right now has been through the roof in regards to what Minar ID has been throwing at him. And again, how much Blanca practice is that in Japan? I'm sure like a handful of them, but to, to the degree of Minar ID, it's difficult. Didn't respect the lights there. He thought a tick throw was coming, and there's the grab he was looking for, Mena. And there, yeah, ready. Still, get, still gets the uppercut despite the throw whiffing. Dude, he splurged so much amount of me, even just to stay trapped in the corner there. I know Blanca has got some of the best defensive choices in the Damn. game, but they are still expensive. Speaking of... He's going that cash every time. Let's see if he can take the round. He needs one drive rush cancel. Speaking Off of, of which... the crouch, jab jammers. Are you kidding me? Bonchat, do you think he was just going to go for it regardless? Nah, I think he was probably looking for a confirm, but either way, because he's reacting to a dash, right? So, Oh, even oh then, my dude. God. His understanding of the light and the heavy Blanca ball spacing and the mind games behind them both have so been on stellar. point. Been super successful. Arbitrary slide. Still holding the parry here as well. And this is the thing, if you can't use the blanket ball from max distance, you've got to close the gap, and he did, but no throw on the parry. Nice. He was trying to catch the recovery frame. That, that, that looked like a reaction. He looked like he reacted at the start up here. Yeah. He's going to get rewarded with the Super Art 2. What's Bonchan going to do this time? He woke up OD reversal before. He will block. And here we go. That should combo. No, it doesn't. Too late. He's out of there. Right. One on the board, then ID. Trying to keep it as close as possible. The difficulty for Blank is navigating the neutral. That's what the difficulty is. A lack of buttons here. I haven't seen a crouch fierce because that's actually not even good enough. And ah, there you go. You saw the attempt at the perfect parry, but the light ball just stopping right in front of him. Even Bonchan's still trying to understand what he should do. And there's the check on the driver with the crouching media punch conversion into the up ball. The back medium kick catches him in place. Hold it down here. Bonchan's still trying to find a perfect parry. He's going to have to change defensive options now. He's got to do something else. Max away. Mena's about to get level two. If he just gets him to block a normal, he'll get the level two. That's what he's looking for. Substantial life lead here. And RD willing to just wait it out, get some of that drive gauge back as well to secure that advantage towards... Yeah, he needs a safe cancel. He doesn't want to burn oh. himself out from this scenario. So he does have the level two. Ooh. Tried to catch him checking with a surprise. That's what but I was there's looking the lightning for. Beast. I wanted to see that activation into wow. Lightning Beast. He's building up that drive gauge again, but Bonchan with the defensive reactions, once again, to just stop any sort of mix-ups from happening, but, but find now, yourself burnt out. Dude. His button placement is insane! That's going to be Pale Rider, the CA version here, and he's still going to be in burnout, so he actually has to wait. I mean, he can make a choice here, Mena, but he's going to wake up the eye! Word! In reaction to the fireball, wake up DI from Mena RD. This is what you have to remember. Even when you have half a stop of drive gauge, you can still OD reversal. You can still wake 100%. up DI. And Bonchan thought he was going to play it safe. He was going to be conservative, but he didn't. Now he's going to have to go for the gusto here. Try and get the lead in this first of three. Excellent awareness there from Minardi as we continue on. The drive Slap. impact sneaking it in. Here he comes. There's the blanket chan. Is he going to firm the mix up from this? There's a jab, right? You got to deal with this. Nice combo coming through here. Goes out another one. You want to deal with this? I don't want to deal with it. Look I'm, at the I'm trying to look away damage from that. But that's not our job right now. Oh, G reversal. Oh, he spends the rest of it for the dunk? Okay. Thank you for making my job easier. Yeah, that was uh, a really, really curious decision to make I, I, for Bachan. I, I don't agree with that myself, but... <laughs> okay. He wants to know what he's doing. He's still got a round here, but he's got to deal with the Lightning Beast once again. Right, there you go, look at the drive damage on that, and he did get a perfect parry in time, but I think Mena tried to put it right in front of him to get the throw. He could have got a juggle from that, I believe. He was close enough. Ooh. Again, oh. sneaking out the mini drive impact. Bon Chan not ready for it. Blanca Chan now out of there, but Bon Chan has been so good with some of these crouching jab placements. Me? What? Huh? There you go, indeed. And he's going to go for the crouching OD tackle fears. into the eraser because he needs what? this now. Jammers, he's gonna run away. He tried to run away. He did. I did see it. Still trying to get the crouch medium punch there. I promise you, you can whiff punish Blanca's crouch medium punch with sweeps. It looks got pretty decent sweeps, so I guess he just doesn't want to risk it. Oh, okay. A little awkward. You could hear the groaning from the crowd immediately after that it happened. Von Chan securing another round for himself. I put that jump in. I can't imagine what NRD was trying to go for for that coward catch. Well, he avoided the jump, and I'm not sure if he wanted to get out of the hop and do something else. But... 
working away here at the moment here. He gets the drive rush cancel. Good throw break there. And then, all right, he's switching it up to see what would happen after the light blanket ball. I think he tried to catch the heavy one from that as well. There you go. Perfect carry once again. Drive rush into the damage output. And he tried to go for that just in case Mena woke up with a level one. But your reward is dealing with the lightning beast again. You are low on drive gauge, good sir. What are you going to do this time? Blocks it out. Look at the drive damage on this. This is insane. He's burnt out. And he's done it on his own volition. He said, I'm not dealing with that. Still got a little bit of juice left. Lightning Beast is coming through. No. Oh, okay. Try to bait something. And Bonchan's still thinking he's trying to get an arbitrary DI. Yeah, no cancel from the jump media punch. And I think he's... Yeah, he got hit. There go. Get the space. And he's going to be full screen as well. So this is fine. So Bonchan can just sit still and wait for the drive gauge to come back. His drive gauge is ready and open for business again. It's nearly dead even in regards to life. Very close to it. And the scores in the rounds, by the way. This is all makes the difference. And he's going to get the cancel into the up ball. Close the gap for the frame advantage in the plate. Yes. And the big risk from Bonchan not paying off this time. Mena RD securing game number three, two to one, in favor of the Bandits camp. But this is only fixture one. It's just to put them in the driving seat. Remember, these guys have still got to play the Zero Zero Nation as well. That zero Zero Nation in the back taking notes. What needs to be done? Drive rushes in. I love that Mena keeps switching up the round start approach. That is super important to keep Bonchan on his toes. His reactions have been on point. But you can't simultaneously Brother. look at everything in this game. Oh, oh snap. <laughs> counter hits. Make it a third, actually. Uppercut to end it out. Dashing up for it. Immediate up ball from Mena RD in retaliation. I think Bonchan's. Oh, slight misjudgment. That was unfortunate, so you will lose the Oh, but he dropped the perfect flash up. Oh, Mena with oh, another yeah. chance at life here. If anything, he can build up even more meter oh, for himself, but he has a mix coming. Don't you ever mess with me and my son again. Oh, dear. He caught life. Second wind. He blocks it. He's, He's stuck done. in another drive impact. He oh. needs to build a level two off of this. Yeah, I think he might go for the full conversion first and then, yeah, just go for the all parry. Yeah, he didn't know what side he was going to be on. So he's just going to block it out. Good awareness there. And he blocked. That's negative four. No, you can't. It's negative four. That's negative it is four. negative four. He, wasn't, he was just in burnout as that drive reversal came out. Wow. Dude, that was rough there, and the drive rush cancel from the standing light kick. Going to get the flash knuckle combo all the way to the corner here. Now Mena going to try to get out just comfortably. Jumps his way out. He's got all that real estate to work with, but he needs to get real close. Make something happen. Here it comes. Whiffed. Oh, and I like that. Really it looked like he delayed that rolling cannon, by the way. He definitely did. For the first time we've seen oh, it, no, by that's the way. Combo. Yes, he gets the pick up as well, and he's been practicing this, and he... Did he buffer something? It looked like he buffered something, he but he didn't let it like go. He buffered. I would expect another Blancachan probably putting me out pretty much nice. afterwards. Oh, he tried to burn him out there, and he did. Successfully burns him out. Blanca balls are amazing for doing that there, and the roundhouse, what? the active frames caught the heavy flash snap on the charge. Or mitts charge, I should say. Jump clean. Very, very clean punish indeed. Then RD getting the jump in of a lifetime, really, against that fireball. He's been having a little bit of a hard time trying to get around those, other than just walking and trying to perfect parry. Well, with the hooker by Crook, he's in the lead. Pole position here, because he needs to take it to a tiebreaker, and we will see a Super Art 3 get an early lead here for Bonchan in this final round of this game four. Throw. Uh -oh. is, and I like uh -oh. that. Do you know what? You're he dead. saw that 20 years from ago. Oh, you're talking about what, Alpha? He, <laughs> said, nah, he just, he just dashed and he just waited. He waited for Christmas to come and it came early. Yeah. You ain't kidding. Two to two, all tied up. Pretty much dead even every single round, it feels like. Okay. He looks like he's going to go to the character select screen here, Mena. I think he should still stick to the Blanka. Uh, I do not want to fight one of the world's best at his own game. I don't think you are wrong in that analysis. But even then... I think it would be a very interesting surprise, though, to see the loot. I think he's way... Uh, he's just as competent to fight it off. He's faced off against so many of them already, I feel like, getting here. So, what's another loot? Sure, it's Bonchan, but what's another loot? True, but then you just look at the uh, drive gauge management because that's where the matchup really lies. Player to player, the psychological warfare that happens between them as well as the drive gauge management. That's what happens in the mirror matches. That's why I find mirror matches so interesting. But it looks like... I, I don't think he's going to shy away from our Brazilian beast. And ah. he will. 
Okay, this is going to be a very interesting predicament, I feel like, for both of these two. Mena RD is going to have a significantly different approach in comparison to the Blanca. Let's see if Blanca is going to adapt to it. Of course, it's going to be the character he's using, obviously. So it's just a matter of a different look. Well, Mena RD, I don't know what's going to happen on offense. Well, I know that you know that I know that this is a fun matchup. So we'll go with that. I love this matchup. Perfect parry is going to hit play a huge role in this. It could be instrumental, could not. But one of these guys is going to have to risk a jump in this matchup as well, I feel. Oh, tantalizing. Maybe a crouching jab from Bonchan within that space. This is fine there with the crouch face. I think that was. Okay, Rush is in. There's a jump, but it was too far. Jumped into the sand blaster. Perfect parries are really working out. They changed the ground game significantly. And I like that as well. Using the medium and the light version of the sand blaster as extended potent tools. Oh. To try and mess up the parry timing. Looks like somebody's getting impatient. Huge! Do you get to confirm down below? Setting up for the Oki, the advantage. No big parry. Yeah. It's for medium this time. I, like I think that. he knew the spatial awareness that the crouching fist was going to whiff. Yep, that's yeah. exactly it. Too far to get the continuation. Now nah, he's utilizing that really well in the group stages with his loop play. Men at RD, so hopefully Bonchan can navigate around that and get a whiff punish on it. So the meta knew that man, the game. what a delay on that crouching medium punch as well. Bonchan not even trying to contest or press the button or crouch to have that matter. Yeah. Oh, what? No, too far. Too far. Big damage. Yeah. Big damage. Is he going to get? He's going to build level two, but I wouldn't use it here. Yeah. Bro. One drive rush cancel will take the round for him. Oh. What? The, oh, my God. Crouching medium punch, cashing out at the perfect time, catching Bonchan. Trying to press something. It was a counter hit. Oy. Man, you thought you could react to my drive impact. The suppressor said no. The level three here for Mena gets the back throw. That's not what he wanted. He wanted the throw, but I think he just held back. Just the last minute there. There's a rising uppercut for the anti air. Delay just in case of an OD uppercut. He's testing. Hesitation almost kills. Oh, hey, this is what I was talking about in terms of whiff punishing the damn medium kick there. And he will put him in a detrimental situation here. Near burnout. You can just harass him with the stand fierce, probably. But he's going to go for the medium punch instead. These guys are swinging. And that's fine for him in RD. He just doesn't want to lose any more drive gauge to him, right? Will they take that damage to the life bar? Yeah, next hit will do it for Mena. Any hit could even be a low forward if it has to be. Oh, you saw him. He's threatening with the God button. Okay. Has to do something there with the OD Sand Blaster. He's trying to tempt Bonchan into pressing. Respect for not pressing anything for a good five to ten seconds. Initiate something with a throw. Do it again. Get the grab. Try to rush again. Oh, the uppercut. Good awareness. Going for the duck for the damage. Dunk again. Bonchan needs a drive rush cancel. He's got to be careful what medium he uses. It could get with punished. Dropping it out. He's the sure. low! He gets the conversion of the opener. Level three. Captain Bonchan walking back. All the way down to Memphis. The bandits are still alive. And it's only the first fixture. We're going to a tie game. Match number four incoming. And this is what you need to remember. The basic strike throw game after a drive rush cancel. Are you walking away to avoid the throw? And again, we saw that stutter step. We saw it into the crouch short, into the jam, with the three piece there. And again, anybody would be frightened in that situation. Mm. Anybody would make a decision based off pure instinct instead of the logical mindset. And then again, we saw it. He had the resources Ooh. as well to really close it out. He took that down to the wire, but that only makes it 20 points a piece. The points are tantamount to one another. And now we go to our lovable bonus game, best of one. I'd imagine we get to take a look at the replay, exactly what transpired, but a uh, little bit of a spoiler alert. I think we might see Bonchan coming up again, but. We'll get there when we get there. Minna RD again. The Blanca pick didn't work out, but he looked rather strong right out the gate. Bonchan having the appropriate reactions with defensive maneuvers. Yes, sir. The perfect parry initially. Then you saw what the game plan was. It was attack on drive gauge the entire time for the first game. I'm super impressed by how Bonchan came out of the gates sprinting legit. Perfect parry or the lights. He understood the ranges of where he could perfect parry. Heavy blanker ball, dealing with the light blanker ball. Had the whiff punish on Blanca's elusiveness as well. It was all there. It was the complete package. Then slowly but surely, Mena was turning things around. And Lightning Beast plays a huge part in that because of the drive gauge damage and just the mix-up scenarios, the omnidirectional mix-up scenarios. It puts you into the corner. That's why I think Mena RD is one of the best at using the level two.
They didn't look like Bonchan was faced, but there were points where Menace pressure was so overwhelming, he felt the need to wake up with OD reversal. And look, at times he was comboing into, oh sorry, he was converting into the slam dunk follow up as well, which really worked out. So I respect the patience. And then when he really put Mena on his toes, he forced him to change the loot. And that wake up DI, damn, what a choice. We, we've got to pay attention to this more when the defenders literally half a stock of drive gauge. They're going to do something. They're not gonna block. They wanna, the go, they wanna go out on their own terms if they're yeah, gonna break. Swinging, man. They're gonna go out, go out with a bang. You know what I mean? So I really love the back and forth between the footage that we saw here with Luke versus Blank and Drew James over. That situation there. Yeah, I think you might be right. During the cower crouch, maybe you want to try to find a way to cancel it. You can see the frustration from Mena are David Bonchai, nice and easy with the crouch and jabs. But man. It was so it was so impressive to see how Bonchan reacted. Oh, I was gonna say reacted to some of the pressure that Mena was doing, but also the risks he was willing to take. I thought the defense against the Blancachan was superb in that instance. And this there. right here, that mishap. You could see Mena RD did attempt to get the punish or try to get the the was it a jab, not a crouch? It was, okay. it was crouch jab. All right, I thought it looked like crouch and medium punch. They all look a bit weird to me. Uh, in terms yeah, of he extends his body a little bit further, but yeah, yeah it was so definitely crouch and jab. My mistake, my mistake. Um, but yeah, you saw Bonchan was aware of that as well, and then you saw the big damage being punished here. Optimal stuff with the drive, rush, roundhouse to kick things off. That was unfortunate because in the loot mirror, Vulcan Blast does play a huge deal in terms of dealing with Sand Blaster, but again, just pixels away from the optimal range. Man, yeah. if only you could hear the crowd when that level one riff, everybody was like, oh! oh <laughs> was, well, you know. It happens, man. It's so deceptive, right? You see the level one, you expect it to go full screen. It's only until the last hit where it connects full screen. Yeah, it's like just watching one of your favorite players as part of your sports team just miss like, a three-pointer, you know? That's unfortunate, but this is what it was. And you saw it there, that drive rush cancel, and it just wait. Man. And it wasn't even a walk away. It wasn't. You could see, yeah, yeah, yeah you saw a hit, so. I see, I see, I see. I'd imagine Bonchan was trying to walk away from it all because that's usually the type of scenario that happens, but it was indeed counter it. Bandits getting into the tiebreaker scenario. So we did see, I'm not sure if they solidified it or not, but we did see Bonchan kind of walk back up to the setup okay. to play the tiebreaker. Raring to go, keeping warmed up, probably looking for that run back against Men RD if it's going to be the case. Yeah, it has to be Men RD. Yeah. I Going into the next game. I, but I, I hope this isn't a case where, well, before I get onto my point, just to look in the middle of the screen, ladies and gentlemen, like we said, but uh, best of threes are 10 points each with the anchor match being 20 points. But because this is the best of one, the tiebreaker, they will be awarded the team five points. So we, we will get a 25-20 final result here. Now, I hope this isn't a selfish decision. I'm pretty sure they've all collaborated and said, okay, this is probably the best pick in terms of counting men RD from our team selection. But of course, you've just lost, and that was integral because that could have been the difference between 40 0 and the tiebreaker we're playing now. Because uh, again, like we said, your self analysis and your teamwork is huge here. Just to kind of pick your brain a little bit, if it wasn't Bon Chan and you're part of FAV camp, who are you sending up? to face off against. I think it would have been Menardi says, who, you, who would you actually put up there? I'd probably give Ryusei a shot. I would think the same thing. That's me personally, but I think they think, like, strategically speaking, Gonchan might be the best. And so they're going to run it back in the best of one. And he already tried to do drive rush into suppress and to kick things off in the best of one. So watch Mena's tactics change immediately because it's best of one. Much more aggressive here because mm -hmm. he knows he's to get the job done half the time he's playing in the first of three. Do you think Bonchan would take those same type of risks in Simulmix first of Bonchan one? ain't going to speed up. You don't he's, think so? I don't think he's going to speed up. I don't know. I don't he's know. Pa he's patient. Okay. Doesn't mean he speeds up. No, he, no, no, no. no. He's Definitely only no. reciprocating my feelings. He's, he's only on offense right now for the time being. This is like standard loop corner pressure in the corner. But we'll see. Drive rush, and I love that. Went for the dry gauge damage to burn out Bonchan. Jump it away, Ooh, and he actually my. got that frame perfect, and he will get the round. He might need to spend level one. Vulcan Blast should do the trick. Bang, the first round for Mena RD in the tiebreaker set. Again, this is first to one. It's match point. Okay, slowed it down this time round. Gets the drive rush. Oh, I like that. Saving the sneaky stuff for last. Yeah, there you go. Try to perfect parry. Yeah, Bonchan hasn't really changed gears from and the strategy OD? in the first to three. Okay, he's just gonna be swinging for the hills now. No ah. level three yet. One more hit should do it. And I think he's gonna threaten that combo with the throws. Keep throwing There's him. One. You have so much life left. Just keep throwing him, right? Still pressing delayed jab on defense. Ah, he's swinging. This is huge for Bonchan. Wall and burnout. He can get the offensive pressure that he needs, but Men RD, he's still locked and loaded with level he three. Can't throw a he can't throw a fireball. Not at all. Oh my it? god, the punish counter is there though. 
Interesting conversion, though. I thought he might want to get a little bit more damage out of that, but this is fine. Play it safe with the CA version like here, but he still cannot throw Sand Blasters because of the Vulcan Blast and how close he is. And the delay jab worked. The one thing Bontrap was trying to do on his defense, it doesn't work for him when he's on offense. And Mena RD takes that game for his team and makes it 25 to 20. Final result here so in this strong. first fixture of the day. Despite it being a W, they've got themselves 25 points to the name. Keep that in mind. It's very important to keep tally of how many points each team scores because, again, we will be taking the two top point earners to face off in the finals. It's not just about the Ws they've accumulated, but just the points in general. It's huge. And that would actually be beneficial to 0 0 Nation, depending on their outcome exactly of their that. two matches as well. Again, they it could happens. potentially get full sweeps, which they've done before. They're not pretty much they're not strangers to that kind of scenario so if they manage to get maybe like a 40 bomb that could be a significant deal and this is what i was talking about with the captain's contribution the reassurance that he has for the team here making sure it's like look as long as i'm here we're good we'll stay in this dog fight and boy did he have our blood pumping there with that blood pumping set with fav as well and i'm so, glad he got to test out the luke mirror match as well of course. going into it right i was uh, also, we're going to be so impressed by his Blanca, but just testing that out in the mirror match to see if he's willing to kind of take what he's learned overall and reapply it to this matchup against Bonchan. It's very, very risky, in my opinion, but I'm glad it very much so paid off in the hard Well, I mentioned it at the start when they kicked off this best of one. I said, watch him ramp it up. Watch him play past the speed limit because it'll be vastly different. Bonchan actually responded accordingly a lot of the time, but it wasn't going to make Mena pull the brakes because he understood the situation. And I don't know how much Bonchan has actually played in best of ones in the regular seasons and the second stage of SFL Japan. So it's a very big deal and you've got to adjust your mindset. Basically in blitz record time, you've got to do it. And yeah. it looked like he wanted to stick with the same plan because he said, because it was three Two, I'm not really going to deviate from what was successful. Course, yeah. And then Mena said, well, I'll just throw out plan A and go straight to plan B, and it worked. You can see it here. In this situation, after taking three throws, the mentality behind Mena is like, you know what? I'm willing to take as many risks as possible. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to play linear because of how much of an advantage I have over you. And let's see if you respond accordingly. So really, really impressive being able to, like, change up gears at a moment's notice in a first to one the mentality i feel like that's the strongest thing that he has right being able to understand the situation between a best of two a best of three and then a best of one that really is what separated him against bonchan a veteran at the highest level and this is what it's looking like the final score of team match one there fav came out of the gates firing on all cylinders 10 points apiece for tokido and ryusei but bandits mena rd said hold it we're playing a serious game here. Let me get the 20. Let's play for some real stakes, which made it equalize their 20 apiece. And then he puts the cherry on top of the cake with the awarding five points there over Bonchan in the double. Back to back there with Luke. Really impressed with this first game thus far. It gets me so excited to see how the Europeans are going to fare up now that you see like a, a, a lower scoring game than most. If you guys True. have been tuning into Street Fighter League, this is a pretty huge deal for the teams that haven't just played yet in terms of getting these points. And it's like, you know, this is actually a great start <laughs> for me. We haven't really necessarily played yet, but seeing 25 and 20 on the board, it's like, okay, I could kind of, kind of feel we good can go about with that. that. We can go with that, of course. But again... <laughs> This is what you always want. And each and every game, each and every match in that fixture is going to be just as tense for me at the driver's seat, for you watching as part of my team, and then the guys in the back waiting for the next <laughs> yeah. fixture to come through. But hey, this is what has been going so far. But we've got to give thank you to the people that make us run this show. First of all, big shout outs to our food sponsor, Pagoda. We've been saying it. This is why I love getting Ultra David to do it, because he's one of the best to do it. But hey. Let's put the egg rolls in, and you need to crush your cravings with the pagoda snacks. There it is, the crispy egg rolls. You've seen Rob doing this, his fire segments, eating them. He must have been a, a lot of goddamn egg rolls. I was going to say, like, he's had at least, like, what, four to five egg rolls per segment? Like that. That's impressive. But it's been pretty insane here. But, yes, if you do find yourselves in the venue, you can have a little snack there with the pagoda. But then, of course, 
What is our next sponsor we've got to give thanks to? One of my favorite sponsors, we see Storm Collectibles bringing out all the classics and the iconic gaming characters back to life with their high quality collectible action figures. You can see it right there. Check out their Street Fighter figures on their website. You can scan the QR code on the top right or check out their website, stormcode.com.hk. One of my favorite things to talk about when it comes to these figures is the crazy, crazy detail and also the different variations of the characters. I'm a big fan. You can see Shin Akuma, one of my favorites. I want to pick that up on the left. But more importantly, I feel like this is the first time we've ever really seen Violent Ken as an action figure because he was made canon in the Ultra Street Fighter 2 game for the Switch. So again, that's actually a pretty, pretty cool detail to add. Again, Storm Collectibles, be sure to check them out. Be sure to start collecting on your own. Now, huge thanks to Tyre Holding for being the prize support of 150,000 USD for the Street Fighter League World Championships. Tyre Holding is the world's number one market share in solder, solder resist, the green part of printed circuit boards. They create all the back through which we get to explore our passion for Street Fire, and through this support, they uplift everyone taking on challenges to realize a happy world in and out of the game. We are happy to have them as part of this event. Deeply appreciated by Tai. Such a huge integral part of Street Fighter League. Big thanks to everybody that's been a part of it, all of our sponsors. Again, it's been an absolute blast thus far, but guess what? We got two more teams to play off against each other right after this break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more of that Street Fighter League action. Seriously, I'm not interested in whatever you're pitching. You really want me to punch a hole through you? So, just who are you? You need to learn to stop pissing me off! <laughs> I knew there'd be more of you.
So no one always see nothing. I just barely scratch the surface. Throw me in the rain, let me do my thing. Got the heavy deal, fight it through the pain. When I'm in the zone, it's a move away. Ain't never say much, but you see me up top. You see my numbers out, the pressure don't stop. Until I'm in the top, see the bottom seats watch. They all see me. I am with the only two-time Capcom Cup champion, Mina RD, and this is fine. All right, I'm feeling, I'm feeling great for now. The reason I said for now is because Mina has decided that he wants to go hot. Let's get a little, little dab of something. Let's so go, you ready let's for go. this? I'm ready. So we're gonna dab up these pagoda egg rolls. And just so everyone knows, we did spike this hot sauce with a special one, the last dab. It's serious. All right, we're gonna do it. Let's go. Ah. Mena RD, two-time Capcom Cup champion. Mm -hmm. I actually want to start things in a little unconventional place. Street Fighter League this year, you was talking a whole lot of trash, you backed it up. Four years to you guys, finally winning Street Fighter League. Tell me what that meant to you. Take me through that season for you. That season was crazy because these themes, like, I really tried to like put up a team of people I trusted because the game is new. And Minute. It worked out. Nah. It, yeah. wor it worked out. And your eyes now. It worked out, man, and it was beautiful to see, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful to see, and, and it was it was perfect, you know? Okay, and then now, of course, so at this point, you've won two Capcom Cups, right? How has this changed your life? A young kid from the Dominican Republic, from the, and you from the, from the struggle. You ain't grew up with a silver spoon. What has Street Fighter done for you? It's it's beyond what Street Fighter has done for me. It's now what, what it has done for my country, for my community, you know? <clears throat> a lot of money brought me out of the, you know, the struggle. I was poor. But now it's giving opportunities to, to everyone that interested in this in, in the country. And that means a lot, you know, having a positive impact in, in where you were raised, in the environment that you were raised at, and making it better. It gave meaning to my life. It, it's beyond mm. money, it's beyond everything. So, yeah, man. Okay, and... Your lips hot? It's all good. It's, it's light. Yeah, light work for the Yeah, yeah, sir. Light work I, for might, the I might take another one. Big dog. You still want to take another one? You want to do it? Man, who you Come on, bro. To, bro. Come on, bro. Yo, this actually looks good, though, you know? It is. Okay. You ready? One, two, three. And the art, people really are, they're really enjoying it. You know, it's not only, oh, they have a Dominican guy there, let me watch it. But there's a lot of people that actually are starting to like fighting games, and they're watching videos, and they're watching everybody, not only me. You cry? Did you, did, it looked like you just won Capcom Cup. What you mean? <laughs> hey, bro, like, like, yo, what I'm talking about. It's like you were crying, too. What you mean, bro? You like, oh, so you're going to call me out. Yeah, I love crying. I know you've seen that. <laughs> Men RD, you are a bad man. Ah! We don't need no water. All right, man. You're the two-time Capcom Cup champ. I'm the bull. My bad, my bad. I'm OK, you the bull. Yeah, yes, sir. That's it, bro. You are a beast for, uh, you know, having having me take this last dab with you. And we did it two times, too. Nothing but respect, brother. Representing bandits and the Dominican Republic. This has been the champ, Mena RD. And this is fire. Look at this electrifying, exuberant crowd here at the Avalon Hollywood for the Street Fighter League World Champions. But we are back after our first fixture here. Myself, Jammers, and Vicious will be calling the action for all of the matches today. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying it as much as we have, but we got to swiftly move on to even more electric action here. What we got next? Well, before we get into what's next, let's take a look, just in case you were tuning in just now, what the standings look like. Bandits at the very top with 25 points to their name and a very clutch standoff against FAV Gaming, standing at second with 20 points. However, it's time for the Europeans to play. 0-0 Zero -zero Nation, although in third, they still have to get their first games in. And man, what a matchup it's going to be. They have definitely got to step up to the plate because you do not want to be third place in this World Championship at all. But you see FAV Gaming, they got momentum, but they did get the loss. It was just a slight loss there, but 0-0 Zero -Zero Nation, they're going to kick things off. You see it, the Scandinavians featuring Lord Venom, one of the strongest JPs we have in the European region. He was around in the Street Fighter Five days, but he said his he one was, regret yeah. was stopping playing the game, not keeping up to it near the right. end. So he's trying not to make that mistake with Street Fighter Six, and boy, has he hit the ground running. But just to let you guys know, Lord Venom 
a lot of people didn't want him on the team. They were they were looking at other they were looking at other places, they're looking for other players, and then again, Phenom waited a little while. And when he noticed he was a free agent, he said, Come with us. Funny enough, I got to talk to one of the Polish players, Mirka, and I actually talked to him about their scene. He's like, Yeah, there's only three of us over in uh, Krakow. It's me, Lord Venom, and Shady Imposter. That's actually pretty amazing to hear about because if it's only three of you representing that region, like, how are you getting all of this top tier practice? And you know what's even better? The fact that they are that good, they get you to know. play up against each other whenever they want to. That's actually amazing. Shout out to the netcode for Street Fighter 6 here. But yes, we will be setting up. We do have to show the team selection order for the awaiting because it is 0 0 Nation. So they have to expose themselves first before we see how FAV Gaming will counter accordingly. It's nothing that they're not used to, 0, Zero Nation, only because, right. again, every team in the regular season, they must play home, they must play away, they understand the rules, and at the end of the day, look, it's me versus you. Right. I've got to collect the points, no matter how much of a handicap or a disadvantage I am at here. That's how it works in SFL. Mm -hmm. And then talking about, talking about the team synergy and like the team composition overall, in regards to the lineup, I feel like we talk about the one outlier between the two, the Zangief main himself. Where is Veggie going to play in his role as a big component of Zero Zero Nation. Where is he going to be placed at? chun is a bad matchup for Zangief. I think JP is a bad matchup for Zangief, but Veggie likes his matchup. I don't like it when Veggie likes things because it's just like, it's just the wildest take. It feels like it's just too confident because yeah, most of the time he's, he's, he's meek, you, he's humble, but when he's like that confident, that genuinely scares me. It terrifies me. He might want to put, he might want to take his chance against Ryuse. So we could see, I agree. we could see Veggie in a middle position. Phenom, he's at the back. He's in the captain's duties. He'll be at the back. Mm -hmm. Lord Venom could be up first, but let's find out what the team selection order will be. Rickman's Barnet will be going up there first with the JP, newly picked JP. He's been doing a lot of work in that. Phenom looks like he's gonna go for the middleman here this time round, but that's the strength of depth this team has. Lord Venom or Phenom can play as the anchor position. He's gonna go there with Ken, and then Lord Venom, he's actually gonna be given the huge responsibility of playing third there. And Tokido. Brother, he gets to face off against the legend, Tokido, with that Ken play. Now, I'm sure he's had plenty of practice against Phenom, and Phenom is definitely more than qualified to take down Maybe like the whole team himself, but again, this is going to be very, very pivotal practice. But when it comes to practice, let's see if he has that execution and the confidence going into it. I know you and F Word have been talking about that over in Street Fighter League EU. When it comes to his confidence level, sometimes it would take him a little bit longer to start up, but when he gets started, it's hard to stop him. Very true. Now, unfortunately, for those of you who not kept up with SFL EU, Rikamans Barnet hasn't had the strongest regular season. Three wins out of 13. He's actually one of the strongest 10 pointers we had when we did SFL for SF5. Oh, no doubt. But yeah. this time round, this is a huge deal. Now, every team, we didn't mention this, every team actually has a Ken and the JP player in there. So they're all going to have the insider scoop. They're all going to have that anecdotal knowledge. But again, I haven't seen enough of this JP that Rikman's been working on for months, but he is confident. So okay. let's see how he kicks things off. Not the typical choice, is what you're trying no, to tell me, right? Yeah, not, no. the, not the main character choice for him, but Rickman's Barnett sticking with the JP and Tokido with Ken. Here we go. Game one between FAD Gaming and Zero Zero Nation. All right, there you go, Tokido just keeping his ground, and we actually see him utilize the parry as well because that's how he tries to slowly approach all his opponents. I like check. that! There was so much aggression to force Tokido to even guess. After that departure went up, he thought it was the green light to go, but Rickman's already ready with the crouching medium punch to counter. There's a trigger out there, and we go back to the zoning game until Tokido tries to walk and close the gap before he finds a way to run in, and he does with the sanding hard punch. Knocked out, creating the space as well. You thought the was coming out. Tokido, 100% ready for that. Anti air, good recognition, still within range. Still on dry gauge, though, and I think he's just going to take hits so he avoids the burnout and then an amnesia anyway. Oh, my. Interesting. He only took one crystal. That was probably the best outcome in that scenario, and that's probably going to get hit. Yes, that will be a full punish here, and he'll burn Tokido out. No, probably he won't. Oh, no! His teammates, he said, have you seen that before? Oh man, this is SFL EU all over again. Oh my word, what's going on? Does it shake his mental, those jammers? Does it take away his confidence? He was looking so strong right at the gate. Takedo, he sees the opening. He's like, you know what? I'm going to hammer this in. I'm going to be drive rushing all day. Now already in a bad situation. Rickman's Barnett, will Takedo sneak on the stun? He can do, maybe not to it until he gets a level three, but there's the stun. He will build the level three from this as well. So it looks like he will have to go for the two drive rush cancels. He doesn't even need to, it seems. To. Let's find oh, out. No, That's a very dead. good question, is he? Oh, man! You thought it was a jump scare. It was. You thought he was living. Got me. Call up James Chen. That was one where I actually wasn't too sure, but hey. 
He knows he's been in the seat way more than I have. He's put in, he invested tons of hours, both of these guys have. But again, look at that. He capitalized off a mistake easily. It's and the mental game, baby. But this is what the guys at top level do. They identify, or they, look, they, even they're not ready for your mistake, but they identify very quickly. It's like, I've got to capitalize on this and run away with it and make sure I'm dominating, not just in game, but like you said as well, psychologically. You see it there. And you, this was the tail of the tape for Rikum and Barnett in the regular season. He had moments like that, game winning combos, good situations. It just wasn't working out for him, but unfortunately, he dropped the ball. Also a very similar start, very aggressive with some of the projectiles that Rickman has been throwing out. Takedo also trying to stay with that aggression from the previous game, immediately opted for the drive rush at down start. Now Rickman, he's gonna do a, a, a stronger job of trying to keep it him out. Oh my, that was kind of scary. Wasn't that a cancelable that, normal? That, that looked like stand fierce, and I don't think Takedo was expecting it, which is why his his hands probably went hovering over the buttons, and he just made the standing hard punch with, despite the active frames it has. Drive rush in for the trade. They were both medium, so I'm not sure if anyone could have got a light after that. Oh, wow. What an excellent choice, too. He knew it was too shallow to actually get with the uh, crouching heavy punch. That was a really, really smart adaptation for Rickman. He pressed my favorite button, Stan Fierce, to get the airborne button. Oh, I remember you were going back and forth on social media about that juggle. <laughs> I remember all of that. <laughs> Man, were they wrong. <laughs> I got you back on that one. I was, I, was, I was listening and reading. There we go. Drive rush in. Okay. Didn't want to take too much of a risk there, so he tried to bait a check from Rickman. And Ooh. again, he's not making the same mistake twice. That's why he's being very passive in a good sense. Lack of projectiles, just looking for the normal, just one touch, essentially. That punish kind of could have been everything. And again, that's so smart to do it that way. If anything, you would force Tokido to spend that SA to keep himself safe, or at least get the punish on the drive impact. Anything else, it would have been shattered. I could start again from Rikaman's Barnet here, keeping that mid-screen game. And like we said, at some point, Ken wants to run in, and he has to be vigilant towards that dash in, and he Too tried to get it. Far. That is legit. That is a legitimate thing to do. It but is. The spacing was incorrect. He almost puts himself near burnout against Akito, but he gets a perfect parry on the shin kick, and he will go for the side switch here. This is good. Can he set up an OD departure? He will go for Just one. a regular one, yeah. But what do you do after that? A slight hezzy into the roundhouse. That I like a lot that. more. The mind games behind JP Stan Roundhouse are some of the best That's in the game. That's so good. What he leads into. Oh, oh. Ooh, he's got to burn him out with level two, and he's not going to do it. He's going to do something else. Okay, there's a level two. So this should actually burn him out with all four phantoms doing its work, and he does Another it. Another drop? Okay, here we go. There's the mind games. That's plus six on block when in burnout. And a DI Another one again. mid air. Watch out. <gasps> he's on. got the pickup. Yo, man. Okay, I'm sorry, I doubt you. He's going to get Lavushka again, but he doesn't oh, even need bang. it. Level one for the finisher. I was actually kind of nervous. He caught him midair. Now, this is the thing. Historically speaking, he loves his creative characters. We've seen that with the Manhattan Street Fighter oh, 5. Yeah. And you can tell he's been practicing. You can tell he's had a long chat with Lord Venom about what we should be doing. And a good awareness to know when the DI hit that Ken was airborne and not grounded. Right. Some people register it too late, so they do the wrong <laughs> Airborne conversion, but he would look like he was ready. He had the jump leading kick into the Bailina already. It's funny, it's you even have uh, Phenom pretty impressed about that. He was laughing. He's like, Man, you can get the pickup. I can't do the accent just yet. You I'm can get the pickup. I thought he was grounded. <laughs> so, I thought he was this grounded. is why we need Sengan here. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Sengan does it the best. Yo, shout out to show you Sengan for sure, man. I love seeing and hearing him on the mic. All right, there we go. All right, so Tokido might pile on throws, but then he's got to be cognizant of amnesia and backdashes and jump escape options there from Rickerman's Barnet. But he's already trapped in the corner once again. I'm not sure what that was. Jesus! But he's whiffing too many buttons. He's been too busy. Yeah. Sweep! The sweep! Uh? Huh? That was uh. actually kind of wild. <laughs> oh, man. All right, there you go. Still in the corner here, gets a crouching medium kick, but I see Tokido. Tokido whiffs a fair amount of crouching medium kicks that not a lot of people are ready for. Oh, yeah. It's going to be the round with the OD Genrai. Very careful because these guys are being very obnoxious with their DIs because of how much they're respecting each other in that first round of the first game. They're actually seeing a lot of the, both of them commit to a lot of things that they're not cognizant. Oh, and that's really awkward timing. Rickman to throw up the projectile where he thought he was going to be in a safe space. Dude, he still tried to challenge there and got hit with a stamp fierce in the face. He's got to be careful. His dry gauge is being damaged here, but yeah, look, you can't, dude, you can't keep sitting there. Look at there. how many fuses he's just eating. He went from green to orange status so quickly off of the dry gauge. Negative two, by the way. And again, he's looking to get burnt out here, and that's not even going to be... The problem, because he will lose the exchange with Tokido, and it'll be 2-1.
for FAV Gaming in this first match. Another 10 points on the board, putting them up to 40 thus far. Whitman's Barnett showing up the sportsmanship. And now looking at the next matchup as we get into the replays. Obviously, it's going to be Phenom. I'm going to pick your brain about this, who you're going to be uh, picking to send up. But again, Whitman's Barnett, he did have the utmost confidence at the very beginning. That significant drop. I feel like it could have been like a 2 0 scenario, if I'm not mistaken. If he had just kind of uh, followed through with the plan and not made that mistake, he would have been. Uh, uh, yeah, all over I, to I, I think this would have been a different timeline if that combo didn't drop after he got the punish on the Fireball, the Lavushka, something that a lot of JP players should be more comfortable doing because we'll probably see that down the line in terms of the meta if they don't change too much. And he was so slick too, his awareness overall. I think those micro decisions were so on point in terms of being aggressive with the Fireballs, knowing exactly how to anti-air with the Crouching Heavy Punch because that could be deceptive if somebody just neutral jumps in front of you with that amount of space. It's like, that could whip if they don't press a button on the way down, right? Because the overall spatial awareness or situational awareness from Wickman's Barnett was so top-notch in the very first part of that game. He actually picked up the scraps off the floor from that first game by making the equalized uh, tantamount game into one apiece there. Right. But then again, he looked comfortable, uh, comfortable in this matchup anyway, simply because he does face one of the world's best Ken players in Phenom. And I think it was just when we were fighting in the right side of the screen too often. And it was just the defensive choice of letting down the buttons, okay. the amnesia, the fact that he was taking so many stand hard punches to the face, which is attacking his drive gauge. Remember, when nothing's happening in this game, something's happening. And you will get punished for even defending. I know it's a safe choice, but how long Beautiful. are you going to keep up for? Look at this. this that beautiful. was actually such a sick pickup. Dude, juggle points master himself doing the business. But then again, yeah, just this round here. Okay, there's a couple of things missed time. Did he commit certain things as well? That's when Tokido noticed that he'd get a drive impact there. Yeah, but even if it was a feint or not, right? That was a commitment either way. Yeah, if the button choices don't work, then he's scared to press any buttons. He doesn't want Tokido converting to level three, but once he made that panic decision, that heavyweight decision that kind of fell through, it was just unfortunate there. So that will be 2-1 to Tokido there going up against Rikiman. Good start for him. <laughs> Again, like I said, 10 points won for one guy, 10 points lost. For the other, this is huge now. This is not our regular season, it's not right. our respective leagues. This is the world championship, so these guys are they're trying to avoid third place as much as possible. Now, just basing off of the information we had had in the previous matchup between FAV Gaming and Team Bandits, but USA had a very, very good time against Shao Hai, taking down that Ken 2 to 0. You think that's going to be the case again, facing off against a different Ken through the hands of Phenom? If we're going off results and what's been happening today, yes. However, I did see him practicing with Valmaster, getting some notes and everything on the Chun Li matchup just in case. Right. Because remember, Sako's hands are still cold. I think Sako might be that guy he to come do. up next if I'm not mistaken, but we'll see, we'll see. I, I had that kind of coming up. I wanted to see like what your thoughts were on the Sako Noko matchup, but it is going to be Ryusei instead. They're going to stick with the man who's had the best win percentage thus far for Japan. All right, so we're going to get a double up on this matchup in this fixture here. Different perspectives from different parts of the world. And this is what's interesting when you see these matchups. They're understanding where they're going to risk. Are we going to see as many drive impacts? Maybe we might see more perfect parries. Phenom is, again, he's the paragon of efficiency for me. He just gets it done, keeps it simple, and even dealing with a character like this. He practices, shout out to Juicy Joe from Sweden. He practices from Juicy Joe religiously. Yeah. He's got Lord Venom in the back, so he has a wealth, a fountain of knowledge of JP. Could still lose to the character. Oh, he's got a lot to, <laughs> yeah. he's got a lot to say about JP. Don't worry about that. But if there's any character that he has the most experience in that he's actually drilled it into his head so it makes it yeah. second nature is Johan Petrovic. I think that's uh, that's gotta be content in and of itself, right? Getting Phenom to rant about certain characters, I would watch that. Why doesn't he do it? He needs to rant about food, he needs to rant about you know, characters. There's a lot of things he needs to do, but don't worry, the social media presence is getting better. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's down the line. So just to let you guys know, in our regular season for SFL EU, Phenom played the most games for Zero Zero Nation with 13 wins out of 17, and he actually accumulated 180 points. Damn! So he's actually here for the big league. He's not messing around, one of the world's best. Going up against Ryusei. I slept on JP, one of the strongest I feel in the world. Back to back mediums thus far from Ryusei, really checking the distance against Phenom and his approach to the mediums for the mediums thus far. Medium punches, I should say. To kind of really check and regulate that space. Just gets clipped, unfortunately, while the OD departure was out. I know a couple of players actually do react to OD departures when you summon them arbitrarily, but Phenom was out looking for something else. Look for a throw bait on Amnesia, didn't work out. He gets a grab. 
This is going to be a tough spot. Do you let the amnesia ring out? Oh, here comes the twist. Do it again. Do it again. Here comes it's the twist. It's exactly like it did against Tiger in the Challenger Series. There's yeah. the amnesia. Oh, wait. Hold on. He's actually lived up to Twitter clip, mate. He might actually lose. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> he might actually lose. No, son. Oh, my word. You can't do your boy like that. Oh, of course I can. I love him. I think that's why you can do it. Right? He can still win, though. And uh, he got caught grabbing hot air. And you say knew it. He took the frame advantage there from the back media you box. absolutely cursed his name. I'm, I love you, Fiona. I'm sure it's mutual. I'm very much sure it's mutual. I'm not sorry. I know you're not. <laughs> and that's the best part. When you say again, harassing with some of the projectiles, and you see him buffering away on that down just in case he's going to trick Phenom into moving forward, perhaps. So that media punch, you can whiff that with a sweep with several characters. I know Ken's got a phenomenal sweep as well, especially when the opponent's in burnout. Still waiting for a jump of some sort here, but Fiona doesn't do that. It's uncharacteristic of him. He's going to try and do this earnestly on the ground. Ooh. This guy is literally showing you how beautiful that cane looks. Ooh. It's the conversion. Ron Tatsu, some of the best screen carry in the game. What's a cane to a pair of Tims, though? Okay, I, I lied. I was mistaken. <laughs> you say still showing off that cane again. With the rebuttal, crouching jab to start things off. And creating this space is going to be so difficult for Phenom to traverse. Look at this. You're going through, essentially, a cycle obstacle course. Ryusei might get Phenom to burn himself out. No need. The target combo does that. And he's going to cancel. No, he won't. Almost. Got baited there. That's actually negative 10. So the sweep, or oh, sorry, the roundhouse wasn't going to punish that. So he's actually going to give Ryusei a taste of his own medicine. And the shoes on the other foot. Because he will fully regenerate that drive gauge. And I want to sit still. Sit still. And My that, God! That is used as a poking tool. It's actually pretty effective. Lord Venom was telling me about that as well, and he's just pressing all the buttons while he's in burnout. What kind of style is this? Ooh. Oh, wow, he swung. Oh, oh wow, and the conversion he swung. after that. Jeez, Ryusei and his confirms have been godlike. Level three incoming, the damage, you already know it's secured. Bang, game one for FAB's own Ryusei. And because of the way Phenom plays, it's very scary to even consider trying to jump with how many normals Ryusei was flailing around there. And again, he was looking for some yeah. sort of buffer. So much activity. Yeah, he was looking for a buffer into the interdiction, poking away as well. So he's really mixing up the button timers and really throwing off Phenom because he's a very grounded, very footsie-based individual for Street Fighter games. He's still trying to surround in this best of three, though. You can see where a lot of the problems are in neutral. That medium, the, the arsenal of mediums that JP has, it just makes it so hard to even try to whiff punish or even close the oh, gap. What hello. a reset and also gets the punish counter on a Phenom. Phenom chuckled at that, by the way. I mean, the count it worked out. He's got JP burnt out, but JP's still highly effective. And he closed the gap and he's going to burn him out. Oh, this is looking long. Oh, and the dragon has to run. That's what he has to do. Sometimes he has to pick those opportune moments to take the risk. He can't keep playing fundamentally safe. So he'll keep doing. I know it's rudimentary and it works. Simple and effective, but sometimes change up the gears, man. D-jump, interesting. And good awareness from Ryusei not even trying to anti-air that or attempt to at that space. Still flaming a stand medium punch there, but there's a the little whip punish. punish with the stand medium kick despite this man's slow movement speed. Especially backwards walk speed. There we go, just throwing out all those phantoms, letting him know with the purple haze. And he gets in. What a time to let that bring out. I mean, he, he was still sitting has on that medium for so long. He still has it. He kind of needs it, but I, I wouldn't want to deal with this all day. Good jump out. Oh, he was trying to catch the landing frames. Not opting to go for a show you can on the way. All right, he's got to deal with this. Is he going to hold parry? Yes, he will. Holding it down, gets the grab. That's fine. That's totally fine. 12% taken. Oh. Way to mitigate the damage. What a last minute block there against the overhead. Well, oh, the departure was out. It's the back throw, typical Phenom. Hold the parry. Oh. Yes, yeah, so he can't make this mistake again because that stand fist is going to be game changing. And he missed his strike away, little drive gauge here, still a beneficial position that's going to catch him, that will catch him. And he gets to teleport to boot. Speaking of boot, on the way down, that jump, medium kick, just enough damage. You say, looking at match point. Dude, that thing's got lightning startup, so the fact that we, we're seeing the JP players use that against Ken's Fireball now is magnificent to see. Oh, that's great. No double departure setup for you. Almost got the counter hit conversion as well, but drive rushes in, make amends. That grab. Oh dear, here we go. This what is happened to his drive slot. gauge? And it disappeared. Rapid timing. Gets the conversion. This is looking torrid for Phenom at the moment. He's got to run in and do a level three or something. He's got no other choice. 
Ah, oh, but if he punches right in front of Ryu, say he gets to utilize that screen space as well, or just force him back and just chill. He jumps now, he's not close enough. Here he comes. All or nothing indeed. It is critical art damage incoming as well. Well, a level one will not get rid of Phenom. And we've seen people today wake up with options with half a stock of drive gauge. And the meaty fireball is the safest thing to do there. And Tier still waiting. Yes, burnouts. He doesn't have to worry about amnesia, at least the OD version. Still got level one. He can chip. <gasps> what? Oh! oh my word, he still blocks it. He's got to deal with this Lavushka. He's done. He could grab him. Oh no! The first goal's actually interrupted. The OD Shoryuken after the invincibility was gone. That was such a smart play too. Oh my. Xenon could have got the chip kill. But the ghost was still there. Even oh, so my. as well. Because Phenom was in range of actually losing to a throw, I believe. Like, he thought that Ryusei was just going to try something. So let me beat him to the punch there. But like you said, there was not enough invincibility to avoid the first Phantom from the level 2 Super R. And he gets it out there. That was clutch because Phenom could have made that Ooh. one a piece and turned this whole thing around. But Ryusei's record against Ken players today remains 100%. Jeez. out high and now Phenom here. Good start. I've got to say, uh, and then again, we actually got to see a, a lovely highlight reel from Phenom with the couple of throws, knowing the risk entailed with Wake Up Amnesia here. But the fact that Ryusei was willing to accept that. Jesus. Because, again, you can actually condition your opponent through defensive choices. And that's what he was doing there. He managed to get to pick up the conversion there. Great utilization of the level two throughout the set. Brilliant to see. And the one miss, the one miss that you had on your offensive pressure, I understand going for the throws over and over again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We've harked that message so many times throughout the years, but man, I did not expect for him to turn into a highlight reel <laughs> off of that and actually get killed, 50%. Sometimes it do be like that. I'm not sure what happened there either, but he was able to He's, Yeah, you can see the smirk on his face too from the player cam. I see you. There you go, he stripped it out. It was interesting as well because usually I see Fino uncomfortable at least challenging buttons in general, but because it, it is JP and you're still trying to find the ranges and crouching, beating, kicks forward, advancing, stand fierce is very difficult. To God, see that's unfortunate, man. Yeah. He's the pop up too. You rarely see that type of emotion. Yo, you say immediately he dropped the head and he's like, yo, let's go. That's, that's actually no, that's... so refreshing to see, actually. But do you know what? It's good to see the Japanese players are getting into that stride over the years. Remember, we used to see them so stone face killers. One day with the emotion, it's like just to shake hands and just yeah, the get only, on with it. The but only one again, that really showed that type of emotion was Takedo, man, I, I feel true, like throughout true, the years. True. Even in, in 3S, he would kind of like pop off just a little bit, a little subtle. Okay, so moving on to our potential final match here. This is the third match. Lord Venom going up against Bonchan again, taking the role. So it looks like Sakunoko is taking a seat just in general. For these yeah, just to yeah. kind of benefit their seating. if it's the best thing to do. Very strong lineup. Really quickly, we Talk have a lot me. of practice with Bonchan with the plethora of JPs they have in Japan. Um, also facing off against his own teammate Ryusei, if need be. He's going to be rocking that loop. Now talk to me real quick. Lord Venom, his experience with loop, what level is it at? Uh, to be honest with you, it's kind of like it's all over the place because I think he's had some of the best Luke experience here. He's actually expressed his disdain how much he loves fighting Luke uh, over here at the Cup. Even more content. He, 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 he keeps <laughs> telling me. He keeps telling me about his match against Nerd the Prodigy, but he really needs to work on fighting the Luke, dabbling and watching NL. We have Kusanagi from France back at home. We have one or two others as well. Mirkin too. He can actually practice and talk to Mirkin on a fair basis here. But again, he plays JP and he hates the other uh, top tier character, which is brilliant to see. Meaty. Damn, that was meaty. On top of that, was a counter hit. Yeah, he does though. Well, that might be the first round. He's not going to do Vulcan Blast because he knew it, and that was a safe jump. I wonder if he forgot that was a safe jump. We tried to do something for sure. He's one of the smartest minds we do have in SFL EU, but perfect parries and for the I optimization. Love that punish counter as well. The forward heavy punch gives you just that space to get into that level, or sorry, that crouching heavy punch range. And that's what you want to do with Luke. You want to get as many opportunities to land the crouch face because we know what happens afterwards, whether it be a perfect parry or a regular punch. Go. Just goes for a trick lap after the target combo. And he went for stand fear, similar to what Ryusei did as well. Back throw now is the big, big opportunity for Bonchan to get this corner pressure for level two instead for Lord Venom. What's your defense like, Bonchan? All right, that's not too bad. Way to mitigate the damage. Ooh, okay. A little bit extra damage for the back throw. Any perfect parries into the brutal spike again. He might go into level three. 
And I'm glad he didn't opt to like extend the combo and put himself into burnout to try to risk that extra damage, but this is just fine. A substantial life lead, three bars to your name, drive rushing forward, and now close to the kill. Yeah, big parry. And the Kachi medium kick as well, being obstinate with that button as well. I mean, Bonchan's shown how brilliant he is at perfect parry in that. You make one mistake, a sandblast will get you, but the trig lamp sends it full screen. I know, that was very lucky. He, I love that Bonchan respected that, and that will be the round. Whew. And this is it. It is the biggest deterrent in this game is when your opponent consistently perfect parries. I'd say if they have a 95% success rate, you feel hopeless with what tools to use in the neutral. What region was it where we saw the implementation of perfect parries in the matchups? That was definitely from Japan. I think they were the first ones to really, really utilize this mechanic. Oh, they embraced it. Oh, wow, I didn't even know that combo. I didn't even know that other thing. Thank you, Bonchan, for showing me that. Empty jump for him. Venom's panicking. Oh. Bonchan's buttons on defense have been phenomenal. He mainly does it after blocking one light or two. He always goes to the jab with the medium. Oh, more than enough damage off of the background us as well. And yes, sir, Bonchan, another round on the board. Just again, to remind you, we had a five territory. But Bonchan has been steamrolling thus far. Dude, you can tell just by his match presence that he is extremely comfortable. And he's always orchestrating what happens. And then he's gonna get the conversion. No, unfortunately, the finger snap from the crouch and reading kick didn't allow it to happen. And he misses. Ah, oh, that could have been a bigger whiff punch. Or sorry, a punish counter against the sweep. It looked too far, because the crouch and reading kick did punish counter. But I don't know if it was too far for a crouch and medium punch to connect. This is a swipe, crouching fierce. Slowing this round down is Lord Venom, but he jumps into danger here. And oh, and the oh. eraser. He races the mind as well. Amnesia. No level three, Forgot though. about it. Now. That will be it. And that all happened because Lord Venom wanted to take a risk with that jump, which meant he was galvanized into making a heavyweight decision, which was unfortunate there with the OD Amnesia, which means it puts Bonchan 2-0 up, making this matchup look like light work vicious. Had to go to the character select screen to confer with the rest of the teammates over in Zero Zero Nation, Lord Venom for a little bit more advice and just some time to take a breather because again he did have that life lead him going for that big risk jump to lose that momentum we know how dangerous luke can be once he has that advantage on you on the ground so just that assessment overall he has to get a different perspective and a different look to see Fina on the captain talking to lord venom reassessing well right now venom hasn't got his venomous touch that i'm used to seeing in sfl eu but the problem is as well None of these guys have played Bonchan, so there's no insider scoop mm. onto what he's thinking about most of the time, which is very difficult. But in SFL EU, the tail of the tape, the main storyline was someone went 2-0 up and the other guy came back. Let's see if Lord Venom has anything in him to do it. He was our highest point scoring uh, player in the league with 185 points. But Five points over Fina. Five yeah. points over Fina. He had a high win percentage as well. MVP. Archer again. Bonchan just breezing by it. Mm, at the cost of what? A punish counter throw. Yeah, rushes in for the safe approach. And then again, yeah, again Bonchan's just pressing buttons after one button and block. That was hella plus, by the way. Oh, he might have to just go back to doing like three lights in the string, but then you kind of have to be worried about that. parrying a block. He keeps doing it. How do you stop him from pressing buttons? It, it, I think he's trying to condition it to get him to do the parry, but... Oh, nice delay. I think he's waiting for amnesia as well, but Lord Venom he might be a little hesitant on those amnesias. Look at the perfect power of the stamp fears. Didn't quite work out. Burns himself out in the process. Swings, and that will be the round from the Lavushka. Granted, he doesn't drop it, but the ghost is going to do more than enough damage to do the rest of the work. So I get that. Yeah, Lord Venom. Oh, he taunted. Word? That was one of his taunts. I'm pretty sure that was. I mean, he's taunted some of the rest of them, but drive reversing. Didn't get his order. <laughs> Here we go, Eraser, and this is a very good choice, but it puts Lord Venom in a dangerous spot in terms of how he's going to utilize his dry gauge from this point onwards. Jumps in, and he tried to jump away. Oh, what? Trade. Imagine. Still peppering away with that crouching medium kick. Trying to swipe. Yeah, he's trying to catch him walking forward so he can clip him and get the conversion. Didn't quite work out. Still Still knocking on the knees, too. You see a lot of the crouching activity coming in from Bonchan. Anti-air with the correct side for the autocorrect. Always going to be on point. Making them pay that fee, but Lord Venom, departure up and above. Dude, I love how these guys have kept their drive gauge in the amber here, but Lord Venom is in supreme amount of danger here. No cross cut, but the light Man, punch. That's some SFI guile bison behavior. 
Lose this round. And right when you set it, the drive impact brings out Lord Venom. Not ready for it. Oh, didn't even need to go into super. The charge air knuckle. More than enough to AFK. But man, that aerial flash knuckle can throw so many people off in so many different scenarios there. Checks the drive rush and put a strive up. Big lab as well. Watch Bonchan how he's leering at JP. And oh the flash my. knuckle beat the stand hard punch. And here. There's some new tech I haven't seen. But he can still try to take this round. Crouch fierce. Ready for the no charge though. Too. He needed to commit to the charge to get the force knockdown conversion. But a level three might be a good choice here from Bonchan. Let's find out. Yes, sir. It's time to go to work. Oh, you got to do or die here. And Amnesia will be the worst chief executive officer decision you've made if you do it. But what if it works? No. Ah, oh, the delay. You saw it too. Snap the back. Uh, cash and check the DDT. Enough damage. A 3 0 sweep. Not only in the set, overall in the team battle. Dominating performance, probably the first of a few we may see today here. Tokido, set president, set pace. We saw Ryusei follow suit. And unfortunately, Lord Venom couldn't get a win against Bonchan, solidifying one of the best anchor players throughout the respective leagues of SFL Japan, US, and EU there. FAB sitting pretty damn comfortably. Taking a look at the replays, man, it's been so hard to digest whatever it is that Bonchan has been doing on offense. Lord Venom hasn't had the right defensive look. He's made a couple of decisions to press buttons on wake up, opt for movement. Even some of the amnesias have been torn up. It was, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, man. Very much so one-sided in terms of uh, Bonchan's favor. It was rough indeed. And you can tell, like I said, match presence is incredibly important when it comes to the stuff there. He didn't feel too deterred. He didn't feel frustrated no matter where he was on screen. I've noticed this in the, the past couple of anchor matches he's played now, his defensive choices. He'll block a button and he'll try and challenge. Once he thinks you're ready or anything that's in the mid range, he'll perfect parry. And his perfect parries are some of the best I've seen. I've got to say, I haven't seen enough of Bonchan this year, but I've seen a lot in his last couple of anchor matches. He's been playing, so I'm thoroughly impressed by one of the world's best loops. Still experienced nonetheless. They still have another match to play up, another team to play up for uh, Zero Zero Nation. They got to face off against Team US with the Bandits, but overall this experience against Bonchan, man. Despite it being an L, being able to play against EVO champion is always going to be an amazing thing. Of course it is. It's experience through and through. Uh, and again, every team here is trying to avoid third place. Now that was the only match they played thus far, Zero Zero Nation, but they're gonna have to rely, they're gonna have to really work to beat Bandits because Bandits got a 25-20. These guys got a 40 so what a, what a redemption from that loss they had against Bandits. So now, Zero Zero Nation are really gonna have to pick up pace and get mentally back in the game, man. Because I know these guys improved day in and day out in terms of in-game stuff, but mentally, you could be disheveled. That's something you don't want to be in, but yes, good choice here. Now, he could have done OD Amnesia here, but it was a light. So he would have backed away, but not got uh, any real right. punish. Right, no, so. no real conversion, no punish counter. You would still have to be forced to guess to see what Bonchan's going to do on reaction, despite those two orbs hovering around you, threatening the space. But yeah, I, I think, you know, that option overall to just kind of pepper him with the lights, that's something that was expected of Bonchan. He wasn't going to be uh, too risky about it. He's always been like the risk averse first type of person up until he gets you in the corner. Uh, but just the decisions overall from defense from Lord Venom just wasn't up to snuff in regards to how and the momentum that Bonchan was playing at. A complete whitewash for FAV Gaming and Zero Zero Nation. That's what it's looking like right here. We didn't have to go to the tiebreaker fixture there. It was 10 points awarded to both Tokido and Ryusei. And Bonchan followed suit by staying in that domineering role of the anchor. Getting that 20 points there. And this is what the group standards are looking like right now. Minus 10 on rounds, no points, one loss. Yeah, they're, they're really going to have to turn it around against It's a possibility. Because FAV Gaming, I believe they're mathematically fine. I believe so, unless, you know, the unspeakable happens. If Bandits happen to get like a 40-0, then they propel over Very true. five points, right? Very true. But Zero Zero Nation, they still have another game to play to face off against the US, where they could propel over to 40 points themselves, if need be, and then secure their spot into top two. But who knows? We'll see how that plays out in the meantime as we get ready for the next match. We do have to thank everybody that's been a part of both the LCQ and Capcom Cup 10. 
One of those partners being Steel Series. A lot of these guys that are coming in from Street Fighter League, they were participating in the LCQ as well. So shout out to them for providing all of the headsets for both the LCQ as well as Capcom Cup 10 this week. Steel Series Moments is the easiest way also to record and share your gameplay with all your friends. Moments in-game audio clipping also lets you capture and share your clips anywhere, which is a huge thing because I feel like editing with that type of hardware and software makes it that much easier. We've been speaking about this all week and I'm going to continue to speak about it here. Big thank you to Max Factory because they are announcing their second figure to join the six scale figure project lineup based on illustration by Street Fighter 2 co-creator and the designer who brought Chun Lee to the world, Akiman. The figure is based on an illustration by Akiman at the request of Momo Chihama Chosai Pharmacy, originally published in 2022. A new full body version of the illustration that shows Chun Li's beautiful and dignified standing pose from head to toe was created specifically for this project and will be faithfully brought into figure form by Japanese figure manufacturer Max Factory. The figure is set to stand an impressive 300 millimeters in height, showcasing highly detailed modeling throughout and directly communicating with Akiman himself throughout the production process for the second installment as well. Max Factory is set to bring the original illustration into a new dimension with this higher quality scale figure adaptation. Stay tuned for more info about this project coming soon. Big thank you to Max Factory. And we wouldn't have Street Fighter League without giving a huge thanks to Tayo Holdings for being the prizing supporter of $150,000 for the Street Fighter League World Championships. Now, Tayo Holdings is the world's number one market share in Solder Resist. The green part of printed circuit boards they create are the backbone through which we get to explore our passion for Street Fighter and through the support they uplift everyone taking on challenges to realize a happy world in and out of the game. We are absolutely happy to have them as a huge part of this event here at Capcom Cup 10. That was a whitewash, but we need to find out if our teams can make redemption here in Zero Zero Nation. We'll ban this run away with it and change things at the top of the table. What we are going to do now is we're going to throw it over to our lovable host, Rob TV. Take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, we are here at the Street Fighter League World Championships. I am Big Hollywood Rob TV, and as you can see, I am not alone. From Brazil, I have the man himself, the DJ extraordinaire Namikaze, but I also am joined with from Tokyo, Japan. You see him hosting at Evo Japan, and he's gonna be co-hosting with me today, my guy, Shun. What's up with you, Shun? Yeah, it's a real pleasure being here with you, Rob, and the games have been phenomenal, and I'm having so much fun and excited. But what's more exciting right now is to hear some stories from Namikaze. Yes, yo, okay, Namikaze, first and foremost, man, your first Capcom Cup. You fighting out of Brazil, what has your overall experience been like? You getting in games with players, playing on that big stage. How has Capcom Cup been? Uh, my, it's my first experience here, but it, it has been amazing overall. Everyone here is treating me super well. The biggest players in the world, Tokido, said he know me because in the first weeks in the rank, I was top, the top one ranked DJ, and the, all the DJ players watch my replay, so everyone here knows me. So. Uh, uh, I'm pretty happy overall about my experience. Yeah, so we saw you playing D, uh, DJ, DJ is your main character, and you're really playing really well. Why did you choose DJ? He was a cool character. I, I choose him in day one, and in day one in Brazil, I won a tournament with him. So I think the character fits my play style, and he's a cool character, man. Hey, man, I love and respect the fact that you play DJ, especially with it being February. Now, outside of that, Namikaze, all right, you fighting out of Brazil. I saw you playing against Kioma and all those guys back at home. You guys seen as one of the most excited in the world. Do you have any words for everybody back home in Brazil that's watching you compete? Uh, I have to thank everyone do, who practiced me in Brazil, Kioma, who show a lot of support for me and Juninho, everyone who is part of the community. So. Uh, I have to thank a lot of this guy. I made zero five in my group, but all of my match was really close. It could go either way. Everyone who watches, I sure have a great time. And I'm not ashamed of myself for my performance because I was nervous and was really decision-making finals process to win that match. So is, is, is that it. I want to thank you everyone in Brazil supporting, supporting me. 
No reason to be ashamed whatsoever, man. I absolutely love your DJ. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the Street Fighter League World Championships. We are about to see who is going to be officially the best Street Fighter Six team in the world, and you're going to find out all of that right after this break. But the ghost was still there. Even so as well. Welcome to This Is Fire, fueled by Pagoda. I am joined with one of the most phenomenal, no pun intended, players in the world, Team Zero Zero Nations, Phenom. What's up, bro? What's up, man? How are you doing? I'm doing amazing, but before I get into the questions, the hard hitting question I got for you, I do want to make sure we try out some of these Pagoda egg rolls. I haven't eaten breakfast yet, so this is going to be very, very nice. See? We take care of you here See, at Capcom. How much, how much are you supposed to, to, 
to. I mean, it depends on if you're a, a, a real man or not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Yeah. Okay. The I egg roll. Yeah, the egg roll is very good. Yeah. It's it's fine. Speaking of very good, I think you have to be more than very good in order to become a famous godlike player fighting out of Norway. I don't know if there is any other famous fighting game player from Norway, at least in Street Fighter. No, we have uh, my teammate, Reggie, and Ooh. it's only really us two who has been representing Norway in Street Fighter for the past, I don't know how many years now, so many years. Since yeah. Street Fighter four days. So as far as all of all of us who have been uh, pro players at any point and stuff, right? Yeah. We all look at Phenom as you are one of the elite, one of the threats to win any tournament. But I don't think people put the same respect on your name. Yeah. As far as the general public, does that ever bother you? Maybe to a certain degree, but not for personal reasons, but like for, you know, business reasons, I would say. Because maybe if you get more recognition, it could lead to more opportunities, right? All right, last thing I had to ask you about. Street Fighter League World Finals, Fina. Yeah. You've been in Capcom Cup before. Yes. You've won major events before. Yes. You have never made it to the Street Fighter League World Finals. No. Team event, that's that's a little different. The pressure could be a little different. Your, your team is on your back. Yeah. How are you feeling going to the Street Fighter League World Finals? How have you guys prepared for this? Team Japan, Team Bandits, FAV. So uh, this is the first time I qualify for both Capcom Cup and Street Fighter League. So this, uh, this is the first, this is literally the first time I, I, do, I qualify for both events. So that's gonna be a hard thing to balance both. I have to play all week for Capcom Cup and then go straight into Street Fighter League. So it's gonna be a lot of Street Fighter, but that's good, I like playing the game. So uh -huh. that's, that's, I, I, I look at that as a positive. And uh, in terms of preparation, there's only two teams. So it's not a lot of like, it's not too much homework, just a few players. You Spoken know. like a true leader. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the one, the only Phenom, and this is fire. I love those segments, man. Welcome back to the Street Fighter League World Championships. My name is Vicious here with Jammers. And in case you guys missed it, man, I gotta say, y'all need to watch this footage. Y'all need to watch the VODs because it's actually a pretty, pretty interesting scramble that we got ourselves into right now. But as scans, we still have two more teams left to play to determine the top two to make it into the next phase that is the finals stage. Before we get into that, in case you had missed the points, let's take a look at the current group standings. This was looking like right now, one win and one loss for FAV Gaming. 60 points, sitting pretty at the top. Bandits, not too far behind them. 35 points behind with that 25 points. One win, zero losses, but it was a 25, 20 pointer there. But then FAV got the 40-0, a clean sweep against 0-0 Nation. Now they are gonna play Bandits, but their differential and their points, well, they have to mathematically get a clean sweep here have any chance at sitting in the final. But there were some other predicaments or scenarios in there, wasn't there? Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's ever so important to see who makes it on the home or away side to get that initial advantage. But as it stands, we talked about it here, Bandits being on the away side, they're gonna be the ones to step up and put their roster and character selection first for Zero Zero Nation to potentially snipe out. Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but today thus far, the home teams have been winning. So, we're going to look at the away team lineup right now with Team Bandits. And this is the lineup here. Ooh. Zhao Hai going with the Ken. No JP or Jury. He's going to kick things off with the Ken first. Kappa in the middle point with the American Soldier Guile. And Mena RD doing the due diligence. The captain's work by putting Luke at the back, similar to what Bonchan has been successful with. But we go into our first match here with Rikaman once again going up against the Ken, this I'm time in Xiao Hai instead of Tokido. And if anything, he can probably use that as a morale booster. How he performed against Tokido. Shaky start, but he still kept in the dogfight, didn't he? Right, you're gonna have a different look though in regards to the play style and the pacing of it all. We've seen Xiao Hai, he was pretty much playing on point to our degree, and we totally think that he could have handed under his belt against the other JP player, Ryusei. So it's gonna be a run back in terms of the characters for both of these players. We'll see who has the confidence to start things off, either aggressive or to kind of test out the field. And it's Xiao Hai, he is walking up. Dude, my He's man had to the, the shoes. legit. My man had the temerity just to walk up in his face and try and do something there. And an OD Torbalan sends him full screen there. Again, they got a ton of exposure to JP in the SFL US League. But Dry Rush is into the conversion and another bad amnesia from Rikaman's Barnet. 
No full conversion, but that's gonna be fine. He still gets the throw and managed to get a little bit more damage. And speaking of, it's the Vortex, man. Gotta get out of here. Back roll, shout out to Tasty Steve. Thug -a -thug -a -thug. More than enough damage to secure round one. Okay, again, he always has shaky starts, and then he has to make amends and pick up the scraps there, as I said before, he Kevin's Barnet, but if there's anyone who can adapt, he is one of Sweden's finest players here. Interesting, he tried to do a low forward. I wonder what he's looking for with that crouching medium kick there, Zhao Hai. Oh, nice I conversion. love that conversion. It's so cool because that crouching medium punch is really, really sneaky, right? It's very compact. If it's a counter hit, do get that link into the sweep for the knockdown. Da -da 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 -da. Again, Xiao Hai making so much work, getting so much With out of this corner. Punish, and he's going to do the whole thing into the level two. Oh, no, no he, he built just built the level three. Dude, his meter awareness is through the roof. He knew it. He was confident. And I believe that's one of the most stylistic combos in the corner for Ken. Splurging all that drive gauge, accumulating the necessary super meter, and closing it out with that super R3. I thought he only had the level two. Does that push it past like 43 or 45 percent? Having Something like the like OD addition. Uh, I mean, you are doing all the. Yeah, you're doing There's all so the reps, much. So. Yeah. And it starts from a heavy. So. True, true, true. All right, kind of hit conversion there into the set flame. We're going to put a departure where? Just above his head on the full screen. Create some ground here to work some neutral, but then you have to remember when you send him full screen, the MO is to drive rush in Word. and get some sort of button, but he gets a sweep. Drive rush in, crouch fierce. A little bit too close if he's looking for an empty jump on those crouching fierce anti airs, but. Yeah, Rickman's got to put the stop sign up because you can see how eager Xiao Hai is using his meter to just close the gap. Step kick and then backs away, knowing that Rikamu will try and take his turn back, but he is in burnout here. He does have a level one as well. I think that's why he's trying to step kick into it. Not quite a whiff punch from his counter hit either way. He's also trying to step kick to burn him out as well, but the Dragon Lash does get beaten out by a Phantom. He's about to replenish his drive gauge completely. So this is looking really good here for Zhao Hai. Still He's going to do it again. Do... He's going to do it again, Jammers. Watch and it's up to Rickabitz Barnett. Like I said before, it's up to him to really put up the stop sign. I'm sorry for shaking the table. My bad. But Rickabitz Barnett, now on point. Oh, I mean, again, gets the pick up there into the run, Tatsu. Gets a throw. Oh my god, are we just going to see this all day from Kent versus JP? Yes, absolutely. OTA oh, tried to run away after the second throw attempt, and Xiao Hai identified that as well. Do it again. Throw. Ah, oh, he teased the idea. Recommends Barnett. Big oh damage. My. Side, side switch. switch. Oh, he's going to burn out instead. I respect it. I like that. All right, do you know why? If he got the side swap, he could have cancelled into level two, preserved the super art one after that. But still get the burnout, no? Potentially. Uh, yeah, he will get the burnout from that scenario anyway, but there's a safe jump, and that was quite risky, but he tried to go for it. He's still got dry gauge to work with, and Xiao Han is one button into level three, and he's taken the round. And that's why he stopped him with the stalagmites. Oh. Dragon Lash. He knew it. Mm, just the tail end of it, too. Recommends Barnett with the juggle and the pickup. Now tied up, one-on-one. One. And you know what? He needed that. Otherwise, he would have mentally checked out. Because remember that conversion he tried against Tokido and the heavy Strybog whiffed? Yeah. Right in his face, and he kind of looked at it so befuddled. Right. But he, he needed that to work in. It looks like that worked out. So, 1-1 one, one here. Like we said, if Team Bandits get 10 points, they're in the clear. They are in the clear in terms mm. of getting into the final two Try teams. It. Rikuma needs to win this here to actually keep giving his lifeline, or a lifeline, to Zero Zero Nation mm -hmm. to stay in this. That's why. They're really thinking about this here. I think every decision, offensive and defensive, are going to have so much weight to them for Rikaman's Barnet. Here. Counter hit. Oh, he missed the link off of the standing like kick. He was well within range. Good damage, though. It's just the timing of it all. Perfect Perfect parry. Parry. There is a. Ooh, okay. I didn't know what the timing of the uh, departure into the spike Oh, was dude, like. another bad amnesia. It's just going from bad to worse, but he gets the three piece into the strike box to generate some space. He's got to watch out for Zhaohai's movement. Fireball. He can DI. He tried to DI before, but he's too far away at this point. But drive rush in, close the gap, make him uncomfortable. Still waiting. Generate. Yeah, he needed that OD Phantom to get, get some more space. He needs to work from the mid screen now. Yeah, the pushback plus the departure, utilizing the teleport as well. Yeah, that makes sense. I love the patience that has ex exuding until this point. <laughs> yeah. The patience for like a split second, then yeah. of course well, back, to the the, back to the drawing board with Drive Rush. But he kept moving away because he just made it easier for him to Drive Rush into stand medium kick. It's a forward advancing right. normal, so... And he tried Drive Rush sweep before, it never quite worked out. So I'm surprised that the DI does work there successfully. I'm surprised that Rikuman is not really understanding and downloading Zhao Hai's movement from full screen. He's aware of it now, doesn't want to give up too much space, but it's really smart for Zhao Hai because now he's walking him Punish. down. That was clean, because that is negative 14, and the round has just about catches it. 
Okay, there's Ryuken. a Ryuken. Oh, here we go. Where's one? Here we go. Do it again. I think Ryuken embraced himself. I see. There's I'm, I'm, be an amnesia. I'm watching the look at his face. Oh dear, there's another. Make a choice. Still waiting. Great patience there, resilience. But if you lose this, bandits are in the finals. <laughs> Throw. Might as well do it again. Go out with a bang. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I literally read the lips of Rickman's Barnett in English. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. You know, it's just about that much to say it in a different language. Oh my God. The final words for Rickman's Barnett as he falls to Shanghai. Well, 10 points, which means they should have solidified their place in the final. Now it's all about the seeding, the positioning here, because again, whoever's top spot of these initial team matches will get the benefit of having home advantage in those last two exchanges there. But again, he has good starts, but it's his corner decision-making, defensive decision-making I have. And again, with this JP, he hasn't been playing it as long as Lord Venom or Juicy Joe has from the European right. region. Still pretty effective, but again, you're going up against someone who has JP as part of his repertoire of characters. Exactly so he has that. a very strong understanding of what he's going to do. Even if it wasn't Rickman's Barnett, even if it wasn't JP, I feel like True. majority of the characters and majority of the players here, even at Capcom 10, would have a hard time trying to discern what defensive choices to make against a throw from Ken in the corner. Well, I mean, right at the last stages of this set entirely, he made the deduction saying, OK, I think the safest thing is just to take those throw. But at that point, it's that psychological warfare. He has instilled that mind game. It's like, look, I'll make any decision you make bad. And then literally you feel limited. You feel entrapped. And every amnesia basically didn't work. Right. Every single attempt was unfortunately diabolical, if I must say myself. And in terms of the highlights on Shao Hai, I think his pacing overall was really, really hard to discern like between whether he wanted to go fast, whether he wanted to slow down the pace. Uh, outside of the corner situations, of course, I think his neutral decision making has been really, really on par with what we were expecting of him. I don't blame him for that last time, Niji, to be honest. In terms of what's Who on would? the line, what's at stake Who for would? your team, what's at stake for you and your pride in terms of fighting yeah. game. Like, just because that, look, Phenom taught me sometimes you just got to pick how you lose. And he picked. I will just do the amnesia. At least it's in his hands the way he wanted to go. Of out, course, right? of course, one hundred percent there. But yes. I don't know if it's any like consolation, but <sighs> it is what it is, brother. Like it depends on who you ask. <laughs> it really depends on who you does, ask. Yeah. Are you going to take the grab or are you going to do the amnesia and look like a, <laughs> you know, hailing to nothing? But anyway, we're going to transition over to our next match here, the middle match, which will be Veggie going up against Kaba. Now, this one. I've been thinking about ever since we were at the LCQ because okay. Veggie did beat Higuchi. I was watching some yeah. footage regarding this and I said, this matchup isn't too bad for Zangief. So I had to corroborate this from Veggie. I said, yo, can you confirm real quick? Is this all right? He said, it's actually not that bad. And a few people saying, it's actually not that bad for Zangief in general. You can walk Guile down. The pivotal mechanic in this matchup is actually parry. It changes it everything because now, Obviously, in SF5, he had to do the headbutt to clash and build super meter. But in this game, he's allowed to parry, and it doesn't effectively do anything, right? Mm -hmm. Which means Gal's not going to keep that forever. He's going to want to maintain a certain distance, which means you push yourself to the corner. When you're in the corner, that's where you make the most mistakes. Cyclone Lariat, the Super Art 2, yep. is a game changer as well. You can do early jump, medium kick to try and trade with the Couch Fist if Gal is not charging already. From certain distances, yes. Absolutely. And the way he dismantled Higuchi in the LCQ pools. I, I wish I got to see that. I just heard the pop off of the LCQ on the other side, and obviously, that, by the time we heard that, it was too late. But here we go. We're onto something with this one. I think it's going to be interesting how this one develops and fleshes out over time here. The footsie game is pretty interesting as well. So if you can catch Kaba with those drive rush checks, or even stop Kaba from utilizing, oh, there you go. Oh, that's huge. Jump medium kick into the OD Lariat. There's the throw. Slime Buster. Buster. He's ready. ready for it. So delayed on the OD Lariat. And we already said, look, walked him down. He got a full combo, but damn, that Sonic Cross hit. Super late there, Vicious. Towards the back. He's a big boy. <laughs> oh, Frank oh kill. what are you grabbing? He's going to build so much We're super from this, by the way. Doesn't even need it. Now, this is interesting. I've said this about certain characters before. Because of their extended combos, especially in the corner, they can actually build so much meter leading into the next round, which will be pivotal for them. It down here. Like I said he can walk him down. Try to get the parry oh. of the Sonic Boom, but I think Kaba knows that as well. That's why he hasn't thrown as many Sonic Booms as I'm comfortable seeing, but he gets the confirm into the Sonic Hurricane and makes Set up the blade too as well. Yeah, makes Veggie's uh, task to getting a Herculean task indeed. 
the fifth stage for it, too. We're looking at it right now, yo, Veggie, we're looking for his way in. Jump medium kick also, but the perfect parry from Kaba. He can also, him right back to square one. He can also try to drive impacts as well, but he's got to have a hard read on a the situation. Read, yeah. He does have Cyclone Larry, and he what? did not want that running bear grab. He did not want that. Oh dear. That Looking a little shook too. If you look at the player cam, Veggie not happy about that input. Cyclone, Cyclone Larry. Larry it. And he's going to go for the, the jack corner, hammer. Right? It looks like, yeah. He needs this positional advantage and Kabe's low on drive gauge as well. This is huge. That's the second time he's called out the standing round house. And choice. the big punish against the OD flash to finish a play. Bang! Force dynamite. I love that he went for that, by the way, because an OD SPD would have been the simplistic thing and take it around. But hey, he's still got the confidence there to close it out. That should have been punished, but I'm not sure if Light Kick catches that. Is Light Kick five frames? Should be. Let me fact check that real quick while you do this. Going into it right now, Drive Rush is going to be the choice for Veggie to close the gap. As soon as he gets that knockdown, it's going to be so, so important to lock down Kaba and the spacing. I feel like Zangief up close, way more dangerous. So I believe Gauss Carson meeting kicks negative six. That's not like it's seven frames. I, you know, someone else told me that, and I'm like, you know, I, I'm not even too sure if it's five frames because that actually is a problem normal for Zangief. The majority of his faster normals are from crouching position. Well, Veggie's on a lifeline here. He's got level two. He's in burnout. He can wait, but. I think Kaba's going to try and goad him into doing that Cyclone Lariat to make his uh, round ending stage easier. And Tia uh, Lariat. Got a quick alert on deck as well, but I don't know if that's going to be ever nah. coming out with he the amount. A, he needs level two. The current environment. He's in, and Lariat. No, oh, sir. It does get clipped, and Kaba, nice and easy. The jump round has to close it. Veggie also mentioned as well. One of Zangief's biggest issues in the game is the lack of normals he can actually throw out in the neutral. Standing light kick being his most problematic button when you drive rush cancel that. Dude, standing you're limited. light kick being seven frames is disastrous. Uh, it's got a fair bit of recovery as well, but he, there's not many moves he can throw out liberally because of the situation. Uh, and again, as opposed to everybody else who's flailing all sorts of buttons from all different strengths and sizes, it makes it very difficult. That's why the parry, the walking approach, just trudging across the screen, mm -hmm. it really is crucial. He's been getting a few successful jumps. I like that. But then when Kaba's like, incorporating his strategy and jumping at him, there's either a projectile on the screen that makes it difficult, or he's got to do a very last-minute Larry Antia. And that already has been a, a, a tough ask for Veggie, even trying to decide whether or not he should utilize that exact tactic. But Kaba, again, when he's in that range after a boom, and he's going to be in pursuit of it, Veggie like hasn't found out the right solution. He's going to continue to try and do so, obviously, but I feel like if he can overwhelm with offense first, we won't have to worry about that. Ooh. Oh, what a whiff punish with the sweet day into the safe jump. Was that jump fierce? That looked like it. Uh, it jumped down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but... Interaction already wanted to garner that space. Is that jump jab actually? It, it, it might be jump fierce. Chomp, right? I think that's jump fierce. Is it jump fierce? Yeah, it looks like it. The only time I get hit with jump fierce is when it's the body splash down fierce. Well, we don't play that much Zangief to be honest with you, so. Oh, and he gets the whip punish with the sand fierce. It wasn't charged, and the lariat Jesus. doing its job and missing. <laughs> oh man. How does that, why, I does heard, that, why does that whiff in the back? I literally heard someone say, "Fix that." <sighs> I heard that. Don't worry, I heard that part. <laughs> And that's going to be the anti Sonic Hurricane. Flash kick. Just goes to show you, man. Sometimes we're not prepared for Zangief. Kaba is. Sometimes but you lose us. just by doing the right thing. But not us. <laughs> that's why I'm a backup dancer. Anyway, Lariat. I see that caught the upside down kick there with the machine gun chops. That's where they should give him his green hand. Anyways, we do get the full. We're, push we're, back from the Sonic Hurricane as well. We're live on camera, by the way. We, we're going to get in trouble. We keep talking about Zen <laughs> Green hand. <laughs> <laughs> Overhead conversion. He does have a green hand if he drive rushes forward. All right, low forward. Oh, that could have been grabbed. Veggie hasn't SPD'd yet either. To try and force something to happen. But he needs to get in that space. There's a grab. Ooh. He might try and bait him, Cabo, into doing something. Because you can need trades. Just time to get serious. That was actually OD. And that's going to be the round. He's done. Yeah, that's the ultimate super. Oh, you're finished, mate. Next round. Let's go. To all my loyal fans. Damn. Let them know. They said your health bar was a mistake. Let me backspace that real quick. However, that means he has no access to Cyclone Lariat for a little while in this round, which is potentially his last round, Vicious. For a decent while at like that. Negative one. So they're walking in, probably looking for a jump at some point because the ground game's not working out for him. And another confirmed, the Kaba special. And the grab. 
Dragon Suplex, moving on in, and he snuck in the Dragon Impact. How many of those have we seen this set? Not that many. That's probably the first one. Gets the punish counter with the crouch and light kick, but again, has to take the risk. Standing medium kick with the anti-air. Running oh, bear, he's in there. Go. Right, he's got to bait something. He's got to go in and bait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's trying, because he's trying to get cover to OD flashing so he can get a uh, SPD. <gasps> that feels far? Far enough? He needs an SPD at this point, and he's done. That's not going to be the round, but he is done. Oh, no, I lied to you. What are you talking about? Ah, what are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean it's not going to be the round? Ah, you're right. It's the match. I see where you're going with this. I see where you're going with this. Okay. Cabo taking it down two to zero. And they're getting closer to the number one seed right now. Looking at what? How many points thus far? 45 points to the bandit camp. So then, stellar performance there from Kaba, especially following suit from what he did at the first day of the group stage of the Capcom Cup. It was brilliant to see. Successful in every regard. Didn't feel too deterred or too fearsome of the certain tools that are actually pretty decent counterplay to Gal's gameplay in this one. Veggie had a good start. I think some things went downhill when he had the accidental running bear grab. Oh. The heavy one earlier. Uh, I think he recovered from it fairly well. I think, you know, he wasn't making any more mistakes. He was still trying to play out the matchup. But this right here, you can see his disdain. Look, look at him. On the player cam, obviously not what he wanted to do. He wasn't really trying to be cheeky about it. He was just looking for whatever it was. I love that combo. And again, Zangief is a fan favorite, but you won't be see, seeing. He recovered quite well. He did. But again, what happens, what tends to happen a fair bit is Zangief is always in these kind of injurious positions where it's like it has too much to make up. It's too strenuous mentally and in game as well. Oh, Lands the level three here. It's, it's so, so clean to see like some of these land, but it's more importantly to see like how they actually mask their inputs. I think that's the coolest thing. 100%. Ever. But I, I, for me, with situations like that is, Lovely OD running bear grab, and I love that he drove Rush in and got for the bait as well. But when you use level three to close out a round like that, flip on his head, what are you giving up to take the round? What are you giving up access to that will help you win the neutral? Because Zangief winning the neutral is probably the biggest things here. We talked about the jump. We talked about walking and approaching in that space. We didn't see charge hard punches of Reed. We didn't see a DI either. We didn't know. Because sometimes he might need to use those armor properties moves to take that risk, but he just wasn't doing that because he's That's a very risk averse kind of player. Yeah. Unless it's set in stone that he'll get the reward he needs. To be fair, I also see Kaba kind of like holding down a charge no matter what and buffering after a normal that's cancelable. So if he has meter, I feel like how effective would those situations or would those uh, options yeah. be, right? It's rough, but they're on their last legs. I mean, what a decision to make here. Do they ruin FAV games day or do they ruin Bandit's day? <laughs> oh, right. I mean, that's the objective that is, a, that is a fair point I'd put, to put. I, I put the paper up in the air and just go, right, we're just going to ruin I, someone else's day. I think, yeah, so the way to do that would be to put up the top. Well, now let's, let's roll it up. Let's see what it is going to be on this next match here because Mena Lord RD. Mena. Okay, so he wants some of a go at Luke then. Interesting. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. Just because they're mathematically out, it means, okay, like we said, who do they want to give top spot to? Yeah. That home advantage is huge right. in the final for 80,000 so, USD. So, obviously, with um, the current standings of it all, I'm thinking to myself, maybe Phenom doesn't want to give any more information considering he had qualified into the big dance into tomorrow. But only Mena is there. Out of all the players that are here, only Mena is there. Okay. Right. Fair. So he's not going to play off against another contender within the cup. Fair. Okay. Thinking ahead, long term. I like that. Again, more, more people in life should be doing that. Not thinking short term. I know we want those immediate results, but long term is a huge deal. And it will be JP against Luke once again. Had he was not successful. Unsuccessful, I should say, against Bonchan. Let's see if he can do something different against Mena RD here. Oh, but he was caught standing. What was that? Did you see that? Probably let go of Crouch last minute there. Off to a bad start is Lord Venom here. Gets the grab. And then he just does a late jab. And all the loot, loot, both Mena and Bonchan, they block and then they do a medium bunch or something immediately. Gotta catch him in that second line. Try to perfect parry that heavy flash knuckle to no avail. Good awareness to color mid-air instead of going with the drive rush. And speaking of drive rush, is more than enough damage. Perfect knuckle, granted he doesn't drop. And RD, close to perfect. Taking the first round. Ooh. Sandblaster to stop a drive rush, but I think the Sandblaster was meant to do something else in the trig lap. That was perfectly spaced, by the way. I think that was fortuitous, but that will blow through the OD Phantom, the Vulcan Blast. And luckily, 
He didn't hit a jump attack because that might have beaten the flash knuckle. Mm. Back dash there. One good read on defense thus far. Turn on the perfect parry there. That's two now with the crouching heavy punch. Great work from Lord Venom. I did combo there this time, Fierce, into the. I think it was the light. Oh. Out here. And Jeez, what was, I, I can't even tell you what, what that was possibly about. Yeah. Level two in RD. Securing the first game pretty confidently. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I'm actually. Um, a bit confused as to what Lord Venom tried to do. Was he trying to bait an OD reversal, late reaction, or was he trying to delay the grab? Tell you. Or? Wouldn't be able to do it either because he's still in the animation of the drive rush. Oh well, right? it's, it's past tense now. So, drive rush into the counter hit conversion, straight to the corner. Didn't ah, get the yeah. perfect knuckle. Too close to the too close to the corner to even get the, the perfect flash knuckle because they oh, won't draw. Dear. And he's chuckling about it. We have just seen bad amnesia calls from Zero Zero Nation today. Proper spacing to get that cartoon medium punch to follow suit after the sand blaster initially. There's the punish counter against the driver, so that's one departure. Word. Oh, Awkward. and his own thing. Oh, wow. His own tool ruined his day. He tried to get the position advantage, but I think that's a bit difficult, especially when you have to know when you can walk under and still get the stand fierce. The height is a bit weird to kind of discern by the naked eye. Oh, okay. Oh. All right, bit, uh, there bit we of go. There. Okay. Show them what you're about, Venom. That's what you can do at this point. All right. <laughs> I hope it's not too short-lived. The forward throw now in for the Vortex. Being able to walk up. The Eraser just hits him raw. Not even a counter hit. No nothing. Yeah, this Suppressor it was supposed to say counter hit for him to get anything big. But let's see if he can turn it into something different. And he's going for it. That will be a level three. Okay, on the board. That's what I'm talking about. Lord Venom, he's starting to see a little bit of the light at the end of the tunnel. But in a very exciting Expensive way to end it, at least to get the tie up in rounds. This is still huge though, because uh, JP's super building is actually pretty good. Ah, oh, that was beautiful. Good jump away with the light kick to get some sort of conversion from the OD departure. There's oh, the gap in there, beautiful. and I saw that Michael so back beautiful. from Mena. Not gonna opt for level three just yet. Departure in front. His resource management against JP has actually been pretty damn well today. Um, and I've got to give props to that, honestly. I know he's low on dry gauge right now, so it might be contradicting what I'm saying, but overall, it's been pretty damn good. Ah, oh, the drop two. And the punish kind of really awkward timing. The throw is still benefiting Meta RD. And what a time to bust out, too. Drop it, carry on the spike. He just Ooh. needs one clean jump in. Not unless that. Is that going to connect it? Will? It is, yes. Ooh, okay. Beefy amount of damage. But now. And he no baited way. it, he baited it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh and he taught hey. it. Okay. Okay. Nice to see he's still in high spirits. Both okay. players kind of laughing it off. Even Ben RD had a pretty hard to chuckle at that. He's like, that was kind of sick. Yeah, listen. Oh, oh but he's pissed. <laughs> he is bringing the Blanca Chan, AKA the Brazilian beast. You did it to yourself, man. You did it to yourself. Well, remember, he needs the, he needs the 20. <laughs> you can't even see the facial expression. Look at him. I mean, it's fine. He, look, <laughs> he needs the 20 points. He needs the whitewash here. Lord Venom is here to ruin his day. And why not do that with no pressure on your hands? Frame trap with the back medium kick into Electric Thunder. This character's so funny looking, man. He is a goofball indeed. He's Ooh. in there. No punish counter, though. In my power, indeed, with the OD Electric. Gets the burn out here. All right, hop into... Ah, oh, that's tricky. That's so hard to defend against. And also, the chip damage was accumulating up. Dude, RD, that was around. tricky because I think anybody would have thought he was just going to do the safe jump. Not safe jump, but the jump attack there from that way. He charged the ball yep. instead. You saw it. It was a counter hit. You saw oh. the attempt at the anti-air. It's the grab. Will he chase down another one? All right, here comes the beast. How does Lord Venom deal against this one? Good block so far. Ooh. And another bad Word. amnesia. Damn, it's the tail of the tape, and that's going to combo. It is going to combo. No, it's not. No, I thought it was. I thought, okay, I think it was as well, but that was my fault. It's away, trying to get the space here. Pressure being applied. Low on drive gauge, what and that's around. Yep. Man, that was so deep. Man, RD up. One whole game against Lord Venom. Two to one, you need one more. And you have to remember, right, when he does land the air blanket, or well, the regular version, so deep to the ground, he can get a pick up there with a the juggle, I believe. Now he's being, he's firing on all cylinders here. He is throwing out everything with such aggression, such aggro. Hops in. So you can say Rago. That's an effort. I love hearing him on the mic. 
All right, so. Got the damage coming in. A ball to finish it. And yeah, just just the right space too. It was a medium ball. Still waiting out here, waiting for Lord Venom to do some sort of aerial movement, whether it be jump back or jump forward. Dry rushes in instead, gets hit with another aerial blanker ball. And there's one amnesia that works, but it just gets thrown. And there's counter, that was a lot of damage too. Look they at that. have not had one amnesia that's been successful. <laughs> I know that one connected, but. Yeah. Here comes Team the battle point, also RD. He can't even reversal through this mix up, by the way. He's kind of have to hold it. Plus it the plus up. As this, as, uh, as that would say. Dude, look at the dry gate damage, the mental damage that's happening. It's about to be mentally guard broken. Oh, good pick up. He's about to be level three as well. He hasn't been had a chance to even use his level C. Yeah. Lord Venom's been playing in this corner for majority, I think, yeah, what, 90% of the game? Basically. OD gets dissipated, no level two yet, and a bad amnesia once again, and he will close it out with Shout to Earth. Bang, Men RD and the Bandits camp reign over the Team EU champs, 0-0 nation. However, a really significant deal, and he did it in this fashion. 40 points to their name, that means they reclaim the number one seeding going into the finals phase. That's huge for Team Bandit. Absolute despair. Unfortunate for Zero Zero Nation. They worked hard, they worked tirelessly to get to these world finals. It looks like they didn't get a single point on the board. That's a huge <laughs> deal. It's rough. I like the little crowd play from Wickham's barn that just kind of like shrugging. He's like, you know, we tried, we tried. But they are such stellar performers and such stellar players, man. It's been such a such a great, great time seeing them all. Yo, before we get into this replay, can we get another round of applause for Zero Zero Nation one time, please? Hailing from Europe, some of the strongest players you'll see, and you'll also see Phenom in the Capcom Cup knockout stages tomorrow, playing for a million dollars. But yes, I'm fortunate there for Lord Venom. Again, Luke has been a thorn in his side for a little while, and he's actually learned, having some of the best experience on the fly. It's trial by fire at right. this point here. Again, a lot of the defensive decisions made by Lord Venom and Rickman's Barnet wasn't quite working out. But again, the players, they were going up the caliber, the psychological understanding of how JP functions in the corner was just overthrowing them there. And I love that. He still was so in high cool. spirits. And again, this character is extremely technical. Why not show off some stuff? That's what they did there as well. And he forced the switch to Mena's Blanca here. And a that lot point. of people have not been able to deal with Lightning Beast throughout the past couple of days, to be fair. So, got to give props to Mena RD for still showing how problematic that this guy can be even with the Lightning Beast and the plushies on top of that as well. Yeah, we're looking at the theme overall when it comes to the JP players on the stage, whether it's from Japan, EU, or US. It's so difficult to make the right decisions all the time, man. Sometimes you get stuck in the vortexes, whether it's a Ken throw or a Lightning Beast Blanca coming through. You have to have the right read against the other character or against the other player, man. That's just how it goes sometimes. Hence why we had talked about it 90% of the time. Lord Venom just stuck on the left side of the screen. But again, it is the two-time Capcom Cup champ, and I've held this before, I've, I've said this before plenty of times, he is the most, I think in my opinion, the most informed player in the world. 100%, and I think a lot of people con uh, concur with you in that regard. It might be the general consensus in general, and they solidify their top spot in these World Championships here. You can see it right there. Bandits, two wins, no losses, and it does work out for them there with 65 points to slither. So it looks like that tiebreaker match did the work for them. Make sure you eat the cherry on top of the cake when you do make a cake. Ladies and gentlemen, it could be all the difference. And unfortunately, like we said, no points and no victories for Zero Zero Nation. Commiserations to them. Thank you very much for coming to the SFL World Championships there. They are still some of the strongest players in my mind. Hold tight, Zero no Zero No doubt. Nation. Definitely uh, a treat to watch them progress and transform into this new team for Street Fighter VI. I'm looking forward to not only their content that they're putting out on social media, Shout but just the plenty more that they're doing in the realm of the FTC, right? I just love to see how much they're in tune with their players and how well they treat them. So I would love to see them just even more so out there. Indeed, it's been a good time here. We're still having a good time, which means we got to thank our lovely sponsors once again. Big shout outs to our food sponsor, Pagoda. There, don't fight your damn cravings. There you go. This is what it is. There's egg rolls all around the venue. So if you want a quick snack, try out some egg rolls. Shout out to Pagoda once again because they are they are available at the bar. 
Really couldn't do it without them, to be honest with you, because they've been serving up egg rolls pretty much all day. So big cups to them. Really, really enjoying that. And you can also enjoy the big collabs that we've been making with Uniqlo as well. Uniqlo has been doing a lot of collaborations in the past with some of the really, really cool fighting games across the board. But overall with Capcom, guess what? Not only are they decking you guys out in the Battle Hub, but also IRL. As you can see, the Uniqlo's graphic t-shirt brand, UT, and Street Fighter VI, they're having that big old collab at the Battle Hub as well. Starting today, all the players who log in during the collaboration period will receive an in-game Street Fighter UT t-shirt. Go check it out after the tournament. You guys want to deck yourselves out because I, for sure, have these in person. They fit well, they look great, and I'm pretty sure they would fit your avatar just as well. That's actually kind of sick. I'm not going to lie to you, man. Beautiful indeed, but we also got to thank our prizing sponsor as well. Huge thanks to Teo for holding, being the prizing support of 150,000 USD for the Street Fighter League World Championships. Teo Holding is the world's number one market share in Solder Resist. The green part of printed circuit boards they create are the backbone through which we get to explore our passion for Street Fighter, and through this support they uplift everyone taking on challenges to realize a happy world in and out of the game. We are happy to have them as part of this event. Much appreciated. We've established ourselves the top two teams. Unfortunately, you had to say farewell to another. But when we gear up for the final stage, this is where it all matters. $150,000 on the line. We'll see who gets the big line share after this break. Fighter means history. It's what got me into fighting games. It's what got most of my teams as well. And it's good to see just multiple iterations through time as the game continues to get better and better, new characters, better graphics. We do this because not only we love it, but the rest of the PCS family that buys from us. PCS really started getting into the statue form of Street Fighter back in 2007. We've continued to grow and expand our Street Fighter offering from everything from quarter scale to third scale size. Kind of my baby or my favorite is this new uh, fitness line that we have coming out. So we continue to expand and change it up and not just do something that everybody else is doing, but try to make it unique to PCS. It's one thing to be licensed and create statues for the fan, but to us creating the trophy that the winner will take home, I view that as a big honor. So we look forward to seeing it raised high.
when you always see nothing, I just barely scratch the surface. Throw me in the rain, let me do my thing. That they hit me deal, fight it through the pain when I'm in the zone. I ain't never say much, but you see me up top. You see my numbers healthy, the pressure don't stop. Until I'm in the top, see the bottom seats watch. They all see me flop, but I'm stepping on them, watch, let them watch. Born ready to fight, this is my moment. Coming for it all, just show me my opponent. Wanna be great, I'm a legend in the making. And this is mine for the taking. <laughs> Cause I got what it takes to be on top I'm number one cause I don't stop All gas, no brakes, high stakes I don't act tough till the test let them fall Just not stop, you ready or not When it's all said and done, I'ma be on the top Three, two, one, let's go I'm ahead of the game, don't remember my name Not stop, you ready or not When it's all said and done, I'ma be on the top Three, two, one, let's go I belong in the number one spot Welcome to the only big time team event in the entire FGC. This is the Street Fighter League World Championship. You have Japan, what most hail as the strongest region in the world. They just had the hardest season of Street Fighter League to date. And who better to walk away as the champions than Team FAV? Early on, things were very competitive, but in the second half, they reached a whole new level. But what else could you expect when you've got two EVO champions under the same banner? In Street Fighter League US, things were a bit more personal. Week one, Mina RD calls his shot. He lets it be known, Team Nasser has to go down. Fast forward later in the season, he gets exactly that. Done. RD and the Bandits, your SFL Season 6 champion! But please believe, it took more than a two-time Capcom Cup champion for Team Bandits to get to the promised land. He needed his teammates. Oh my god, he might just do it! Level 3, that's two rounds! Who's that? Oh, we took his back to And last but not least, Street Fighter League EU. Amongst all the chaos, amongst the madness, the fireworks, one team seemed to remain still. And that was Zero Zero Nation, led by the uncaged tiger that is Phenom. Oh, the and the calm confidence of Lord Venom. This team is the definition of a threat. No! We've got a problem. Go! We've got three teams, but only one can walk away as champions. Bandits, Zero Zero Nation, FAV Gaming. Who you got? All right, and welcome back to the SFL World Championships here in Avalon, Hollywood. Myself, Jammers, and Vicious calling the action. We have already said our goodbyes to the Team EU Zero Zero Nation, unfortunately. So now my bias commentary goes out the window, and I can finally be professional. How about that? <laughs> took you a while. <laughs> took you a little bit. I was actually rooting for EU along with you, low-key. But at the same time, it's like we had talked about it right before we went back live. You know, it's it's... It's so difficult to contest, I feel like, you know, it could be anybody's game at any given moment. But EU, again, big shout outs to them, Zero Zero Nation coming all the way through to practice and play the privilege of being able to play along to the very side of legends of the FTC is also going to be a, a real big treat and also make it a mark for themselves as well going forward. I'm sure they're going to look forward to like all the practice that they're going to be going into the lab with and all the match footage and all the data that they have. That's also going to be like a big, big present going back home. Newfound me mental state as well because they'll have, like you said, they've accumulated a lot of knowledge, <clears throat> the necessary knowledge as well to be moving forward and improve right. with Street Fighter 6 lifespan here and again. Give them credit because those are two powerhouse teams we're having in the final here. EVO champions, Capcom Cup champions, world prolific players in their own right and different fighting games as well. It was a tall order, but it wasn't impossible. But now we must gear up to our next fixture here. So this is the grand final. Now what you have to remember as well is they're not playing with 40 points anymore. No, no, no. We add an additional 30. That's right. It's going to be a race to 30. We're going to see them play three matches at a time and get a little bit of a switch up between the home side and the away side. Race to 40. Sorry, I had to 30 and I said race to 40. Okay, really? Should be 70. It says 70, but you start with the 40. 
That is fair. Don't I mean, worry. That is fair, yeah. That's why me and Vicious don't do maths on camera. <laughs> anyway, but we're That's setting fair. it up here. So it means because Bandits won that match and put themselves top spot, they get the home advantage, which means Team FAV yes. have to uh, they have to reveal their away line and that's what they're going to do. So it looks like Sakonoko may not actually feature in today's event for Street Fighter League. It, World it really depends. I think he's doing such a fine job of being that uh, fourth man perspective to kind of give you all the looks that you may not have um, necessarily been able to see, dur see during the games. And I, I, he did that over in the finals of Street Fighter League Japan as well. He's been kind of like the guiding voice for some of the players in regards to what they've practiced up with. But yeah, overall, Sakonoko taking that back seat majority of the games, I think that only really benefits the rest of the team just looking at how he's dissected some of the players and given the advice afterwards. But if his Chun-Li comes up to bat, I know for damn sure he is more than ready to take on anybody on the Bandits roster. A veteran through and through. But like we said, race to 70. These guys are showing the sportsmanship, shaking hands and getting underway. So as we noticed there, just a little swap between who's in the vanguard position. And it will be Ryu, so this time round, and Tokido will be the middleman. The strategy is to keep Bonchan at the back. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And he's been consistent today. He's probably been one of the highest points earners thus far. Super consistent. Right. Nail-biting set, losing it to Mena RD in their first exchange there for the uh, seeding matches for the grand final, of course. But then... This is going to be super important, right? Do they stick with that strategy? Do they, do they throw a spanner in the works and put Mena if, somewhere else and give it experimental purposes to someone else at the back? Uh, that is that is a very, very valid question, considering how much they're going to be gunning for. Again, that race of 70 could be so unpredictable in true, regards to the different true. looks for the matchups. We've seen that in the US, we've seen that in EU, we've seen that in Japan. Right? Before we digress, though, let's talk about what's in front of them at the moment. We could talk about what comes after in the anchor match, but for you, say, now he has been four for four in regards to two different cans. But does that mean for the Bandits that they will be sending the Ken specialist, Chris Tatarian, up, up to bat? They could do, because hypothetically speaking, you're not going to throw out Kaba to the walls. That's not a good idea. Um, so that, that And you wouldn't want to use Men RD too early, and Shao Hai has already had that history done, right? He could change characters to the JP Mirror. Potentially. Oh, that was that was like the, the theme of Street Fighter League US was the JP Near. Well, look, this is what has been happening. His total amount in terms of SFL Japan, a total of 15 matches, seven matches won, and 110 points accrued for the points for his team. Yeah, this is the SFL Japan sets like I just mentioned. But what's interesting is I didn't even know he was 30 years of age. He looks 21. Brother, I still, I mean, considered I was technically right by saying young man, right? Yeah. Still younger than me. He's older than me. That's, that actually is kind of crazy. I thought you, you know, I'm not even going to say what your age is. But yeah, Ruse, again, despite his age, despite his appearances, <laughs> plays like a grown man. He does. He really does. Listen, and man. He's had such a background of so many different fighting games. But now it comes down to who he's facing off against from Bandits. Let's find out right now well. who he's playing up against. Reveal to me what's behind door number one. And it will Shao be... Shaohai's jury. Okay. okay. Interesting. Good call. Now, interesting, Jury, interesting how jammers talk to me. Jury can be a little bit of a nightmare for JP. I, I, I do think she's one of the best characters at harassing her opponents, especially with that plus on two block medium. She monopolizes space really well in the mid-range. You, you can drive rush through one of the ghosts to stand medium kick, or even a stand roundhouse get punished kind of float. From max distance as well, she has one of the longest, I think, if not the longest drive rush distances throughout uh, the If cast. they haven't changed anything, and uh, if Aki's is to anything to go by, because it's not super long, then yeah, Jury should still be the longest drive rush uh, in the game. And it, well, he's on Ken now, but we got told Jury, so I, I don't know if he's uh, going to Aston Kutcher us. Uh, I'm not sure, but... Jeez, what a... What? What a reference. First of all, that was American. Second of all, that was ages ago. I know that was ages ago. <laughs> Don't look at me with that smile. That's so <laughs> weird that you said that. Am I being punked now that you said that? That's crazy. Maybe. I don't know. You're weird, man. So are you. <laughs> That's why we're on here together. <laughs> Jury versus JP is the selection. Shao Hai securing his pick. And this is it, ladies and gentlemen. It's the final stage, baby. Street Fighter League World Championships. Now underway, Shao Hai versus Ryusei, game one. All right, there you go. Amnesia works out there, and then lovely defensive sequence there from Shao Hai. He will store up. 
The jump game can be a little bit annoying as well. She does have throw loops, because I have been saying this for ages. And again, piling on the pressure, still delaying the jabs into the throw. And I love that backdash there to not even try and challenge Ryusei stand hard punch uh, timings. Oh, again. Man, sniping out all the defensive choices thus far, but he makes one slip up, preemptively throwing out that fierce. Ryusei was already airborne. We're going looking good here. Sends in full screen as well, low on drive gauge. She's going to let that recover as much as possible. Okay, almost down the active frames and that is crazy long. And Elias Xiaohai now going to the parry option, knowing full well that level two is coming. Great escape for Yusei. Now in a stuck spot. Perfect parry against the overhead. He at least gets to set up. Not too much damage taken away. That's fine though. Positional advantage is what it's all about. And then the command grab was avoided. Back medium punch into wow. the embrace. Whiffed, unfortunately. He was hyper aware that some sort of gimmick was going to be there to change things around. Ready to get that round. Shades of Nemo. Shao Hai not phased by it one bit. Possibly attempting to bait out the amnesia from that backlash because she was hella plus on uh, that. I mean, speaking of amnesias, he got the pickup and the positional advantage here. Did Ryusei going to get the combo as well? No forward roundhouse there. Uh, here it comes. Looking to burn him out. Make it a true block string. Yeah. Everyone falls for that. That's very difficult to deal with. And you do have to manually stand up to avoid one of the ghosts at one point while the crouch immediately keeps coming low. Paul Pern out here, looking to do it. True string. Oh, he tried to go for the mix-up. Didn't quite work out. Because his phantom mix-ups in the corner are extremely deceptive. So if you don't see the high or low, he gets a full combo. I like the presence of mind, though, from Shao Hai after that block to try to retaliate. Just wasn't enough to shake up you say. But speaking of now, Anti-Air still on point. Shao Hai being very attentive to when Ryusei wants to take to the skies now, at least uh, with back towards the corner. Again! Plenty of time after that recovery of low medium kick now. Back to back throws. This one there's a punish counter. The yeah, Amnesia comes out this time. You see an attempt at a throw, but look at the damage on board. Do it again. Double one. up. Bam. Oh, beefy. 45% there. Just borderline 50. Dashes out of the corner to get the space needed. But that's going to be the chip kill. Good call. Excellent management of the resources. Shao high. Game one. And the players are getting better knowing when the level three will do the chip because most of the level threes in this game, excluding, uh, sorry, excluding Ken, they do 10% chip damage. So the fact that he done the heavy Fuha store or release, I should say, into the level three, good awareness there on the Vitality gauge. Good start. Much better. And we, I knew we were going to see the jury at some point because, again, this character I've heard is one of uh, JP's more problematic matchups. That was a mad far punish. Hey man, hurt box in this game are a bit wild, I won't lie. Oh, he wow. could have got a conversion there, but he went for a throw instead, played it safe, and a blade back throw there from Xiao Hai turns things around. Oh, and speaking of turning around, yo, the amnesia. Good call out with a back dash. Initially from Xiao Hai, a throw. Might be able to do it against Ryusei. Good block. Jeez, but even better pressure. Xiao Hai breaking down the defenses yet again over Ryusei. Looking at match point. I'm telling you, having that insider perspective, that first person perspective of understanding the best character in the game is really helping Zhao Hai have that advantage in game. Stands up the whole time to block the overhead. Manhouse, try to get another one there, but it looks like the crouch meeting can keep to the punch. Right, there you go, now observes indeed before the departure and then layers up his jump there, but the jumping face gets him out of trouble. And it's a hard knockdown as well. Damn, he's been able to read Ryusei's defensive choices like a book. Oh, the one time he slipped up, Ryusei does create some space departure in front. Oh! That was so, so unfortunate for oh, Xiao Hai. Deal with this, please. Deal he with it. He tried to jump. He got the initial parry. He did, but he still had to deal with it. So. Got the initial parry, and you saw Ryusei kind of walking up. Maybe, you know, if, if, if that throw had landed and it was a punish counter, it would have killed Xiao Hai for sure. So I guess he was weary of that. Three bars to his name, though. This is an excellent start if you wanted to spend it. Yeah, good choice, because he had to do the OD version of the Ankonsetsu. The overarching kick to replenish as much drive gauge as he possibly can before he goes back in. We'll get that micro walk throw. Oh, what a perfect parry. And he's going to go for the side swap conversion instead this time. Instead of a back throw, set up something beautiful. Oh, oh just whiffed. Perhaps See. trying to get a bait out of Xiao Hai. He's not going to feel that. No, I think he's too far away. That might have been a miscalculation in spacing. I agree with that. Backs away. I love how he's backdashing. After he does the Fuha store, he backs away to avoid the stand fist completely. Not even trying to steal some frames. Here comes another Lavushka. Good Ooh. defense from Xiao Hai. He gets out. And because he defended that, that puts him in pole position to take this round fish. Exactly it. He has nothing else to fear. The damage mitigated. 
the gauge drained. It was all Shao Hai after that immaculate defense. And that is a huge deal when going up against JP, ladies and gentlemen. You learn, you do the necessary prep, you understand it. Play the character yourself if you have to. Really understand what am I looking for? And it's always those subtle nuances outside of the mix up. How much drive gauge do I have? How much vitality do I have? What is going to happen if I don't want this? I think that's what people don't think about the most. But because he understands the character so well, Xiao Ha, he was able to counter accordingly and really right. worked out. It almost feels like when you deal with the level two as much as Xiao Ha did, you almost feel hopeless as a JP player. It's like, if I can't do my one and ultimate, you know, mix-up tool, what is there left? That's fair. Thankfully for Xiao Ha, didn't really get to think about that situation too often outside of level two. You're looking at the right decision making, back to back calls with the throws. And even so, when he was really of the amnesia, he peppered in the lights first just to kind of test the waters. But you say, man, paying him off tenfold, yo, that was actually kind of disgusting in terms of damage, the back to back level ones. But speaking of, look, the chip damage, just as significant. But yeah, I think his overall decision making on offense and the proper reads against you say to really excel them above and beyond this matchup. Yeah, it was unfortunate there. I've seen the vast majority of amnesias from JP players missed today. Again, full credit to the players that are going up against this character to really understand the timings and when the JP players really want to afford that risk. They know what is entailed, but I love this turnaround here from Ryuse. Managed oh, to get the round because, too. again, he did try to jump out. Now, it might be easier to jump away from it than it is to jump forward, but because of his position, they had to jump forward, which is probably what messed it up. Right. Probably had a misunderstanding there as to what was going to happen. But yes. Final yeah, while it's burnt out. He already, ex he already spent all of the meter. You didn't get really get to see the highlight of the defensive maneuvers from Shao Hire, just the decisions to parry and move on out of the way. But yeah, in that situation, when you're down and all the chips, like he's, of course, he's going to attack at the heart. Of course it is there, and he's been doing so well for Team Bandits. One step closer to the four rings and the ultimate trophy. I've got to say, SFL Japan's trophy was beautiful, by the way. Dude, it was huge, Dude, too. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you need with those kind of trophies here. But hey, let's not do those premature celebrations because the guys are still on job. They're still on the clock. And this is what we're going to do. Transition into match two here. Yes, Bandits sir. Bandits Karma will be there to counter pick Tokido. This is what we did see before where Tokido did get the dub. So it will be the run back with the guy who qualified to the cut via Central America. And I'm glad they're sticking to their guns, right? They're immediately applying what went wrong in their situation in their first encounter and looking to make amends. So I think this is great starting off as like the home team to kind of get this out of the way and figure out the strategies to force Team Japan now to make that rebuttal adjustment. And considering they're going to get the side switch after the three games, this is such a strong look for Bandit. But we'll see how it plays out for Kaba, if he'll yield the same exact results as Shao Hai, but Knowing Tokido, the legend himself is Ken. We'll see how that plays out. Game two incoming. Well, he had Kaba a very unorthodox. Tokido. He had a very unorthodox and aggressive start before with the drive rush into sweeps, and then his button usage became safer and much more peaceful as the set came down the line. The perfect parries and the projectiles really helping as well. And Kaba was banking on some part of Tokido's playstyle working like when he was going up against Angry Bird. Right. That didn't quite work out. Let's see if Tokido keeps up the strategy. What an interruption against the drive rush. To be fair, Kaba was throwing out a ton of booms. It was kind of uh, difficult to even make that call. And you see it right there. Yeah, Kaba now going for the counter poke crouch jab on the way over. Yes, indeed. And the punish counter. Oh, he's going to go for big damage here. He's going to go for the sure you can end there instead. Not looking to get the, the kill because he would have built the meter as well. I'm not sure if he would have killed, but he gets the throws. Has a super art two locked and loaded. Save you uh, securely. It's that round. Low forward, catching the toes as well. Tokido going for the corner carry, enhanced Tatsu. Okay, good check again. It looks like Kaba tried to throw early, so he might have had a misconception of the spacing himself. Oh, dude, that was that had to be unsafe, surely, that crouch immediate kick. I didn't see no light kick there. No, not even an attempt. Oh, that's going to be more than enough damage. Could have been a game changer there for Kaba, but he played it safe and didn't even try. But his reward was losing the game itself. Jeez. The Tokido. 79 seconds on the clock, too. All right, so what, what does he do at this point? Because he's always been on the back foot. He's always been playing defensively and then trying to push himself out of the corner, trying to dominate neutral. But because Tokido's actually had 
such mental control on the ground in the horizontal range. It's been very difficult to, for Kaba to establish any sort of dominance, don't you think? I mean, even with like the one mistake that Tokido made, he didn't even capitalize on it. So I do agree with that wholeheartedly. What do you do now to kind of change up your ground approach? He was pretty offensive, actually. Pretty aggressive, I should say, with the Sonic Boom presence overall. I'd imagine, do you think he would kind of close the gap a little bit further and actually just kind of walk within mid-range space and kind of maybe tantalize the Fierces or the Roundhouses to get an even closer punish, perhaps? But, but then you expose yourself because Guile, like, believe it or not, crouch medium kick, so back kick, one or two other normals as well. They are pretty risky uh, if you understand how to fight Guile in the necessary space. And you do have to be accurate in that regard. But to challenge your opponent, you have to put yourself at risk. Guile can do that, but staying at that Sonic Boom range is safe. But Tokido has even comfortably been dealing with ah, that. So. And now you're seeing a little bit more soul boss. We rarely actually, not rarely, but we haven't really seen that utilized as much from Kaba. All right, target combo into the flash kick. Sets up the blade and sends in full screen, and he's going to play this game until he gets about three dry gauges before he makes a choice. Still booming. Yeah, told you he had to wait till three gauges before he goes in. And upside down again, throws a fireball as a rebuttal there. Tokido misses the forward fierce there, but the punish on an up close Sonic Boom, which puts him in an injurious position once again. Overhead. That was so meaty. I that, think he could that, have linked it. I don't know. That connected weird. Oh no. <laughs> Committed to it, and that's going to be huge for Tokido here. Dragon Lash, and he will do. Level two, super nature. Close enough. I'll give it. I'll give it a solid eight out of ten. Do I have to put some more info into it? It's Tetsfusion. Okay. I lost Steve. He's probably here. I promise. Oh, he's going to get the round though. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's like right behind us. I heard him in the crowd. Tetsfusion nature. That was him. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That medium kick that looked. It, I think it was a little bit too far out. Okay, it's the naked eye. I'm bad at this stuff with this damn medium kick. It's a low forward converts into the flash kick. Good range there. For Kaba, upside down kick now. Just trying to, again, keep it mid screen and push Tokido to the corner. But Tokido has a much that better is time. A normal man. That's, whoo, that just stuffed out the anti air attempt from Kaba. Very early jump fierce. Does that a lot? Gets the back throw there. That said, can hit on the overhead, so it wasn't in the recovery period. Five all in. And what a punish counter as well in Hot Pursuit. Tokido knew it as soon as he saw the boom. An interruption against the Dragon Lash, looking for the throw. Tokido knew it, hence why the jump back was so, so clean and well red. But it's interesting what Tokido tried to go for there with the button into Dragon Lash. People check with one light afterwards, and depending on the version of Dragon Lash, it'll beat it. So I understand why he tried ah. to go for that little frame trap. I've seen Ken players do that. Yeah, so. that's right. Sonic move away. He's still got level three as well. Trying to feint something because he's trying to catch him with a blade. Rashid can stop his momentum like that with Whirlwind Shot as well. Oh, he yeah. goes through, mix up game. What's it gonna be? Oh, D flash kick, pops him away. And he's gotta go in, stays standing to block that overhead here. Kaba needs a conversion into his CA. The defensive choices from Tokido, nice and easy. Also, real patience here in the neutral game. He's, uh, he's got 18 seconds on the clock. He's either got to convert into CA or he's going to have to try and get Man. Sonic Hurricane to do the work. He's trying to go Tokido into making any sort of offensive decision. He can burn him out, but the timer is still in Tokido's side, and that's going to be no slam. No. No. Hold on a minute. He can still try. There's a throw. He's Two, forces one. him up. That's the most you can do. It's the most you can do. Unfortunately, Tokido opting not to quick recover. Very smart choice. Good resilience, good patience. Good mental fortitude there, not to panic, and he gets a clean jump in. Now look at that match point for Tokido. Any solid hit from either or, either player, it's going to lead him to a level 3 for sure. Oh, this is going to be it, right? Oh, he, did, he didn't spend it. The precise spacing into the stand fist there. I mean, he's still got it, so you can still scare Kaba with his body oh, he's choices. Got it. Oh, that's everything. He's cashing out. He is doing everything vicious. Now, uh, you know, I think he's alive by a pixel. Maybe. I, I think he's allowed by a pixel. There you go. Good call. He's just going to wait. That's all he needs to do. There you have it. Didn't find the adaptation that Kaba needed, but Tokido put a point on the board. Tied up 10 points apiece for both teams, FAV Gaming and Bandits. What a sigh of relief for the camp. You can see. I feel like Bokshan was like the most exasperated out of all of them. It's like, oh, I can't believe he got that. Well, it seems that. Kaba needs a little bit more experience against fighting Tokido himself personally. Because I, I do think he has a very strong understanding of the matchup, but you don't want to be too accustomed to one playstyle. You hear all the high level players talk about it. Right? You don't want to be too accustomed to one playstyle for a specific character because it turns from what Ken does to what Tokido does.
That's just using it as an example here. But again, Tokido's match presence, his awareness, his understanding of where to stand, where to challenge, where to take the risk, he was pretty much smack bang on point the vast majority of the time. So I am impressed about how he's been handling this matchup as a Ken player, despite what I hear about this matchup on paper. Yeah, and talking about it from paper to player, you do make very, very valid points, right? You have to really adapt to whatever Tokido's throwing at you, but it's also very, very difficult to adapt on the fly because he's so interchangeable with so many different looks, and his reads can sometimes be a little bit wild. Well, not too wild. He's also pretty safe in certain regards, but he's not afraid to take some really, really big risks off the read. And you saw him in his earlier stages of the game as well. 100%. And again, he saw that cover the real time. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. So you know close. What? That's just unfortunate because I... The thing is, I don't know if that's like random or it's a set distance. Because sometimes I feel when you think they're not going to be pushed back far enough after a button into DI, it'll work. Because think about it. Does it depend on the normal that you're going to use, that pushback combined with the driving back? Or yes. is there some other more intricate rules at play that we just don't know about here? I always thought it was a set distance of for, of, off of the drive impact. But again, I, I, I totally understand how, what you mean if it's like the pushback based off of the normal first. Yeah. But yeah, I always thought it was a set distance. Maybe it's something I'm just going to have to look into, but it definitely feels like one of those intricate Please, things. But yeah, I mean, hey, listen, know. any of the Street Fighter gurus on social media, let us know if you do go into that because we've got a plethora of lab monsters in the community. Mm -hmm. Shout out to all you guys for doing that work and posting it on social media. But we need to take a look at the scores right now. This is the scores on the doors at the moment. It is 10 apiece. Zhao Hai getting 10 points in the primary match. The secondary match, 10 points from Tokido. But now, we go back to the anchor match, and this has been a back and forth. This has might have been one of the sets, if not the set of the day here. Done a Luke Mirror, been playing it with the Blanca. Bonchan, I have been thoroughly impressed with his knowledge. Like I said, just to regurgitate, thoroughly impressed by what he's been doing in terms of counterplay of Blanca in the neutral. And you're a victim just like everybody else. Dude, his development you make of this him character angry. has been so, so sick to watch, right? Really making his, this character his own in the way that he wants to play. And also his decision making when it comes to like uh, seeing people try to escape out of the corner. He's innovated some really, really high damage scenarios and also leading to Oki, of course, also in, in part of the character Luke. But I think him coming up with the innovations to like stop somebody from, from jumping out of the corner for one. Like he started to innovate the jump medium punch to clip somebody mid air and then go for a full combo off of like a, uh, an air knuckle too. He's been really, really keen on what to do defensively. Like he's very, very active on defense as well. We had seen it when it comes to his decisions, when it comes to crouch jabs as well and going into counter pokes with the crouching medium punch to follow. So overall, I think you had something to say. Sorry, I was going to ask. I'm going to say, let's just talk about the implications of this match because sure. they are in the home side here. So they need the 30 points to have as much of a buffer before they transition over to the away side. Yeah. If Bonchan gets the 20 points here, this is going to be huge because they can kind of pick at will against uh, Team Bandit's away lineup. So we'll see how this pans out. Good start there, then. Oh! Decision to parry, didn't pay off from NRD. Now he's stuck in this corner against the Vortex. And now I guess that trade is going to be just fine for him. Punish counter on the roundhouse. And RD in hot pursuit. A little hot footed. Just waiting it out here as well. Okay, no stand roundhouse anti air. Now, there wasn't really much anti airs from men at RD in the first set, so maybe Bonchan identified something. Maybe tried to go for a more aerial approach with the Hammer of Justice, but the back throw there. Drive rushes in. And here comes the activation. He could use this to actually replenish drive gauge there, but the Man, perfect parry no shot. to the punch. And he goes straight for an uppercut. Yes. Baits his reversal. And it's so smart to do it that way. You saw the amount of drive gauge Mena RD had left, but also in the Lightning Beast, he could still continue on to another role, so he didn't want to risk it. He used something invincible to stuff oh, it outright. And speaking of stuffings, damn, look at the damage. Level three, you already know what was coming. 45 to 50% Nah, it's gotta be way more than that, bro. Dude, the whiff punish on the wild lift there with the stand heavy punch. Phenomenal stuff. And he baits a reversal once again. Bonchan, super comfortable. Won't be able to take the round, but he'll be in a good position for guess for game. Well, okay, take the back. Thing. He can do that. That's yep. fine. Early sum, that's fine. He's got all the health to do this. This is actually fine. This is completely fine for Bonchan here. He gets one mix up off of this. Oh, here it comes. What on earth is this? Okay. Oh. Wow. So I understand that in that situation, the safe jump, you do get the perfect parry. It does leave Blanca at minus two in that scenario. So he wanted to steal his turn back using something invincible. But the thing is, there, you don't know what was going to happen. So maybe if he did jab electricity then he has to deal with the Poshi momentarily. But does he have, but, but does he get the priority to do so when he gets perfect parry? That's the issue, right? Well, that was the mind game behind it, which is like you said, why he tried to take his turn back. 
Uh, I, yeah, if, I, if, I see if, the layers. Yes, I see the layers. I if, see the, if, if the plushie was electrified before that, then like Mena would have won. Fine, that exchange, yeah. There was there was no question about that for sure. Shoulda woulda coulda. But he went immediately back to the mirror. He said, "Back to fundamentals, baby. Let's do it." Trying to fight Bonchan with fight fire with fire. They say. And the macho ring as well. Yo, shout out to the music producer for this specific stage because it actually is a uh, pretty damn intense. It's pretty much a banger from me. I love this song. Yeah. The here there. Okay, gets ah, the overhead. The overhead. Oh, but it wasn't the combo he was looking for. Maybe he didn't want to put himself into burnout just yet, so he ended it with the fireball. He was at like two and a half bars. He wasn't going to... Well, he can get a knockdown, but not the knockdown that's ideal for Luke in those scenarios. Right. And a lovely three-piece check into the light flash knuckle there. And again, Bonchan still challenging after one light. Defensive choices have been interesting today. He's had a much better read on Meadow's defensive choices. Oh, well. the commitment to the bonus. target combo. Found himself out for the ideal positional scenario. Still holds up. And the throw just whiffing away. Bonchan was in complete control, despite being in burnout. Again, as we mentioned before, him being able to play out of burnout is a notch above almost everybody else, it seems like. Again, he didn't try to anti it there because he was too far. So good spatial awareness there. Oh and my. another check on forward movement there from Bonchan from Mena. Maybe kick, he loves that guy. Really good at setting the pace and dictating what the opponent should counter with in response. And we'll drive gauge of the both of them, but the fireball can just buy in time until the big jump what comes jump. in. And he's got to cancel early into that level three, but he's going to go level two instead. This might be the more practical scenario in terms of drive gauge management. Interesting. He's got a block, surely. Oh, okay, he did. Oh, but it's the burnout. And you can see him buffering away, man, RD. He might be using or getting ready for a super art, but. Ah, and that's going to be more than enough damage in the tank. Bon Chan, level one. The Vulcan comes out. Minor ID. Again, he was pumping away in the corner. Didn't want to fear that repercussion of that drive impact. But sometimes I do feel that players actually, like, they use it as a smoke screen. It's like a farce. Yes, it's like they're not actually pumping, but it's like, I'm just going to use the mind game there because there's a visual indication as to what it is. Yes. And you know what the input is, which they have to couch twice in quick succession. Yes. So maybe that's what it could have been, but hey, if he was pumping for a Vulcan Blast or something, yeah. no. Just putting the idea in the opponent's mind is more than enough, I feel like, on defense. Yes. Managed to close the gap, but an immediate reversal. Still having a difficult time reading Bonchan's defensive choices here in this set. Almost got the whip polish on the stand, medium punch, and immediate there, your butter with the OD to stop the dry brush cancel pressure. Looking for potentially the counter, but speaking of, punish counter on the throw. Punish counter on the parry, excuse me. Oh, oh, the awkward. Almost fortuitous is there, but it works out for Mena as he gets around. And he needs to build on this momentum. Hopefully, the pendulum will swing in his favor from this point onwards. And he gets oh, it. He sniped out the delayed normal from Mena RD. He tried to counter the drive rush. So he gets clipped with the suppressor. All right, gets clipped with an OD flash knuckle into the corner here. Still blocking it out. Mena's going to have to be. Feet firmly planted into the ground because some of his defensive choices have not worked out unless he forces one here from a parry. And there's the back throw. He's got a build on this. Oh, you are so sneaky over that jab too. And Bonchan, I think he might have got cut free jump frames. Oh, that's just about going to burn him out. If he left that combo gone any longer, that wouldn't have burned him out. So the eraser will do the trick. He's only limited to his own level two. Oh, and this is huge damage. It's not going to build enough bar. But if you do it again, oh, he tried to sneak it in. Bonchan, he's still alive. It's not going to be too enough, far. it's too far! Hold on, they're still in there, OD, and he's still burnt out. Bonchan might have to jump forward, somebody did! What? he missed his uppercut input! He totally missed his uppercut input! That was a crouch jab from Bonchan! Crouch medium punch, excuse me, crouch medium punch from Bonchan! That was so profound, Bonchan took his hat off for two seconds, I've never seen him do that before. Anyway. Let's get this show on the road here. Mena trying to slowly but surely call his way back in. The crowd are behind him. And that's an exuberant crowd if I do say so myself. Perfect parry into the crouch fierce conversion. I like that. Prioritizing the side switch for the corner pressure, but it's been RD not willing to sit back and take it. He jumps out and now we're setting to mid-screen. Cancel that on the dry brush. Big oh, damage. That coming was awkward. Through. Yeah. That had to be autocorrect's fault. Well, I don't know. Sometimes the game just says no, and that's why he denied it as well there, Bonchan. Didn't want to cancel into a dry rush to burn himself out here. Sometimes dry rush cancels are not worth it. Oh, man. There we go. A little hesitation to just sit still. Bonchan 
was eager to press that throw button. Real itchy on the trigger finger. But Big Parry gets the conversion into the rising uppercut, and he will block Oof. another one. And he's got an executive decision to make. Will he try and parry this time round, or will he try and firm it? He gets hit with a safe jump. This is huge. What's the next play going to be? He takes a grab. He can't take another one. That's why he texts. He's trying to delay that crouch medium punch there. Crouch fears to stop. It's a back throw. We are fighting tooth and nail for the positional advantage in this corner. He can uppercut if he wants to, but he holds a parry instead. Trying to catch a recovery of that. Really good presence of mind for Bonchek to just hold on to the parry a little bit longer. Yeah, this oh is my, it. This is huge. He didn't. Oh, he's, not gonna, he's not going to OD up. He's going to do it again, right? The, the, the combo is just going to get rid of him. That's oh, why he's God. threatening him. He got Double it. three. Yeah, he got him. He got him. Mm -hmm. All right. Necessary. But. Men are baited the meter there because, again, sometimes an OD reversal is way scarier than letting go of your super art meter. Funny oh, enough fair. to say. It's fair. But he's at a meter disadvantage here, and Mena could actually take advantage of this. Quick question You think it would have chip killed? With that? Uh, it does 10%. I would have put it past him. Gets the check. Perfects his way to the corner. Ah, going for the advantage on knockdown. I like that. Out perfect parry, just inches away from getting a button to connect, even if it wasn't punished counter. Slowly closes the gap, goes back to the mid-screen there, gets a grab this time round. It looks like that beat a button this time. Perfect parry, just enough to get the crouching heavy punch within range. Do a little frame kill there, but this time hard punch, meaty. Holds the parry, he's still holding it because he's trying to recover as much drive gauge as possible. It down. That was a counter hit as well. Could have linked it off into a crouching yeah. medium. He's gonna, yeah, he's gonna rely. Oh dear! Oh my! Excuse me, I didn't mean to do that. One of the strongest buttons from Drive Rush in the game. That suppressor there, and he should be able to close this one out. We're gonna keep it nice and simple into the Super Art 3, and it will make the scoreline tantamount to a piece. The bull! The strongest bull. Stays raging. And he's going straight into it. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Bonchen immediately took off the headset again. Confer with his teammates. Sakonoko, Ryusei, Tokido, all behind him. The crowd getting electric now. Remember, this is a rambunctious crowd. And whoever wins this, they get the advantage. Not the dub, but they get the advantage there in the long run. As it is a first to 70. All right, that's the conversion. Optimizing for the damage instead. Yes, and the knockdown. I like that back throw to switch up the positions. I mean, RD, what's his defensive choices? Are gonna, what are they going to be like? No uppercut No anti-air. I respect it, though. Last one was a bit finicky when he was in a situation like that. So he didn't do it this time round. And they're both low on drive gauge. Burn him out. Oh, OK. No, he wanted to risk something there. See if Mena would respond in kind. The brutal spike gets blocked. Sweep. The no contact sweep. That, that was, was so a... deep. Huh? OK. Gonna have to hold it there, and he waited for the backlash to come out, and Mena it keeps trying to mix up his options. That was a set of a crouching medium punch. Oh, and I like the idea. So that was a good look too. Bonchan throwing out the drive impact because of the condition or the situation. Mena RD not having a lot of life left. He wanted to test him on defense yet again. Oh, I, again. another suppressor. That's two for two. I it feel doesn't like. matter who you for are. For round start, suppressor is just gonna catch you, whether you like it or not. Especially when you're asleep at the wheel. There's a throw. Bonchan, one hit will give his team the advantage, and he doesn't even need the super art. Places a perfect on the screen, and Bonchan takes it over. Mena RD. That was beautiful to see because last time Mena won the exchange, now the shoes on the other foot. We were talking about what's on the line in regards to the amount of points earned as we get into that race to 70. Now. Being on the away side, this is such a big benefactor for FAV Gaming as they get to the switch sides and get all the snipes for the counter picks, which should potentially lead them to maybe a full sweep as we look into the replay. We'll talk about those 70 points later, but again, forcing the switch off from Blanca. I got to think to myself as we talk about the big flash knuckle combos. You think Menard is just going to go into Luke if you have to play his, if he, if he has to play against that matchup again? Do you think he's going to go straight in, off into the Luke? Nine times out of ten, just the safest bet and who's got the strongest chance of success rate at beating Bonchan. That's kind of like the million dollar question here. They, they could stick with it uh, because, again, they need to put Mena in a position where when he takes the risks, he's not super deterred by it or super, like, you know, like uh, discouraged by it, I should right. say. Because, again, each and every point they go further away, it's harder. These decisions have a lot more weight to them. And it's not just an individual effect, it's a, it's a team effect, right? right. 
and he'll have a little bit of time to do some self-analysis. Again, he's had time to do that back and forth, but Bonchan, what a response to turn this around from their first exchange yeah. in the seeding matches here. Yeah, you start to see like the volatility kind of amp up a little bit, but Bonchan kind of kept it cool towards the end of that match. I think that was one of the strongest suits. We talked about how much slower he played even in the tiebreaker scenario. I think that was a big indication as to what he utilized against Mena RD in this very, very final moment of the matchup, right? He had a lot more successful perfect parries than Mena, I feel, as well. And he had the optimization with the crouch fears, the brutal spike into the conversion with the side swap. Sure, yeah. It's like, I, I just think sometimes you can play right, you can lose in this game. Sometimes your defensive choices are just the correct ones for today because, again, there's a huge element of guessing and you can actually play neutral and your offensive sequences in a very similar fashion uh, to what you did in your previous encounter with any opponent you want to run back. And this is some good stuff here. I, I do understand and I like the risk implications that Mena is taking because it sets precedence later if right. they are going to have a, a yeah. future encounter. Right, that makes uh, sense. But again, Bonchan is an Evo champion, like you said, got up against a Cat Call Cup champion. So these guys will know when and where to bait certain things. That chip kills, right? That should do. It does 10% and that looked like ten, less than 10%. Mm -hmm. So it, it would have been fine regardless of how it works. And you see it close it out there because this has been huge and pivotal regardless. I, I, I am curious to see or find out maybe a little bit later what the guys have been discussing uh, with Mena in, in interim stages in these games because that's huge, right? Even he needs advice from the right people uh, right. in his team. Right. Right? What better advice to get from Calvo Christie and Xiao Hai in the situation here? But yeah, yeah then there you go. The cut ring out. Von Chan, once he saw it, he already knew it was sealed. Sometimes I like that. I always, I always love <laughs> the victory poses from when you say. Feel like he's, he's, emoting. Like he's, he's, like he's emoting the whole time. Is what it is. He's in the battle know. hub. He's emoting. I mean, sometimes he looks like he's trying to land the plane. Yeah, uh, arms up here. You know, perhaps, perhaps. Maybe. Maybe a pilot in the sky. Anyways, so again, we talked about the advantages here of being the uh, leading point earner in the away side because now they're going to take a break and switch over to the sides where FAV gaming is going to have the home field advantage. Bandits are going to be stuck on the away side where they have to turn in their player order. They have to turn in their character order as well. So it's going to be very, very interesting seeing how it could play out. Because again, there is potential here for FAV to take it all the way with a clean sweep of 40, depending on how they perform. Well, if there's anyone who can turn this around, and they've got the crowd, there's huge supporters. It is Team Bandits here. They're down, but they're not out. Because like we said, it's half time. You got us in the first half. But we don't know how things are going to turn around in this second half here because, again, it's looking beautiful. But one thing, one person I've got to thank as well is the company Steel Series for being the official headset sponsor here for Capcom Cup as well as SFL World Championships here. The Arctis Nova Pro, the official headset series here as well. It has helped players win prize money using the Steel Series gear, and it's going to help someone become a millionaire tomorrow and it's helping these guys actually obtain victory today as well so again shout out to steel series for giving us or providing us with the arctis nova pro here at capcom cup and this next group with some of the finest details in their figures a huge shout out to our partners pcs collectibles who made the take-home trophy for this year's winner by the way and if you're in the venue be sure to check them out go over the booth in the lobby or you can check them out in depth at collect pcs Com. And again, these are highly detailed figures of a multitude of different characters and also from the different series. We got a little bit of alpha throwback in there as well. And some really original pieces of artwork. As you can see, the uh, squatting Chun-Li with the heavy weights. That's actually brand new. It is. I know you eyeing that up. I saw you eyeing that up earlier. That's heavy. Look at that. That's a, that's a full plate. That is 45 pounds. I know least why one. you she were eyeing like it up. Yeah, she's, I know why she's you both. It. All right. Reasons. Anyway. Big thank you to our other sponsor, our third and final sponsor here, Teo. Huge thanks to Teo Holding for being the prize in support of 150,000 USD for the Street Fighter League World Championship. Teo Holding is the world's number one market share in Soldier Resist. The green part of printed circuit boards they create are the backbone through which we get to explore our passion for Street Fighter. And through the support, they uplift everyone taking on challenges to realize a happy world in and out of the game. We are happy to have them as part of this event. Things are only ramping up from here, but it's the half time. Get us a little break. Get your beverages, get your snacks, and we'll come back with the teams switching sides. See you shortly. To me, Street 
fighter means history. It's what got me into fighting games. It's what got most of my teams as well. And it's good to see just multiple iterations through time as the game continues to get better and better, new characters, better graphics. We do this because not only we love it, but the rest of the PCS family that buys from us. PCS really started getting into the statue form of Street Fighter back in 2007. We've continued to grow and expand our Street Fighter offering from everything from quarter scale to third scale size. Kind of my baby or my favorite is this new uh, fitness line that we have coming out. So we continue to expand and change it up and not just do something that everybody else is doing, but try to make it unique to PCS. It's one thing to be licensed and create statues for the fan, but to us creating the trophy that the winner will take home, I view that as a big honor. So we look forward to seeing it raised high. See nothing, I just barely scratch the surface. Roll me in the rain, let me do my thing. Got the heavy deal, fighting through the pain when I'm in the zone. I ain't never say much, but you see me up top. You see my numbers healthy, the pressure don't stop. Until I'm in the top, see the bottom seeds watch. They almost see me flop, but I'm stepping on them, watch, let them watch. Born ready to fight, this is my moment. Coming for it all, just show me my opponent. Wanna be great, I'm a legend in the making. And this is mine for the taking. <laughs> Cause I got what it takes to be on top I'm number one cause I don't stop Hard gas, no brakes, high stakes I don't act tough to the test of let them Not stop, you ready or not When it's all said and done, I'ma be on the top Three, two, one I'm ahead of the game, they'll remember my name Not stop, you ready or not When it's all said and done, I'ma be on the top Three, two, one Let's go I belong in the number one spot with the only two-time Capcom Cup champion, Mina RD, and this is fine. All right, I'm feeling, I'm feeling great for now. The reason I say for now is because Mina has decided that he wants to go hot. Let's get a little, little dab of something. Let's so go, you ready let's for go. this? I'm ready. So we're gonna dab up these pagoda egg rolls. And just so everyone knows, we did spike this hot sauce with a special one, the last dab. It's serious. All right, what do we do? Let's go. Ah! <laughs> Mina RD, two-time Capcom Cup champion. Mm -hmm. I actually want to start things in a little unconventional place. Street Fighter League this year, you was talking a whole lot of trash, you backed it up. Four years to you guys finally winning the Street Fighter League. Tell me what that meant to you. Take me through that season for you. That season was crazy because 
these themes. Like, I really tried to like put up a team of people I trusted because the game is new. And <laughs> Man. it worked out. Nah. It, yeah. wor it worked out. Touch and your eyes now. It worked out, man, and it was beautiful to see, you know? <laughs> it was beautiful to see, and, and it was it was perfect, you know? Okay, and then now, of course, so at this point, you've won two Capcom Cups, right? How has this changed your life? A young kid from the Dominican Republic, from the, and you from the from the struggle. You ain't grew up with a silver spoon. What has Street Fighter done for you? It, it's, it's beyond what Street Fighter has done for me. It's not what, what it has done for my country, for my community, you know? <clears throat> a lot of money brought me out of, of, you know, the struggle. I was poor. But now it's giving opportunities to, to everyone that interested in this in, in the country. And that means a lot, you know, having a positive impact in, in where you were raised, in the environment that you were raised at, and making it better. It gave meaning to my life. It, it's beyond mm. money. It's beyond everything. So, yeah, man. Okay. And your lips hot. It's all good. It's, it's light. Yeah, light work for the champ. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Light work I, might, for the I might take another one. Big dog. You still want to take another one? You want to do it? Man, who are you Come on, bro. To, bro. Come on, bro. Yo, this actually looks good, though, you know? It is. Okay. You ready? One, two, three. And the art, people really are, they're really enjoying it. You know, it's not only, oh, they have a Dominican guy there, let me watch it. But there's a lot of people that actually are starting to like fighting games and they're watching videos and they're watching everybody, not only me. You cry? Did you, did, it looked like you just won Capcom. Well, what you mean? <laughs> hey, bro, like, like, yo, what you mean, bro? It's like you were you, you was crying too, what you mean, bro? So you gonna call me out? Yeah, I love crying. I know you seen that. <laughs> Men RD, you are a bad man. Ah! We don't need no water. All right, man. You the two my top bad. Capcom Cup I'm the bull, my bad, my bad. I'm okay, just, you the bull. Yeah, yes, sir. That's it, bro. You are a beast for uh, you know having having me take this last dab with you, and we did it two times too. Nothing but respect, brother. Representing bandits and the Dominican Republic. This has been the champ, Mina R D, and this is fire. Truly is fire. One of these days, we gotta get up on the table with Rob TV and test our strength when it comes to the spiciness of uh, Dakota Egg World. But we'll see how that plays out. Speaking of spicy, we're wrapping up to our second match between the two Titans. As we've looked at it so far, FAV Gaming is in the lead with 30 points to their name against the 10 coming in from the Bandits camp. Vicious here back at it again with Jammers to bring you all the action in real time. So again, we have a little bit of a switch up coming up. Bandits now in the hot seat, going on the away side, getting their order in first, as well as their character selection. Well. Let's take a look at that right now and see what the away lineup will be. Zhao Hai going first, and we're going to see Ooh. an introduction from the Ken loyalist himself in Chris Tatarian there. And it will be Mena Ardi at the back. So it looks like Kappa has been benched momentarily. We could see him later. Who knows? Despite seeing the Ken silhouette from the side of Zhao Hai coming up first, there still is an ambiguous choice to be made. Like, I feel like. Uh, even in the future, right? He is playing out with Ken. He is locked in, I should say. He's automatically locked in because it is the away side. That is the disadvantage. But having two Kens up in a team, that's still not a bad look. It's not. But the man with the famous sobriquet, the murder face, steps up to the plate where he'll go up against Zhao Hai. These guys date back to SF4 days. Heck, probably even earlier than that. Sense of respective fighting games. But they are here at the SFL World Championships now. I'll give you the 4 one, one. Tokido was playing Angry Bird yesterday. But Angry Ooh. Bird was also playing Zhao Hai yesterday. No, he's in, double dipping. In the Ken mirror. That's Giving not right. some pointers. That's not right. In the matchup. I'm just <laughs> Giving pointers in the matchup from different perspectives like for both that. players. I love that. I was watching. I was doing. That was last my, night in the hotel. This was last night in the hotel. I did my due diligence. I was being a backup dancer. I oh, pretending God. I could do combos. I did see these guys playing. So you were pretending to press buttons and your, your joystick wasn't even... Well, I didn't even bring my pad downstairs, okay. to be honest. So I had to take St. Cola's hitbox. Shout out to St. Cola. He gave me his hitbox. I was watching some replays and doing Always some work. Always saving the day. Shout out to St. But one thing I noticed, at least when he was facing Tokido in okay. the mirror, was Tokido whiffs a lot of crutch meeting kicks in this mirror match. From what I've seen over time, it's gotten less and less as time went on. But he said, you might want to use Crouching Media Punch a little bit more, only because it's got, it's a little bit better and it's harder to whip punch. 
bit more compact. Yeah, faster speed as well in comparison, what, six to eight frames? Yeah, obviously, like, crouching medium punch is not as, like, you know, potent as other crouching medium punches in the game. We speak about that. Jury, Blanka, Luke, yeah. JP, so on Even and so JP's, forth. Even JP's, yeah. Yeah. Makes but a lot of sense. This will be uh, interesting to see. Now, with Zhao Hai, I just watched him just play. To me, because, again, Angry Bird's one of the world's best players. It looked like he was getting completely outclassed, but Angry Bird... He's never afraid to be humble and give that advice. You know what I'm right, truly. But I saw more of what was happening in the Tokido mirror match session than opposed to the Zhao Hai one. But Zhao Hai has got some like, pretty good understanding of what needs to be done. So this will be a very interesting mirror match exchange right. uh, from really, these guys here. It really comes down to the pattern recognition and the spatial awareness that Tokido is trying to play at most of the time. Right, You talk about things on paper, now it comes down to the player performance of Tokido. What type of approaches are going to be throwing at Xiao Hai? Now looking at the stats alone though, Xiao Hai, he's coming in with a lot of confidence, right? He came up on the big rebuttal against Ryusei getting a 2-0 swing around in comparison to what had happened during the first phase of it all. Now I'm looking to see what he's going to see, uh, what he's going to be doing, whether he starts out aggressive on his own. Well, I think one of the interesting things for me, because again, we are actually falling in the lines or the realms of a mirror match here. Uh, for me, in this mirror match, the defensive choice is when one can traps the other can in the corner. How would the defending can try to get out? And then sometimes, what are you going to opt for in terms of defensive choices with two bots? Are you going to drive reversal? Or are you going to do an OZ? Sure, you can because I think it's the latter. But go on. Well, look, I mean, only sure you can. They're just drive reversals that actually hit, but they have much bigger implications depending. Because again, a punish count is all the same. When you have the right yes. stuff, obviously the frame day and the, the intricacies do matter, but the punish is all the same, right? And if you're going to go out with a medium or whatnot, it's insane. And what I really want to see, because remember what Halibo right. did against oh, one of the yes. reversals, dude, that was insane. I'm pretty sure these guys know the combo, but we, we might not get that. That DMC kind of style combo I would love here. that. I mean, like, uh, you know, in, in both of these costumes, it would still look sick no matter what. But here we go. It's the second set between FAV Gaming and Bandits. Game one, Xiao Hai versus Tokido. Tokido already getting the worst half of the exchange Boy, thus far up go. until this point. There you go. Backdashes on the first interaction there. This is why I was saying it's going to be integral to kind of note that out and see what these guys do when trapped in the corner there. And another Side crouch of kick, but he crept into that range to make sure he got the cancel. I love it. He practices after safe situations to avoid heavies in general. He's done that earlier today. Xiao Hai as well, so against uh, Ryusei. Oh, he's Xiao Hai is really testing that range against Tokido as well. And to close the gap, the dry rush to initiate. Parry against the Jinrai. Okay, he got the space with the crouch meeting. He's got no whip punish there. Still waiting in that space. Oh, yeah, now he's crouching. Yeah, see, he's stuck, he's 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 stuck it, here. It. And now you see the change up with the crouching medium punch. That was a counter hit. Good call out. This is what Angry Bird was advising him yesterday. He walked into that space. Even if you do the low forward drive rush cancel, I'm confident in my defensive choices. But it could be a little bit more difficult for you to deal with the crouching medium punch. Gets the grab. Try to get a throw bait, but walk back in. Oh, uh, sure you can be sure you. Being able to ring out, testing with the roundhouse as well. Xiao Hai still within range. He's still hovering around the low medium kick. That could have been severely whiff punished. Xiao Hai wasn't ready for it, but he was ready for the rest of that Jinrai. Did get the perfect parry. Now the corner carry dash up twice over. Oh. Might have caught Tokido trying to jump out of the corner. Seems like it. Very there. needy. And another low forward. He's so obstinate in that department. He wants to make sure the crouching medium kick every time. Oh, it said counter hit, so he looks like he's challenged. Lead. Yeah, the fierce and like the heavy gen ride, that is a frame trap indeed. Counter hit. Benefiting Tokido at that moment, but Xiao Hai tying it up. One round apiece. Checking with the lights as well. Tokido a little reluctant to throw out the crouching medium kick, as we talked about earlier. With the jab right in his face there. That was such a delayed parry there. That could have been thrown. Drive rushes into a fireball there, unfortunately. Tokido probably looking for a perfect parry opportunity before he really closes the gap. Yeah, there's a fireball. Very patient within the mid-range game. Got him. Oh, he didn't believe. I think he took a deep breath when he did that as well. So he's going to have to make amends with this Super Art 3 to get some extra drive gauge to work with from this subsequent sequence. Let's see what he does from here. And he's going to catch him. Yep. That is a punish counter. Immediate rebuttal. Fight fire with fire. And he's actually pendulum swing the drive gauge in his favor now. After getting hit by O Devil 3. Damn, these guys exhaust all the options. And plus frames in hot pursuit close. So, man, what a time to bust out with the throw. Tech Tokido was looking very much so close to burnout. 
Good awareness of the situation. Xiao Hai still inching closer. The perfect parry is there. And look at that. And he gets the crouching combo on the way over. Enhanced Tatsu. Dash up twice. This guy is in deep trouble. Xiao Hai has no resources to his name. Hence why you see the drive impact and the stun. More than enough damage, I think. He has, he has some green bar to him. Okay, he's just taking the knockdown of the damage nah, for now. He would have needed level two to close out. He was nowhere near building that, so. I was thinking maybe level one. Perhaps. Nah, level one, it would have too much scaling there, but he gets the OD. Sure, you can yeah. Yeah. close out that game one there. Well, Shao Hai, I feel like, you know, off of his cancels, he has been pretty keen on like, at least keeping it safe, keeping it a true block string off of a low medium into crouch jab or even like stand jab to prevent that OD uppercut from ringing out. But the, the problem is, he keeps doing the OD cancel regardless whether it hits or blocks. So even when it's blocked, you're giving the chance to Takedo to even input the OD. So you can, you are correct. He has been making true block strings and playing the strike for a game afterwards. But you're still giving Tokido that chance to exchange his two bars for your three. If you get this correctly. And he got his first low medium kick of the day, well, at least for the, for the set, I should say. He jumped, good block there. In good defense. Ooh. Nice punish counter at that. Poorly spaced that heavy kick there from Zhao Hai. Drive rushes out, delayed throw tick there from Tokido. Still working in that space. And, uh, he flailed everything up to that sweep. That was such a build up. Carry. His perfect parries have been phenomenal today. Zhao Hai, I've got to say, but Tokido is no slouch either. Knocking on the door a bit, does get the tick throw, dash up again. Three lights into the drive rush cancel there. This guy really wants to pile on the pressure with those drive rush cancels. Yeah, now he's changing it up there with the low fall into fireball this time around. Oh, no. That was just outside. Dude, you have to be like 100% like pinpoint accurate for that to work. Oh, face of pinpoint is better. But luckily enough, Shao Hai wasn't ready for it. Oh, what a reaction to the fireball! And they, do you know what it is? I like that they, how they deal and circumvent fireballs on the ground. It costs a little bit more than a jump, but it's much safer to do, especially when you do things on the action. And that should be the round there. He might not even lead level two. He will do Dragon Lash Flame to take the round. And that will put Edo in prime position to take an extra 10 points for his team. Looking out with the drive rush already. Did get the mark against Shao Hai. I like that. Contesting against the safe jump setup. Shao Hai with the back air of the tape turn. Oh, the Dragon Lash super. The immediate bust out from Tokido. Set up the fireball trap there, and he jumped into an anti air there. Try to catch Tokido pressing some buttons with that Dragon Lash. Oh, okay. I don't know what you tried to bait there, but Tokido had other ideas. That's not going to be high. the cinematic version. He's going to get the sure you can, though. Decent damage regardless. Still a good chunk. That's right. Still waiting. Oh, that's he committed. And he's going to build a level two as well, but he's not going to spend it. Not going to be the round here. Zhao Hai just needs one drive rush cancel. And put Tokido a guess for game. Could do it off of Roundhouse. You could see it. Yeah, Tokido flailing that light kick to kind of tantalize Zhao Hai into pressing a heavier normal. He's like, go ahead, press that heavy button. But he could drive rush in with a light or even a medium. Okay, there you go. Gotta catch him. Oh. Using it so sparingly. Gave Xiao Hai a little false sense of security as well. Majority of the times you talk about that, the big adaptation of using crushing medium punch, the time where he needed to use that low medium kick instead, caught Xiao Hai trying to walk back. Indeed, he did. Uh, no, I enjoyed that. Sometimes you got to look at the bright side of a mirror match. I know it's Ken on Ken violence, but again, I like the players at hand playing the mirror match and how they utilize the drive gauge here. Tokido keeping up a decent record. If I am not mistaken, Tokido has actually won all of his games today, which is correct. That is right. We, we did get that fact checked. If anything in the set, he's only lost one game against Kaba in general. So yeah, he's looking at what, six and one? Phenomenal performance in the World Championships thus far here. But yes, Zhao Hai had consistent drive rush cancels hit on block, was always forcing a situation to happen. Yeah. I don't think I saw any arbitrary jumps at all from anybody. They kept it grounded and they used all of the resources, parry, shoryukens, some way, shape, or form to deal with that. And like we said, the intel I got was watching these guys play. Like we said, the utilization of Crouch Immediate Punch before he resorted back to the comfortable fact of using Crouch Immediate Kick and then mixing in raw drive rush with a jab or Crouch Immediate Kick. Really yeah. adjusted his neutral tools and approaches extremely well there, Tokido. Right, because you're getting that kind of like early idea against Shao Hai to be conditioned to walk backwards away from the counter poke because he doesn't want to be within that range, right? Then you get yourself susceptible to the low forwards, which in the end is what clipped them. So 
Precisely, and again, fight fire with fire. And I like that the top level players are doing this. We saw Zhao Hai do it, and then we saw Tokiri responding kind. They are being hyper aware of what buttons people are drive rush canceling into. They know the true boxing, and they know where the gap is. Again, that's why it's an old option select. But even if they try to do it with a heavier button, I think Ken can do it as well, stand hard punch into drive rush cancel to block a reversal. <laughs> you don't really see that, not as much as you see it with Luke. Didn't get the cinematic there off of that anti you Yukon into the level three. That could have been pivotal in terms of the cinematic scenario. And I like the idea, I mean, like I totally understand the idea behind Shao Hai committing to that second part of the target combo because he was within range to get punished regardless. That is true there, and again, comfortably closes it out despite being low on drive gauge. <laughs> it must be tense when you close things out with low on drive gauge, but again, FAV Gaming doing the work. They were doing so well in SFL Japan. That's the reason why they're here. And they're sitting in a pretty damn good position against their international rivals in Team Bandits. They still have energy left in the tank, but we're setting up <gasps> World Championship debut The man, here, I believe. the legend himself. Oh, okay. to that, Sakonoko coming up with the Chun Li against Chris Tatarian. This is an extremely good look. In my opinion, Chun Li does very, very well in combating against most of the Shotos in this game. So that means, well, either Bonchan or Ryusei are going to sit out in this one. So it could be Ryusei playing the anchor match. It's going to be the first appearance here for Sakonoko. It is good to see. Now, <laughs> obviously, I know a lot of commentators and other people. We, he's highly revered for his execution. I've watched this play, they play this game a fair bit. He has dropped a few things with Chun Li, but it's still pretty much phenomenal to watch him play. I'll give you some more dirt. Dude, I watched he, him. He's been like a fly on the wall up until this point, by the way. And when I first saw him very at the good hotel, fly. he was not even trying to play any games. He had his mask on. He was incognito mode and watching awesome. everybody press buttons. Let me tell you this. He was facing Takamura yesterday, the first of five. Takamura said, Sakonoko is good, but where he, what he prioritizes and where he allocates his brain power is weird. I said, so what does he fall for then? He said, DI in the corner. <laughs> That's what he said. He got it with you know every what's single DI in the corner. That was actually going to be my next point. One of his uh, biggest faults is in the corner on defense. He doesn't make the right educated guesses against the mechanics of the game. Because he's focusing on something else, which sometimes the players that play against him can't really quite figure that out. But he has actually got... Was optimal conversions, and he does do light Hazanshu over fireballs, light fireball at the last point because I think she projectile invincible from like frame five on the lower half of her body or something like that. I can't remember, I read this a little while ago. So let's see what happens here. It's the throw tech. Oh, what a whiff punish there from Chris, and he's gonna go for the crouching conversion there as well. Identifying whether they're standing for a standing Pacific combo or a crouching Oof. one is huge. Now, most of the time, I do like the way that Chun Li can present herself in the neutral against. Ken or a, a plethora of characters, her walk speed is phenomenal. Her range on her normals and her special normals just is good. But right now, Chris Tatarian has been so cautious of either approach, either the walk speed and the positioning that she's in, and also the placement of that low medium kick. Oh, she's got some of the best normals in their respective category in the game. Lovely whip punish from Chris. He is so on point with his whip punish, just in general as a Street Fighter player. It's the triple flash kicks. Holding it down here, jumps away, takes the crouching fist. Oh, rushes in. Christy got a lot of dry gauge to work with here and took a risk there with the jump. And I've seen Sakanoko do that before. He will walk under certain jumps and get a full punish counter conversion from the stand. Medium punch. Puts him in a beneficial situation here. Almost got the punish counter with the gauge. Oh. This is going to be great for the big pendulum swing that you mentioned. Well, get the drive gauge back. The damage is pretty significant, but there is critical or on deck now for Sako. It still puts he can bake something. Yeah, it puts him in a dangerous spot where one touch can kill. But Chris Tatarian taking the initiative instead to bring it to Sakonoko's doorstep. So, three interactions in that set alone, Sakonoko made the wrong decision. He extension kicks was Throw blocked. Was yeah. He lost in that interaction as well. And there was a third situation that has completely escaped me now, which I saw it moments ago, which didn't work out either. They were being through oh, the throw bait on the into the level three conversion. Right. Three huge defensive choices that went wrong. So he could probably do things in trepidation now because a lot of the Japanese players don't like to make those huge mistakes. And there's that light Hazanshu over the fireball again. You can do that reaction. Oh man, double jump, Chris Tan. You were talking about some of the arbitrary jumps that could be uh, pretty pivotal in, in some of the games. Now you're establishing that mindset. It's like, you know what? I'm willing to kind of take it to the skies at first and see if you're ready for it. But now Sakonoko in Dire Straits yet again. Dropping it out here, and it will be a punish. Seven so frame sweet. super art one. 
stand like just to check what's going to happen. Sakonobi needs to be very careful with his button choices. Chris has been immaculate with his spacing. No drive rush counts from the crash medium. Oh, that looked like a Hazan shoot. It did. It 100% was. Okay. So wait, throw tech works out and he's going to drive rush cancel and this should be able to take the round. No super art needed. I like to you. He needs it. He needs it, yeah. A little, a little bit of a overstep from Chris Tatarian. He was exuding that confidence. He was willing to walk up, potentially get a throw, but Sakonoko just a little bit too quick to, too quick on the trigger, excuse me. He comes down the heavy. Sakonoko uses heavies much more than other Chun Li's I'm used to watching play this character here. And he can't throw a bad fireball, because I've seen that. That's the tail of the tape with Chun Li's when I watch him. Now, what was that? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> really couldn't tell you. There gets the crouching beating kick, drive rush cancel into the spinning bird kick there. In the throw to maintain the pressure. Trying to bait something from Chris. Oh, that was so, so dangerous to even try to think about a button. Man. Does he need level two? No, he's gonna safe jump instead. Stays on the ground, I thought he's gonna hop off. That's the second time he's done it, by the way. Going over in and side swap. It's not all or nothing yet. Excellent timing. Man, somebody was really surprised about that in the crowd. Well, he's got level two. So Chris can't throw a fireball. Not a bad one anyway. Good check. It wasn't a punish kind of it. He needed that. What was that? That was a counter hit in place. Beat him to the punch there. One apiece. He's literally turned to the teammates just for a quick advice. Quick second perspective, because perspective is everything. Just to see if they noticed anything that he was doing the first game. Phenomenal. Again, but sometimes your defensive choice you make, you just guess wrong. The next time, you just guess right. Same interactions, <laughs> same mindset going in towards that. But it's interesting. Still no drive impact from what I used to and what I was talking about with Takamura last night. But I wonder if he's clocked on for that as well. Sakanoka. It doesn't matter, by the way. I don't think it's huge if he loses this. Because it's the, because of the position his team's in. Get his hands warmed up, and it doesn't matter points. because they're still at an advantage yeah. points-wise. So. There, there are a couple of points to give away. Totally understandable. I wouldn't want to relinquish points as much as the next pro player would, but I'm telling you, that actually should be fine. But he gets the conversion into the light spinning bird kick. Yeah, you're getting the data on the first time on Chris Tatarian as well, so that's pretty pivotal in terms of the long run strategy. Likewise for these guys against Sakonoko as well. If he comes back to the hot seat to play. Lovely parry. Crouch fierce into the stomps. What pressure are we going for? Oh, the Good choice, and so now he's gonna have to make an executive decision, which is blocking it out. From Chris up until that point. Oh. Yeah, that exchange, not too bad for Chris. You got to trade yeah. some of the bar and also put yourself out of the corner a little bit. It's way worse for Sakanoga than Chris. Two bars is two bars like lost. Okay. That's the challenge there. What was that? Still in serenity stance. Anyway. Takes him there, and then goes for some sort of safe jump. Oh, I thought, I for sure thought he was going to be able to link that. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was going for, but it did say cannon, and it worked out. But maybe it didn't have enough frame advantage for a light to connect afterwards, or maybe he mistimed it. Who knows? No drive rush cancel again from the low forward. He is flailing all those buttons, and Chris is really trying to find the opportune moment to get the right, the perfect mid punish. And I oh. think even he thought he was out of range of that. That's one of the longest crouching media kicks of the game into the Super Art 2. Take it away, Sucker. It's a safe jump. Punish counter off the perfect parry fireball. Chris Tatarian, again, we talked about the importance of not throwing out a bad fireball, right? Sucker Knuckle very much so keen on getting the perfect parries. And speaking of, even checking the dragon lashes. Gets the crouching hard punch conversion after. I thought he could have got a roundhouse there, but he wanted the safe jump set up instead. Oh, D. That's not a true block straight off of Chris Tatarian. Doesn't want to burn himself out. He doesn't want to get burnt out, but the level two is there, and I think he's got him in the range. The last hit should probably do it quite. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, absolutely fine, because he still gets to ensure a true block string into the super, but it was really up to Chris Terry to make that executive decision whether or not he wanted to reign with that super on wake up. It was a difficult choice to make. You're in a deleterious position. It's very difficult to assess that, especially on the fly as well, because again, you're almost in burnout. In that situation, I think even after the jab, like if, if Sakura goes to jab out, I still, I still think he recovers in time. So I think that was checkmate. Yeah, it was, well, he's in burnout. So it's like, regardless, you're, <laughs> sometimes your den uh, demise is inevitable there. But again, came out the gates running. Good start there from Christy. He actually had really good spacing there until Sakura decided to readjust it. Lovely 
identification there that he was crouching, by the way, because again, like I said, there are combos that only work for crouching opponents, and if you wish sure. to crouch an attack, you will keep them in that state. You can force them standing. There will be standing conversions as well. So Chris was super on point that first game. Then Sakanoko changed up his defensive choices, didn't take as many risks on wake up, was able to walk in that range and make sure he like basically badges Chris T with that crouching yeah. melee kick as well as other buttons as well. I won't say Chris Terrian's defense against the safe jump setups or even like the uh, the stomps, the very, very late stomp. They were good. They were very, very well done. Despite taking two throws, I think what happens afterwards, I think his his, his awareness of it, like, of, of mitigating the damage or the risk, I should say, uh, of taking those throws was pretty top notch. I think that was a fair assessment to make for Chris T. Yeah, there you go. And then after like turning it around, maybe that was the pivotal moment there. That throw tech into the crouching medium kick drive rush cancel. Maybe that was the turnaround that Sakonoku needed to get that bravado, get that confidence to come back and keep his team in this. Oh my. Talk to me. I just looked at the point spread. You know what we talked about before we went into the break, right? We did. So look, FAV Gaming could potentially win it all out here if their anchor match goes in favor of them. I don't know who's going to be playing for FAV yet, but man, we're pretty close to getting that full sweep for 70 points. That is a very good Right there. Ah, uh, maybe maybe man. it wasn't plus enough. And even Sakonoko, he looked at it. Actually, he he, he looked up the cam. He's just like, hmm, hmm. he shrugged. <laughs> he's like, I guess I guess he missed. Do you know what? Sometimes the best answer in Street Fighter Six because there's so many unexplained interactions we're still learning, especially in the first year, the inaugural year of the game. You just shrug your, sh uh, shrug your shoulders and just move on. Le legit, that's all you got to do. Oh, that was fine. Yeah, he, st he got the safe jump set up off of the roundhouse. My mistake. Okay. Yeah, so Sakonoko did pretty much just secure that off of the safe jump roundhouse. Not a lot Ken could do about that. Not a lot that Chris Terrian could really do about that, putting himself in that situation. Unfortunate there. He almost got it close, but no cigar. But Sakonoko, he gets his first match, the first dub. An important dub regardless, because again, 10 points closer to the prize. Bandits is 10 points further away. But they can still turn this around oh. here. And he's running it back. Let's go. He will run it back. But are they? Yes, they're dedicating it to the mirror. So we are seeing the loot mirror once again. But then when you see the mirror match, because this is just like a, a, a battle lounge of long sets, basically, because it's like, OK, what did we change up this time? Because in the first set, it was overwhelming, the overwhelming presence and the right choices there for men at RD. Bonchan swinged it in his favor, got the correct reads on defense, really locked it down, was stubborn on his own defensive choices, right. and was able to make sure Mena panics in a lot more situations. But now what happens this time, right? Is he going to start with Luke, then swap over to Blanca? Is he going to introduce another character? Because he was practicing a bit of JP. And JP, yeah. As well. I mean, if anything, it would probably be JP as his tertiary choice. And this match specifically, I... I wouldn't want to see Melissa versus Luke. Well, I mean, Bonchan's just a stone monolith at this point. He said, I ain't moving. Uh, I'm always at the no, end of the point. You're going to have to deal with me each right, and every yeah. time. The, the wall's going to be the same no matter what with Bonchan. He's been sticking with Luke since the very beginning, even since the demo of Street Fighter 6. You're right, you're right. Actually, no, even further than that. Street Fighter 5. What am I talking about? Well, let's see if Bonchan can close it out. For FAV Gaming, or can Bandits, Mena RD, keep his team in the dogfight? Let's get to it. Big punish counter as well, opting for the side switch. Yes, sir. If that's mid-screen, gonna be a little bit more to get Bonchan into this corner back-to-back -back throws thus far, but this is gonna be a tough spot. Yeah, Menard is creating a lot of space for himself. That's gonna be so dangerous for that sand to bring up that close. OD Knuckle into another one. Knuckle sandwich into the throat. Spine buster yet again. Boom. One more shot of it. And of course, uh, how many spines does he have? Well, none now. Bonchan doesn't look particularly impressed by what happened there, but it is fine in terms of the mathematics for his team outcome here, because they are 50 points to 10. But he closed the gap, and immediately, Mena are setting presence with that OD upper gun. So there are going to be a lot of uh, chief executive officer decisions here <laughs> for Mena RD. And there's another interruption there with the OD upper gun. Perfect parry as the Down, that's too far. Crouching heavy punch. And he whiffed the crouching hard kick afterwards. Damn. It was a bait. Maybe. <laughs> we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. All right, look at that. Burning him out. He burned himself out in the process because he's in wow. the ideal scenario. Wow. And he gets the chip kill that with the flash it. knuckle. You yep. saw that. He was throwing out that stand fist with malicious mm -hmm. intent. He was fixated on that dry gate damage. And he rounds off with the suppressor. Shades of Northern Prodigy. I'm telling you right now. Bang, Boom. Bang. Bang. Eraser doing his job. 45%. Yep. 
Don't throw. Oh, man, RD. Coming back to life with that crouching medium punch. And opting for the damage, I like that. No side switch this time. He wants to bring him back mid screen, but the objective again, recover that drive gauge. Good position here for Mena RD. No super art though, but he can still try and steal a turn. And Bonchan identified that as well. Delay crouch medium punch. He's been doing that a fair bit. Mixed that in between with the OD uppercut. And he Ooh. does a DI. And I like that. That's an option to select either way. Yeah. If you drop the timing, you can just match on the DI and get the punish. This is what the players are starting to get used to now all over the world. Let's see if we can close it out. One button into a drive rush cancel should do it. Sandblaster. Someone's got a drive rush cancel. And there it is. Try to chip him out. Yep. Ooh, the attempt to be perfect. Perry clipped him mid-air, pre-flight. Sit him back down. Getting a game on the board immediately. Back to the rematch. I do not blame Bonchan. A valiant effort trying to get the perfect parry on the OD Sandblaster. No dice, which results in an RD getting the game there. It's the uppercut. Yeah, not dealing with that. Oof. Just a little bit shy. Bonchan with the presence of mind to walk back in preparation for the throw. Speaking of, gets him in this vortex yet again. Oof. The uppercut, trying to perfect parry the heavy flash knuckle. People are still getting better at doing that, and that should be the round. Vulcan Blast required. Bang. Not messing around. And he's trying to equalize here, is Bonchan. I feel like that should be Luke's nickname, the Equalizer. Any, la any, oh, any touchy lands is just gonna be draining your life, game. You know? Listen, if I could have a cool moniker like that, I'd take it. Just make it now. Jam is the Equalizer. Denzel Washington, yeah. Boy, there we go. Big damage coming through. Level two? No need. Nah, safe jump, perfect parry. That was a punish? Wait. Wait yeah. a minute. Okay, so that means Mena mistimed it which made it or resulted in it being a punish count that he had to, he had to let it fly. I like that. Very respectable, considering the life as well. Two gauges in his pocket as well. He needs as big of a buffer as possible, and that is why Bonchan has gone into the slam dunk. Three balls for three. Interesting in that encounter. No throw from that situation either. Uh, a little bit of the shuffle, allowing Bonchan to move on forward. Yeah, good awareness to just go for the uppercut ender. Very, very close to the corner. Can't get the rest of the knuckles. Ooh, speaking of knuckles. Oh, Dude, damn! I, I, I thought he was looking for that to whiff to get the thing afterwards. But he's burnt out. Overhead, level three, inbound. And Bonchan looks to the ceiling. I promise you, the stage guys are not going to help you. But you do have a level three yourself. I think he's going to just have to defend. He's just going to have to defend, and he's going to have to match out a super suit uh, soon. Oh. oh, he's actually still within range to get a single hit. Confirmed into a knuckle, perhaps any sort of super special. No, no way! That's too far. That's too far. Yeah, it's too far. Yeah. That was way too far. And you have to remember, the startup of that super is like 10, 11 frames. Mm. But the further away you are, the longer his startup is. Because he has to wind up and then get the shoulder tackle. He, so. he slows down significantly too yeah. midway through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, like he had to get rid of the bar because he just don't want to lose all those resources. But dude, that that was way too far. So. He, he had an opportunity to at least block one more sandblaster. I wouldn't do anything. that. Though. I, I wouldn't have done that either. So I don't blame him. Backs away. He is low on drive gauge at 88 seconds. Good lord. Perfect yeah. parry. Yeah, attack on drive gauge. Bonchan getting his mission. Okay, so this is gonna be huge. He could get the. He's so getting so much chip damage. I can't even get my sentence out. There you go. Aerial flash knuckles away out of the corner here. And the check with the target stop combo. Plus. Bonchan tried to contest that. Well, he blocked in time. Mena RD from that DI. Yes, guy downstairs. downstairs. I, I, I feel that. <laughs> Sam Blaster's away. Got to be very careful there. And immediately interruption. No slam dunk because he doesn't want to burn himself out there. Oof. Caught him this time round. He thought an OD uppercut was coming. Oh, that was huge. Yeah, that was a punish counter as well off the medium. Being able to link it. Right, the regeneration starts now. Backs away. Bonchan just needs about two stocks of dry gauge before he takes a move. All right, Mena beat into the punch. I think he identified that as well. He wants to keep the dry gauge low with the hook up by Crook. Yeah, burn him out. Clean. He's still got level one at that range. Sand Blast is very dangerous at that range. I know Men has been missing Vulcan Blast today, but please do not throw Sand Blast that close. Up. No DI, if you want to burn him out. Interesting, interesting. Did the amount of gauge he had left in RD, he wouldn't have any uh, any drive to spare if he tried to 
So I did that. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think yeah, I don't think he wanted to risk that. I'm not Fair. sure if like Bonchan tried to goad him into doing that, but he didn't want to risk that, of course. This and yeah, yeah, not even trying to face the mix up after that. Yes, Bonish and a double. I like that. Jump back round I, I, out I, space. Love, I love how these guys are on a very similar wavelength with the character and the mind gauge with the dry gauge as well. Speaking of drive gauge, Bonchan doing a pretty great job of building up his as well. Men RD looking towards the corner. Spine Buster, that's one. Ah, oh, yes, sir. Erase that tactic off the board. Well, bang. This is a round winner here for Bonchan, so he's not level two to stay in the fight. <gasps> Good. Ooh, that could have been disastrous for Bonchan. One drive rush cancel, he needs it. Back, back throw. He snuck it in. No way. He wasn't ready. We're going to a final round, potentially, in favor of Men RD. Okay, good choice there, because he didn't want to do the full thing. Goes into the Pale Rider, closes it out. It's at a super meter disadvantage though, but the mind games and the respect these guys have for one another and their drive gauge choices has been magnificent. Watching these two go back and forth, despite being a Luke Mirror and beat them. Great overhead. block on the overhead. Perfect parry there, just waits in the space. Ooh, almost got it. He didn't even try to whip punish there, and his own crouching medium punch gets clipped by the crouching oh. medium kick. Boy, he's having that problem again, Vicious. A little missed time. Bonchan even shook his head. He thought the combo was going to ring out. Trying it out here is Mena, keeping the drive gauge low as Bonchan. Good block on the jumping roundhouse. You don't lose too much drive gauge. Word. Brutal Spike doing its job. <gasps> oh my word. Yeah. Like this with again, big damage coming through. Safe jump setup. What's he gonna spend? That looks way too, too high. high. Yeah, okay, burn out for your troubles. If Mena gets a clean hit, that could be the game. Bonchan still has level two ready and locked. OD. There's a throw. What's your choice, Bonchan? Wake up, jab. Jab is the choice, and guess what? It pays off tenfold. Not too much scaling involved, by the way. Bang. Oh my Alive. god, but he's burnt out. No, he's not. Oh, but Mena is. Mena is. Oh! I was looking at the wrong dry gauge for a split second there. How the shoe went on the other foot. Mena only had two choices, and I didn't even think he was in the right mental state to make that choice. Yeah, he had two supers to his name as well, if I'm not mistaken, but that's such a hard decision to make, man. Yeah, would you do that at this point? He's still in the lead, though. Wake up super? Uh, well, mm -hmm. go out swinging. Yeah. Why not? Him and gets hit by the crouching fist. And to try to get the suppressor there, but it wasn't a round start position. It was a little bit closer to the jab. Luckily connected inside to save Hedda from big damage. What a jump to Predicting the sand blaster, perfect parry, gonna get the side switch. No, he's opting for the for the Oki. Back throw. Oh, that, that looked like a delayed jab there from Bonchan and the check. A lot of people being checked after certain fireball spacings. Back throw, and that should be the round. Slight delay at that. You saw Bonchan trying to press the button. That was a counter hit. Man, how these two have been going back and forth has been sensational to watch. Sensational. I know, right? Oh, these hand blasts firing on the projectiles. That projectile skirmish is not happening yet. Yeah, a little bit too many times has been RD gone to that tactic. Trying to drive rush forward off of a cancel into the overhead. Bonchan has had two successful answers against it thus far. Trying to burn him out here, but Bonchan's actually in danger of burning himself out. He's not careful, he does an OZ flash knuckle. He will do the eraser, and he does get plus three frame advantage because connecting against an airborne opponent. You can take the grab, but... Sweet. Word! Bonchan has got a substantial life lead here. It could all flip on its head by the wrong choice. That's a wait! Wow, what a timing from NRD! What's he gonna do though? Safe jump? No, just wait. Here it comes. What's the choice? He can't owe the uppercut, not yet anyway. Good oh block. Oh my god. The perfect parry doesn't have to risk anything up behind that. Doesn't matter what the scaling is like. Bon Chan flipping it around, or actually salvaging the rest of the round. There you can, and he already drive rushes in straight into Pale Rider there, because even he had to scratch his head at the end, but Bonchan did with the perfect parry on the DI before, so he needs as big of a buffer and life lead as possible. Gets a throw. Man. 
Presser, not by Ng. Bonchan respecting the choice, jumps out. What was that? Well, he was hit, I'll tell you that much. That's gonna connect. Take the damage here. What's it gonna be? Escape or delayed jab? Delayed medium instead. He went for a stronger button and he's gonna build the level one vicious for that Vulcan Blast to close it out. And there you have it, 3-1 in this Round three anchor match between these two going back and forth. It's been insane between these two. Mena took the first exchange, including that tiebreaker match. Then he goes back and takes it there. But boy, I've been loving the back and forth between the Bull and the Red Bulls. Although it is tied up in the team battle for set number two, we will not be going into that fourth match instead. Let's take a look at this replay first before we explain. The back and forth thus far from Bonchan and Mena RD. Again, Mena RD with a very, very ecstatic offensive start. Multiple throws being in against Bonchan to kind of establish that dominance. But not only that, but really kind of set the pace mentally to try to keep it ambiguous towards what he's going to be doing for the next couple of instances. But Bonchan, I felt like he was doing the exact same thing, right? I mean, it's Luke, it's Luke Beer match. It's exactly what he's going to be doing. Yeah, it's the back and forth, how they preserve their, literally, in the, the mirror drive game. Well, look, in, in the mirror match, you're going to utilize all your supers, right? And I like that they are not afraid to burn themselves out if it means I get to burn you out at the same time or in a similar sequence to what I'm going to do there. How these guys handled each other, the defensive choices, the risk that was taken. There were less OD uppercuts on wake up and more in terms of drive rush cancel and block strings as well. <laughs> and again, still being stubborn with those parries because it is an integral mechanic to the game. So you have to use it. But yeah, most of the time, you just saw all of the potency of these options happening in the corner. And they said, look, I can't deal with this as much as possible. And again, Mena could afford to make a couple more mistakes because obviously he had a bigger lead and it was leading towards the sure. points for this uh, anchor match exchange for the third time. And some of the gutsy calls, too, from uh, both of these players with NRD. Obviously, we saw that replay of making that choice to do the wake up Vulcan Blast. But you see the momentum shift immediately afterwards. I think at the start of that round, he had drive rushed forward and caught Bon Chan. And he's kind of slipped away little by little. But Bon Chan, again, yeah, exactly. the mistake he made from full screen, it's totally understandable. A little bit further in. Again, we talked about it. Do you think he would have been in a little bit of a better position to move forward after a blocked sandblast initially? Well, the thing is, it's like if, you, if you're going to move forward, then you have two choices. You have Vulcan Blast and you have your level three. Level three is fully invincible. You won't get clipped by a sandblaster, but it'll be obviously faster start from the range as well. Right. I love the way they both were using Eraser, by the way. Just the back and forth on Wake Up and then the combos there. I love that we saw Mena implementing drive impacts a bit more as a surprise factor. Total, yeah, then bon towards Chan, the end. Then Bonchan was paying attention. And when you do the perfect parry against the DI, three quarters of the way, your opponent's thinking, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I've got the wall splat, I've got the punish counter, and the perfect parry. It's like, damn, that's when we saw Mena scratch his head. He's like, well, kudos to you. <laughs> Limited choices there with the drive rush into the OD uppercut. He could have done supers, but at that point, what are you thinking about? Not doing wake up super at that point there. So really, really back and forth stuff that I really enjoyed. One of the certain nuances that we've seen in this matchup is uh, how often they go, they would go into like the save jump off of the jump medium punch and stuff. There was a couple of times where we saw some of those errors, actually. I kind of want to know what that was all about in terms of the timing, because most of these cats, they get it down pat. They are professionals for a very reason. But man, there were some really, really small nuances where it's like, man, how did you actually miss that save jump? There's, there's always that off chance, man. It's like practicing combos. You can practice a combo 99 times with the 100th attempt. You could miss it. Your safe jumps, man. And safe mm -hmm. jumps, there are some Pretty easy safe jumps, and then there are some annoying ones as well. But hey, sure. Sure. if you miss a safe jump, you miss a safe jump. It's all the same here. But hey, giving the team a lifeline, the team may be able to conjure up a second wind because their captain is doing the work and making sure they stay in this in-game and mentally as well by accumulating more 20 points here. And that's what the score line is looking like. It still means FAV can only need 20 points. They could do it in the two 10-pointers. Right. right. It could go to the other anchor match again. Ooh, they want to so dead this before they bump into Mena RD again. That's what they want to do. They want to put this and nip it in the butt. So one of the new things, obviously, we saw the inclusion of Sakonoko as well as Chris T in the lineup. Sakonoko taking the best of that in that match of 10 points to his name. But again, as you had mentioned, any team could do it essentially in this next set. But again, we have to get that switch up going. Now, my question for you is, do you think it's going to keep being like, if we end up going to those final moments, right, granted the results from Bandits, do you think you would force your captain up to secure that third matchup in the first place? That's difficult. 
because they now have to reveal their lineup. And if I was them, I might have to, I might have to put Sakanoko on the bench. Bring Ryusei back up. Yeah. You want Tokido here. He's been getting the dubs. You want yeah. Bonchan here. He's been going back and forth. The I wouldn't be surprised if it was Bonchan and Tokido to start things off in the next set, to be genuine with you. Because uh, Ryusei's yeah. been in the anchor spot before. No. Okay, but then that, that means you're, you're drawing out Mena. Yeah. Mena has to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with exactly certain it. people. But hey, listen, we've been carping on about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, sorry I've been about talking that. about hypotheticals, but I'm getting hungry, so I'm going to have to give a shout-out to our sponsor, our food sponsor, Bogota. And you can actually see it because, hey, he needs to put their girls in. Luke is having a good time on screen, and we saw a mirror match there, but Jamie has something else to say about it. Make sure you crush those cravings that you see on the screen and put the egg rolls in. Shouts to Rob TV as well with those It's Fire segments. He's had plenty of egg rolls. Hopefully, you guys have had plenty of egg rolls. They are available around the bar here in the Avalon Hollywood. So, again, big shout outs to Pagoda. Truly is fire. And speaking of fire, that's the exact type of quality you're going to get from Storm Collectibles with Mask Away, right? Storm Collectibles bringing all the classics and iconic gaming characters back to life with their high quality collectible action figures. Be sure to check out their Street Fighter figures on their website. You can see it on the top right. Be sure to scan that QR code or check out the official website over at stormcode.com.hk. They've been doing this for a very long time, man. And again, they have the utmost quality when it comes to your figures. Big shout out to another clothing sponsor we have here, Nerds. These guys are actually have a booth here at the Capcom Cup and they actually designed amazing jackets for the talent and the 48 players that qualified for the Cup and SFL. Where I'm actually wearing one of them now, so I'm actually on brand here. Big shout out to those guys because they have worked with the development team at Capcom and created by our partner, Nerds. Go and check out their booth in the lobby or head over to Nerds clothing.com and enter the code Capcom Cup in all capitals, by the way, to receive a 10% discount off of your purchase. Don't forget the official Street Fighter 6 hip hop album from Nerds Clothing is now available on vinyl and all streaming platforms. The album features some of the greatest hip hop legends and today's artist paying homage to the Street Fighter franchise from Dave Eats, Benis the Butcher, Sheik Loose, Styles P, Royce the 5'9", Papoose, and a lot more. So I'm a huge fan of this. Stream now on Apple Music or Spotify. And of course, all this wouldn't be possible without the big help from our sponsor. Huge thanks to Tile Holding for being the prizing supporter of $150,000 USD for the Street Fighter League World Championship. Tile Holding is the world's number one market share in Soldier Resist. The green part of printed circuit boards they create are the backbone through which we get to explore our passion for Street Fighter. And through this support, they uplift everyone taking on challenges to realize a happy world in and out of the game. We are very much so happy to have them as a part of this prestigious event. Well, we've had our half time, but now we go into extra time. When we come back, they're going to be switching sides again, and somebody has got to win this tournament. We'll see you in a couple of minutes. Three one in this. Round three anchor match between these two going back and forth. We've been insane between these two. To me, Street Fighter means history. It's what got me into fighting games. It's what got most of my teams as well. And it's good to see just multiple iterations through time as the game continues to get better and better, new characters, better graphics. We do this because not only we love it, but the rest of the PCS family that buys from us. PCS really started getting into the statue form of Street Fighter back in 2007. We've continued to grow and expand our Street Fighter offering from everything from quarter scale to third scale size. Kind of my baby or my favorite is this new uh, fitness line that we have coming out. So we continue to expand and change it up and not just do something that everybody else is doing, but try to make it unique to PCS. It's one thing to be licensed and create statues for the fan, but to us creating the trophy that the winner will take home, I view that as a big honor. So we look forward to seeing it raised high.
gon' pay the price. All them late nights finally paid nights. So wake up my dreams, but you can call me the greatest of all time. Yeah, I'm focused. You know how bad I want this. I'm giving it my all. Never thought this moment is golden. I control it. All eyes on me. I see I'm watching. Once I'm locked in, ain't no way that I'm stopping. Locked in. It's time to put in work. Go berserk. I'm in my zone until I'm first. Believe me when I say nobody can see me. This is a product of hustle. I just make it look easy. Nah. I ain't see nothing, I just barely scratch the surface Throw me in the rain, let me do my thing Got the heavy deal, fight it through the pain When I'm in the zone, it's I ain't never say way. much, but you see me up top You see my numbers healthy, the pressure don't stop Until I'm in the top, see the bottom seats watch They all won't see me flop, but I'm stepping on them watch Let them watch Born ready to fight, this is my moment Coming for it all, just show me my opponent Wanna be great, I'm a legend in the making And this is mine for the taking Cause I got what it takes to be on top I'm number one cause I don't stop Hard gas, no brakes, high stakes I don't act tough till the test let them fall just not stop, you ready or not When it's all said and done, I'ma be on the top Three, two, one, let's go I'm ahead of the game, don't remember my name Not stop, you ready or not When it's all said and done, I'ma be on the top Three, two, one, let's go I belong in the number one spot Welcome back to the Street Fighter League World Championships here in the Avalon Hollywood. It's been a jolly good time, competitive exchanges. The hype is there with the crowds. We are calling the action myself, Jammers and Vicious here. Obviously, Zero Zero Nation, they had to bow out early. Commissioner races to them, I love those guys. Same. But these two teams here, they're playing to a first of 70 points and they've been going back and forth. It's actually been phenomenal to watch these guys and the mind, the mind battles they're having how they're managing each other's drive gauges. Right, it's right. been insane to see. This is going to be the biggest obstacle for either team, right? How are they going to approach the away positioning, at least for the roster, right? Are they going to draw out their strongest players first, right? I think that's going to be the biggest True. question, considering FAV Gaming only needs 20 more points to their name. So are they going to try to close it out early with a rash order, or is it going to be playing out for them and they're going to be uh, hailed as geniuses for that? Well. It kind of goes with what they're used to doing as players, right? Instead of like going for the gusto, they try to not make a mistake. So they're probably going to go for the strategical team meeting and go for like, maybe we should just go with the safest pick, the surefire picks there, instead of taking the risk. Again, they could try and draw out Mena RD. They could literally say, put Bonchan up front because he's actually been pretty good in his matches thus far, mm -hmm. despite going back and forth. He's only been facing, what, one or two opponents. So it hasn't really, it's only been Mena and Lord Venom. So it's right. like, maybe you want to switch it up a little bit. Maybe give the responsibility to Tokido or Ryusei in that spot. But again, they could nip this in the bus with those 20 points in the first two 10 points. We're actually going to look at their lineup right now and see what it's going to be. So Sakanoko okay. steps up to the plate. And this time he will be the vanguard there with the Chun-Li. So they keep him seated and it will be Tokido with second place there with the middleman match. And then Bonchan still remaining in the anchor position so as they, they mentioned, really yeah. are adamant that he's, he's staying there pretty much trying to uh, be as risk averse as possible setting up soccer milk but now he has to face off against the bad man kaba with that guy on starting things off with the bandits on the home side again with that deficit of being under 20 points pretty significant going into this they're at 30 currently to get that full-on sweep slides out i think it's actually a very good choice bringing kaba back on Getting him on the lineup here. Again, Sakanoko did get the dub against Christy here. So if you got the dub against Christy, let's not run it back. Let's try and switch up our antics here. Yes. Good choice. Now remember Valmas has a good time against Giles in Europe, but again, different parts of the world. Sakanoko's got a wealth of experience with the Giles over there at the high level. Higuchi, Daikoku, so on and so forth. And I'm pretty sure even at the cup itself and in and around it, Kaba's got his fair share of Chun-Li experiences, so no doubt. we will see how this one pans out here. This 10 points, 
say this last encounter between the two is super vital mm. because we will get a winner after this. Yeah, surprisingly enough, when you look at the, if, if you recollect Street Fighter League US, I don't think there were that many uh, Chun Li representatives for him to really kind of grind out against. True. That's really again. a huge statement to make too. But he's made such a big progression since then up until this very point of the stage because he has been actively taking dubs. And if not that, top threes in a lot of these events. Well, speaking of active, he already drive rush Bazooka knees in to try and close the gap here. Now, you can Serenity stream under a Sonic Boom and try and punish with a crouching medium punch. But you do have to get in the right spacing. Hazanshi can work as well as a hard read. I'm sure Kaba, he's going to have to take some risks here and there, but you've got to be careful and identify what read. Yeah, see, he's already going to try to do a light Hazanshi. That is relatively safe on block, I believe. I want to see the exchange of Kaba reading that exact moment and using an upside down kick. We have we'll seen see. that before, you can do that, but you've got to basically tempt him into doing it. Of and course. Perfect parry on the upside down kick goes into Speaking a drive impact. Set yourself up for the safe jump. It's the stop going for two times over, actually three times over. Forward throw now for Sakonoko. A little bit of a stutter step, tantalizing that space. But it's the five level Jeez. shuffle instead. Kaba letting it rain out with the level one. Set up the side switch. Oh my god, the tenacity from Sakonoko. OD Tencho kicks. He's been in like 50-50 with those today. And sometimes when they work out, he does try and get the round after that. But oh, that could have caught the recovery frames there. There was an attempt. Kaba's low on drive gauge here, so he doesn't want to overexert himself. I know he wants the round because Sako's low on drive gauge, but... Oh, sorry, health gauge. Upside down kick again, doing it from a, a really safe distance. It's like max distance on the heel. And it does go over crouching medium kick as well. We know that Chun-Li plays. Sakonoko likes to use it, so if he clips... A crouching media kick with upside down kick, that would be pivotal. Oh, and the overhead, he wasn't ready for it. More than enough damage if he decides to cash it out. Oh, uh, level two. Yeah, level two would be fine. It might be the hard punch afterwards. Quite. Yeah, into uh, level one, yeah. But I think no matter what, level three or level two into that sequence, it would yeah. be just fine. That's right. Splurged all the resources, necessary investment. Goes back in with a full drive stock anyway, so it's fine. Still Ooh. holding parry there. Interesting. He thought Cover might press a light just in case of the trade interaction there. Oh, and the delay is so sneaky as well. Kaba, as he was inching closer, I think he was, when he was within throw range, let that low medium kick fly. Well, it's high lower throw, and he combos off the overhead and the crouching medium kick into the combo. That right? is fair, yeah, that's right. Well, at least of your concerns. Gets the punish. Was it in range to punish that? Because that is negative eight on block there, and it is a seven frame forward medium punch. Still weighing it out. Kaba assessing the spacing here. Atsako really tried to get in the throw range there. It looked like. Oof. He catches it. Big damage here. Look at that. That is insane. It's the first Sonic Boom he's caught, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. oh he thought he was, going, he was dedicated to the tick throw. Mm -hmm. yeah, rushes in. Has to deal with the pressure here. What's the next choice going to be? Walk up throw. Kaba can one sneak more. in another one. Sakonoka knew it. Okay, still in Serenity. <laughs> he let out a little chuckle as well. I was looking immediately at his player cam. He's like, wait, what? I'm, st I'm still stuck in this. Oh, we're going to do this dance? Oh, okay. Well, at least Kaba got the round, though. That's the most important part for Team Bandits here. Still has that level three locked and loaded. And he's going to do the Hoyoku Sen to go through the OD Sonic Boom to take even more drive gauge away. And that's really good using that level two to like react to OD Fireball. You're taking more drive gauge away in that exchange. That's away. Oh, you still get to catch that. Stop. Yeah, because it was mid-air and also off of a drive rush. That was beautifully executed from Sako. That was so sick. Dude, that was fire. I'm not going to lie. Eat your heart out, Rob TV. <laughs> <laughs> Chase him down here, gets another grab, does Kaba. Try to bait something there, it seemed like, by holding the parry. Trying to feint a drive rush attempt. Still standing up. He needs a level two conversion, something, any way, shape, or form. Kaba throws a sonic boom. Every Sonic Boom will be dangerous. That's why he's whiffing Stan Medium Punch. Still doing it. Drive rushes in to close the gap. Oh, you see that compact spin? Oh, wait, hold on, wait a minute. Still trying to do it here. Sako might be allocating his brain power to something else, but as he does that, Carbo just needs one hit. And get the conversion to level three, but what button is it going to be from? Ooh. Still looking at it from the roundhouse. That's his go-to button. Oh. Damn, that was so deceptive. That was mad deceptive. Sneaking in that dash against Kaba when he was vulnerable. Immediately after the drive rush and the fireball clash. 
Really, really smart. Yeah, one of the biggest things uh, in this matchup that we've noticed over the time is uh, obviously Chun Li and Guile being able to follow behind their booms, and what leads after that could be really, really hard to guess. You could say the same thing about Guile with his last yes, no, boom. But absolutely, for both, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And I, I've been saying this with James and a few other commentators as well. Uh, when they do certain projectiles, especially the slow moving ones, if you get the perfect parry, both of you aren't really ready for it. You have to be ready for the punish. And there's the Hazan shoot into the light spin in Birkin. Big damage here coming through for Kabe into the flash kick. Good patience and understanding of how to circumvent the projectiles. And just navigate that horizontal space in general from Sakanoka, I've got to say. Oh. So down kick. Oh! Beam to the punch there. Getting her own forward heavy kick. A little tricky. There's a little bit of a shuffle. Sakunoko. Trying to counter hit with the jab, but no Sakaba was just out of the range. So holding it down again. It's always that. End. Oh! What a jump. Hard read there. He needed to do that to get something started. Get the engines revving. Oh! Can't be. No. Ah, and it's always going to be the heel stop. Yeah, that forward heavy kick. Coming well, from Kaba. Low health, which means you're inclined to move forward, which means you're going to walk into a normal at some point. Not forward heavy kick, excuse me. It's that heavy, heavy kick. kick, yeah. I understand. But go on. No, I, I, I've already finished my point, so. All right. <laughs> you see, Kaba is very much so looking for some of the low usage from Sakonoko. He's, he's throwing out a lot more of the upside down kicks in this matchup, or at least in this round. There we go. Back to the neutral here, slowly closing the gap. That looks punishable by a level one, but Chun Li players don't normally use the Kokoshos there to deal with an upside down kick unless it's going to get the round or the burnout there. Have to get her Zanshu. If anything, you want to build continuous level twos, right? Yeah, that's, that, that's the, the pivotal. Jump. Yeah, that's the game changer there. That's the reversal indeed. Still weighing it out here. Got to be very conscious of that stat heavy kick from Kaba. Can't even throw off the oh, I did say. Jesus! You've got to be careful of that stand heavy kick from Kaba, and he converts into crossfire somersault, and he's looking to equalize here. Good mind reader, Nostra Jammers. Ooh, oh my oh, God! No! Damn, son! Where'd you find that? Dude, we are used to seeing Gao players walk away and entice the whiff throw with a stand heavy punch as the answer. This time, he goes for a heavy kick into the target. Is there anything the this man sweep? cannot do? <laughs> that is crazy, bro. Dude, Kaba coming in, implementing new tactics as we go on, which means it piles on rise what we call the mental stuff for Sakunoko. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about going to throw tech? Maybe try back back. Maybe do a delayed jump back. That's if we get into that precarious situation again. But boy, that was brilliant. The ingredients are there. Now the layers are set, so we'll see. Oh, that was so slick. Just walk up, crouching medium punch? He said counter hit though. I'm not sure what he could have got after that in terms of frame data. He did press forward medium punch. Mm -hmm. And that's the same startup as crouch medium kick. So. Still closing the gap there. Good interruption wow. this time round because it's usually one of the biggest interactions between these two has been like the drive rush of the bazooka knee while Sako tries to parry it, but he's only been holding the parry. Maintaining the positioning and the slight drive gauge advantage there. Damn! Knuckles ringing out again. The, yeah, that, that, well. that interaction has been huge, especially with the outcome that Sakunoko has been losing the exchanges most of the time. Throw, low conversion. Yeah, right now it's dead even. Sakunoko also trying to keep it even within the drive gauge as well, but no, he's still down about, like, what, half a bar? Dude, I love the patience. Oh. Ooh. He opened him up. Throw with the backdash read from Kaba. Immaculate defensive decisions, level one. Do you set up the side switch? Yes, okay. sir, you do. Goes for the throw. Try to bait something out there in the perfect parry. This is huge, and he's going to side swap from this one. Vicious. <gasps> he didn't what? get all the hits. That's huge. Oh, but, but this he's is still pretty big for Sakunoko. He's going to try and chip him out. Yeah, he's going to try and chip him out. That was genius. That was actually kind of genius. And I'm glad that he ended it with OD kicks, by the way, because he could cancel it to hoyoku -san. That's true. Kept it super safe. Didn't want to resort to the DI common option. Lovely anti with the flash kick there. Kaba looking to take this to a final round. Gets the three piece into the flash kick. Oh my. Again, almost. He's been doing that a couple oh of times. Classic Kaba after a throw tech. Roundhouse into Sonic Hurricane. He's got the charge. And again, gets the throw. Wins that interaction from the Bazooka Knee this time round. Puts out Tricky. the only Sonic Blade. That's there for 20 centuries. It's not a centuries, man. It's <laughs> a long time, bro. I mean, I know it's a long time. Oh, this is so active. That was OD as well. Back 
backs away. Just one hit should do it for cover. Anything will do. And I'm not sure if he tried to pump a level two behind that. Luckily, he saved it regardless, but it's the final round of this oh, game that, here. That was mad far for the punish counter. Him being able to link off of that, the drive rush, good awareness. Kaba, he needs the points here for Bandit. Jumps away on defense, trying to chase him down with a stand heavy punch. Didn't quite work out for him, and Ooh. he catches it, even though he tried to bait with a stand medium punch. The Hazan still clicked it. The handshake of destiny. There we go. Hoyoko Sen, bring him to the corner. Surely still within he's... range to get a safe jump as well. Yeah, he's got to set up the safe jump. Because he knows that flash kick is actually integral for Kaba on his wake up. Rotek there, good defense, and he's still doing the heavy kick there after Rotek. Still looking for it is Kaba. You know if that roundhouse lands, it's level three city. Oh, oh no! Even better! Even better! Sako flashed out the parry, but the recovery gets clipped by the overhead from Kaba into level three damage. Now the lead is with Kaba right oh, now, and he's really trying to burn beautiful. out Sakonoko's beat. Being patient about it, I like it. Oh dear! Now, no, 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 Jammers, I gotta ask you a question. That was the forward fierce, but it was after the drive rush flash. Sonic boom intention or no? I think he just wanted to back back to the face. Okay, all right, all right, that's acceptable. I genuinely thought maybe like it ate up an input and he got forward fierce anyway. Maybe, but either way, it covers a lot of ground. That plus a block anyway, and if it listen, it hit the my cheeks. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that was actually very fortuitous there. We haven't Kaba. seen that normal ever throughout the entire set. Actually, we haven't seen that since he stepped on stage, in my opinion. Uh, exactly right. right. If, uh, if uh, memory serves us correctly, but yes, a good back and forth, good patience there, the neutral from both of them. But again, there were some key opportune moments there. Fighting the left side of the screen a fair bit with these guys. And what's interesting as well, because Kaba is a player that does this a fair bit, is when you give him the space and the timing, he will fling out a heavy, whether it's heavy kick into a super or back fist into a back boom fierce. or a drive rush yeah. cancel. Give him the space and time, he will gladly accept it to turn things around here. I love the utilization of all resources from both players. Maybe Sakanoko, because again, there's a lot more to work with in terms of trying to chip him, trying to gain ground as well. This conversion here, this is why people relish in Sakanoko's execution abilities. It's crazy to see, very dexterous, uh, dexterous indeed. You look at that too, the, the usage of those heavies when you talk about it, the space that Kaba creates for himself still makes it very awkward to even try to contest or move forward. And that's why Sakonoko has been a little bit uh, reluctant to kind of pursue, even though it's his turn, but that roundhouse again, clipping forward back to back it's times as we see in the replay. Sakonoko is just right in the edge of, or at the edge of that hitbox. He, he lets you know, I love this chip sequence, a good um, good call from you and identification as to what he was going to do there, because he's at the level two just in case he wasn't going to close it out via the OD move. But yeah, just got the back and forth, man. And it kind of lets you know that he's like using roundhouse for certain things. He's only got limited options there, and he's letting you know that OD Sonic Blade stays out there for years. And then here's where things really turned around. Go for the safe jump, because in terms of it being last game, last round, that was the most safest and strategical thing to do. She's blocking it out here, but then the throw tech, turn it around, get the anti-air. So yeah, Jeez, he was holding one... parry a fair bit, but that was up against something else in the neutral, right? And then the one time he did a tap parry, let go, punish counter. That's when things really turned around here. And then, yeah. That was everything. So, it, maybe, judging by his facial expression, maybe he tried to do something <laughs> else. But, look, I, I assume Sonic Boom, to be quite honest with you. Forward heavy punch still works. And if you're committed, yes. you're, you're not going to be crouching when you need to close the gap and try and win the round, right? So it's like, you're going to be standing up and dashing in. So, of course, you're going to get clipped by the back fist there. That's so, right. that makes a lot of sense to me. Even if that wasn't what he wanted to do, give him the benefit of the doubt and say, look, Brilliant stuff, you got the win, you got 10 points. Much needed 10 points for Team Bandits. No doubt, yeah. So looking at it right now, obviously uh, Tokido is going to be the one stepping up to the plate for FAV Gaming, stuck in the away side. The mirror match. I actually got to talk to the Bandits cap about this. It's like, are you going to actually see the uh, Chris T mirror match against Tokido? You think they're going to step up and actually put that in there? So I'm glad this finally comes to fruition because we have two very excellent character specialists here both of these players. Chris T and Tokido is going to be our second match again. Not... When you when you think about it now, we're, we are going to be going to that third match regardless, but this is, I feel like, a treat for all of us Street Fighter fans in general. Yes, 100% in terms of the players. It will be a mirror match once again. Chris T will definitely relish in this moment to be able to say they've done it on the Street Fight World Championship stage. And again, if he wins this, I believe they'll both be 50 apiece. 
think you have to go to that final game. And we're forced to get the win yeah. from there. I think no matter what, in terms of the point spread, yeah. we're still going to be going to that final game. So that is, that's excellent. Really, Most really, excellent. really. We got ourselves a real match. All right, so Ken is obviously going to be the character on the screen for both of these players. Did you happen to catch Chris Tatarian downstairs yesterday? I think he was, but I think he was chatting with people more than actively playing here. But I, he's definitely got the right mindset when it comes to situations, high pressure situations like this. So I have the utmost faith in him. Tokido has other plans though, because again, he wants to make sure his team get the dub as well. Collect those 10 points, each and every point matters. Man, those eyebrows on this costume are something serious. Hadouken, Hadouken. Bushy. All right, here we go. <laughs> Game number one between Christine and Tokido. Man, nothing to be impressed immediately after knocking on the door. Tokido. There's a fireball at a very dangerous range, and there's that oh. crouching medium punch there. And it, it's similar to using it like Luke, right? You use it, try to see if they try and whip punish it, and then catch him again. Trying to react to it afterwards because people do react late to those. Ooh. Okay. Getting outside that range as well, Chris Tatarian. Chris Tatarian. I mean, most of the fireballs do the work. Yeah, he's actually mixing up between crouch medium punch, crouch medium kick, fireball as a poke, but obviously we know fireball, it can be reacted to with the DI in that range, but I don't think Chris wants to risk that at the moment, especially losing his drive gauge as well, or low on drive gauge. Delay jump back there, and it worked out. Sometimes doing delayed throw tech is actually pretty dangerous with the recovery frames. It's less than a drive gauge away, so we're going to see a drive rush cancel into the true block string, burn him out. And then, yep, play it safe. That was actually the most optimal and safest route Tokido could do there. Oh, the uppercut? For sure. Yeah. Or even leading up to that with the drive rush uh, from the stand fierce with the true block shot. That's fair. Take away one drive stop completely to burn him out. We're looking at now the spacing between the two. Tokido does find the mark this time with the low medium kick. Right? He's already showing two different looks that you were talking about in the previous games that we've seen him from. Okay. Thought he could go a punish there. That's why he cancelled the fire, but wasn't quite sure. Still low on dry gauge there, Tokido. Ah, ready for it. Yeah, gets the anti as well. Keeps him marshaled in the corner too. <laughs> He's Three in a row. Him know. Oh, a little bit of frustration from the side of Chris Tarian as well. Shook his head on that one. Because you're usually not used to use uh, Ken using crouching medium punch, and then have you Brother. got the right? Have you got the right counter towards that as well? So right, he's going to go for the counter select screen. Take a breather here, but yeah, that's been that's been the big play at the moment. It's been crouching medium punch throwing all the Ken players off today. Okay. Oh, okay, I thought he was going to go use the exact same costume and do something else here, but Tokido has been using costume 3. 10 there, so he's having a little chat with Zhao Hai and Mena. Maybe readjust the spacing. If you're, if you're a part of the Bandits camp, you have to you have to take a significant note about his normal usage, right? Tokido, again, that crouching medium punch has been so, so hard to even contest against in the corner. How many times have you whiffed in front of Chris Terry? Three. Twice? Three Come on. Yes, yeah, twice, three times, something like that. What do you do to counteract that now? Well, he could try to implement his own strategy, but sometimes you can imitate the what, but not the why. Oh, okay. Checked him there with the stand medium kick. Backs away there. We see in that crouching medium punch. And it actually recovers fairly quick as well, so how do you navigate around that unless you're really fixated on that normal? Cancel there. Oh! Sneaking in a little bit of a reset. That overhead. Uh, you, you heard the, the flash parry. The back dash away from the throw. Gets the, the other side. Punish. Yeah, he got the optimal stuff there with the crouching jab into the crouch fist. Heavy Jinrai. Got himself out in the process here, but Tokido can still hold his grounds. Not sure what that button was, but the fireball clipped it. And I like these drive rushes into the fireball to stop his momentum and see if Tokido's trying to check with something else because you'll have to take the regular damage. Oh, uh, so delayed for Chris Tatarian. Are you sure you can? He didn't take a shot to the corner here, so he's got other ideas. No and that must have been a mash. That must have been a mash because the crouch fears come out <laughs> before the story you could say. I, must have been I will wholeheartedly there. agree with you on that one because I've definitely seen that on my end. I mean, look, objective complete. The short you can came out, that's all I care about. Yeah. And even Tokido was just like, oh, that was pretty good. He had a little bit of a reaction on that. Damn, that was far! Been pretty consistent with that today overall. Sort of flash kick through that early as well, so the guys know the ranges. 
again, stopping the drive rush approach against Chris T. Tokido now finding the right usage for the rolling beam kick. The blocks here from Tokido and the interruption with the light into the Shoryuken conversion. Oof. Looking to take the rounds. He's going to do level two instead. He's going to put him at guess for game here. Strike throw. The throw won't kill though. Will it? Oh, tell a lie. Damn. <laughs> that, must was, been like, that was the most genuine <laughs> damn I've like ever damn. heard you say. <laughs> I must have like a pixel of satin off. <laughs> My bad. It wasn't bad at all. Well, I mean, it was good for Tokido regardless. Oh, Whoa. that was so good. He whipped the light and went to the medium kick. That was good. A lot of the guys have been doing that at high level there. With the first button. Yeah, you're testing the reaction yeah, to the opponent. Yeah, testing. for sure. People are still getting used to it, even eight, nine months in. Almost. Oh. Tokido burned himself out to get out of the corner, but what price does he have to pay this? Just dash up twice. No, just dash once. Delay a little bit. Delay throw again, by the way. He might have been looking for the level one. <gasps> Look at the chip. But be careful what he spent. You sneaky guy. Chris Tateria throwing out the drive impact for the big W, tying it up. Readjustment of the spacing. Still kept composed. I'm liking the adaptation I've seen from Chris T there. Again, sometimes it's just micro adjustments. They don't need to be macro, just micro. Because I feel in the first game, he wasn't really doing that much wrong, to be honest with you. He just got pretty bamboozled by. Tokido's yeah. crouching medium punch that's, usage. That's, that's the biggest really. thing, right? As long as you build up, build up some time for yourself to make that adaptation possible. And you force, you force the awkward situations against your opponent a lot. It's like, like Tokido only uses the crouching medium punch for the very first thing, then he goes back to the yes. original game plan. That's what I've noticed twice now. Oh, there Still you go. catches them crouching. We mentioned that earlier. What happens if you perfect parry that low scenario? Ooh, that was a counter hit. Chris Terry tried to contest the safe jump. Backdash almost got the punish there. This is what he needs, though. Yeah, Tokido's backing away. He was looking for the airborne approach. Ooh, again, three for three. Maybe to set that up, though. Okay, give him the illusion that he could throw the fireball, but... And he blocks, takes the risk. It's fine. Sometimes you need to set precedence. It might have been obvious, but sometimes the obvious choice is the best choice. But it puts Tokido at match point here in this second player match with the best of three. I love these standard light kick checks from both of them. Oh. And an immediate standing light punch check from Tokido. But it was off of the driver, so he was looking for the counter poke regardless. Still waiting there, perfect. All right, the fireball. Oh, oh the, dear. Buffered, the buffered normal. See, now, Tokido running into that. Is he going to be frustrated or is he going to firm it on defense? Because he needs to get out. He's going to firm it on defense because that was a big mistake. He's going to throw him again, Jammers. Oh. All right. Looks like there he's out. He's got some. Ah, here oh, we go. Back to strategy, the first strategy. Or again, what's it going to be? Strike throw, and he tried to wake up. Good choice there from Chris, so he had to commit. I don't think he was pleased by that, but he had to do something to turn this around. It is a detrimental position. No resources. Dehydrated. Shout out to Yipes. He got I through. like that. That was wrong. Even if the one hits fine. He can't punish that. Not from that range anyway. This is Chris D. Could still My God, Tokido, how many times? That was OD Fireball, too. It was. Jeez. It was indeed utilizing the invincibility frames and reacting at the last possible minute before it connected. He was able to do that. And to be fair, he was pretty successful that throughout the day. So well played to Tokido. Commiserations to Chris, because that adaptation was actually pretty fantastic. Well, I've got to say in the Ken Mirror there, brilliant stuff to see. Which means we go to this potential Final match here at SFL World Championships. Takes oh the jacket God. off. He's smiling. You gotta give. You gotta. You gotta go the distance, man. You gotta give me that extra set. If Bandits can secure this W against Bonchan, they have another chance at love. We'll talk about that in detail after this. Again, we talked about the initial strategy of how Tokido doesn't want to be less susceptible with that low medium kick. He, he's fully aware that Chris Terrian is more than competent enough to to punish counter that or be outside of that space. So the crouching medium punch has been the go-to. And you had mentioned it in the previous segments. Indeed. And again, it was just how Tokido switches up his strategy via normals, right? Starting off the oh, crouching medium kick, throwing him off, going back to the stage. And you game saw plan. the startup of the low medium kick from Chris Tateri, and that was just rough. Man. But the thing is, like, Chris T literally stuck to his game plan. We didn't really see Crouch and Medium Punch used in the same way that Tokido was using it. And maybe it's just a button he's not comfortable using, or he has maybe vastly different opinions on how to use the button. But his whiff punish game has been pretty phenomenal today against Sakanoko 
against Aikido here. But then there's sometimes where he puts himself in a scenario. It's not even him. Sometimes his opponent puts him in that scenario where he's forced to do something that he's not completely comfortable with. And even though he gets the hit and spends the resources to reset things into neutral, he's at a lack of advantage in the meter department, which is pretty huge. We saw that earlier. And I think one of the biggest things as well was when he got the low forward into the Tatsu on block by mistake. Uh, having those situations, especially at this late stage in the game, is not good for your mental, man. No doubt, you saw Tokido again into forward to even make that happen. But talking about the last tidbits, I, I feel like most of the time Christitarian was playing it rather safe, rather, I want to say like a decent speed. But That's fine. Of the set. Him kind of running out with the drive rushes to see if Tokido would react to him really didn't play out in his favor towards the end of that set. He was still ready for it no matter what. Ate a lot of damage, which allowed him to pretty much be susceptible in these corner situations. I think uh, overall his... his oh, Decision making around the mechanics of dry rush didn't go the way that he yeah. had planned it. Yeah. And I think that's what exactly where he struggled the most. Because other than that, I think his rookie game was fine. We also got to remember as well, they were playing super close to the fireballs, mm -hmm. and then Tokido was the only one doing the Shoryukens, or the OD Shoryukens there. Chris actually got a heavy one to connect, which only connected once, and that was huge. To even that give him an iota of uh, extra time, right? In burnout, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. no matter how many schools we were at, we're about to see it right now because, dude, it was pretty oh, was crazy. Over. But yeah, goes through the OD Fireball with the OD Shoryuken there, so props to Tokido. They are just one match away from being right at the champions here at SFL World Championships. So you see there, uh, FAV Gaming only 10 points away from taking it down as champs. Bonchan obviously in the anchor spot for 20 points. However, many RD can bring it to a tiebreaker situation where we reset the sides, we switch the sides and can get another game. So it's really up to Min RD. It's do or die time. And I can bet you anything in the world that if it does come down to the tiebreaker and they have to fight off again, it would be Min versus Watch him. Well, the thing is here, as you can clearly see, we're running it back once again. The pressure is on both of them for different reasons. Pressure to keep Bandits in this fight and equalize and get that final, final game. And Bonchan, well, you have the ability to close this one out. That's it, right? No pressure indeed, I should say, wink, wink. But again, both of these guys have been in a position before. Catcom Cup finalist, Catcom yes. Cup champion, EVO 2019 finals. So it's going to be phenomenal to see. This could potentially be the very last game. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I gotta hear it one more time. Who likes FAV Gaming? Make some noise for the Japanese gods of fighting game one time. Now, this one is a no-brainer. I feel like I shouldn't even really be asking this question because I've heard it myself. Who here is in favor of the Bandits? Huge support from the crowd, regardless of who they're rooting for, but we do have some fan favorites here. But hey, you're going to need to share all your energy, keep the energy up for men at RD. It's a tall order, but it's nothing that he hasn't done before. Yes. Running this, it back. This it truly is like a, uh, like a gift of the gods. I didn't mean to like uh, run no, you legit. over on that one, but it, it truly is like a spectacle to even witness it live in person. Because I would love to even check you guys out over at EU in person or even Japan in person. But again, you guys get this live and in full effect. So again, before we get into it, sincerely, for all of the teams involved, let me hear you pump it up for these players. Yo, round of applause for our finalists, Bandits and FAV Gaming, just one more time. It's all you, Jammers. We're going to kick it off with the mirror once again. These guys have been having that amazing rally of adaptation, defensive choices, neutral interactions. They keep this as fundamental as can be before they introduce that tinge of disrespect. That shows how much admiration they have for each other there. Let's see who gets the first exchange in terms of a drive rush cancel. Perfect carry on the sandblast, and he perfect carries. Damn, right back at him as well. There you go, these guys are seeing it. Straight to the corner. And he goes for the overhead kick from the Avenger. Interesting. You know, that connect from that height. Yeah, when he drives rush forward, it still gets yeah. uh, space for oh, the yeah. up of the perfect flash knuckle. That was lucky. Good jump, medium punch to keep Bonchan caved in the corner here oh. and making sure he gets no button into a drive rush. There's a grab again. Focus now. OD uppercut, spending the rest for the dunk as well. Now it looks like he just wants the space so he can walk out safely instead of doing the OD uppercut and then drive rushing behind that. It's yeah. three bars either way what you're going to be spending. Makes sense. 
Put on another grab. Very, I was gonna say very explosive from both ends, both defensively and offensively. Oh, again, that was a delay on the cross medium punch. Going for the eraser for level two already. I mean, the screen carry on this is pretty prevalent, so it's a very wise choice there. And I think like Mena tried to backdash or hold up, try to escape. So no avail. There's the safe jump. Now it's Bonchan's turn. It's him in the toes. It is now Bonchan's turn. Oh, again with that delayed oh. crouch medium punch on defense there from Mena. You drive up. No, he's just walking it out. Ooh. Rush in, back throw. It looks like he's trying to press a the button there. He's delaying it as well. Nice staggered jab. Walking it down. Air to air with the jump, medium punch as well. He's going to try and take as much damage away for it. He needs to convert it into a big ah, combo. Man. At that, at that point in time, Bon Chan not afraid to take that risk. He had a pretty significant life lead, but Men are if he had landed that overhead, it would have been pretty big damage considering his bar below as well. Oh. So he's got level three, but he's still got level two to work with. And an interruption there from Mena RD. Trying to get the throw tech. Almost got the perfect parry there. Jumps away. I think that looked like Bonchan wanted to do a cross cut, uppercut, but it didn't quite work out. So Mena's going to take advantage of this. Throw tech now. Ooh. Just waiting it out. And it's so scary just being in this position, so, clo so close to the crotch and medium punch. Back yeah. throw. He just needs any sort of link. Yeah, any sort of link. Jeez, and he got it. He got more than enough, too, even after the second one. All right. Taking him into the beat down there with the Super Art 3, putting one game on the board here, one step closer to the equalizer. It's kind of crazy how everybody's so familiar with Memphis all of a sudden. I know, right? Crazy. Some people never even travel to the States, but they know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right there on the screen. Anyways. <laughs> Drive rush forward again. Still trying to fish with that crouching medium punch with RD using the stop side of a medium kick. Samblaster at exact same time. Their minds are in sync, but it is Mena RD that gets the conversion into the rising uppercut and still decides to close the distance here. I like that he walked into that stand fist and blocked it. Nice, staggered pressure, you don't lose too much. Dry gauge from blocking lights. It is very frustrating, but... Yet again with the clash of sandblasts. Trying to get a perfect carry into a heavy button, it looks like one channel if it's not a true block string. Staggered oh, with the delay. crouching medium kick. This is huge. What's he gonna do to defend? Takes a grab this one. time. Another. Oh, you saw it. We all thought it, really. Then RD successfully goading Bonchan into a very critical error. As their mind games happening on screen, there's a much more dangerous mind game happening in their minds when they got Bonchan trapped in the corner as opposed to Mena RD, I've noticed. Ooh, ooh. In the last couple of rounds, and it seems to be working out in Mena's favor right now. Tap parry does not get punished. Oh, that could have been a huge punish as well. Another whip throw, man. Mena RD is throwing out every single wish in the well. I mean, sometimes it can work, sometimes it doesn't. It's the grab. Let's see, he's not a perfect parry. Uppercut. Get out. Almost mirror images of how the rounds have ended. And if it's not in a block string to try to stop the drive rush cancel pressure, they're most likely going to do their OD uppercuts in the corner. Speaking of which, that's what it, that's the other way they're doing the OD uppercuts. He keeps going to slam dunk. Interesting usage yeah, of Bonchan's, media. From the he's the only one that's been doing it all week, I think. Or actually all season. Well, unless he's going to kill. Nice. Knocked down there. And that looked very safe. Unless he's going to kill. No one else really does it. From what I've noticed, anyway. Delay throw attack. Dangerous territories we're walking in. Walks away in the stand medium kick as well. Bonchan needs to readjust his spacing to try and deal with that stand medium kick, but he's trapped in the corner, so he's got other things to think about. What a backdash read against the throw. Single hit. The big check into the level three. Not going to necessarily kill, but it puts Bonchan in another dire situation. Could be guess for game. Oh, you could just hold it. Yeah, it takes the crown. Keep him low on drive gauge. They're both from a low on drive gauge, but it is Mena with a healthy life lead here. A humongous one at that. So he oh, can no. take a combo here. And he's going to have to cash out. He will have to do it. That's probably the CA version as well. So he gets to regenerate as little as possible while taking away two stocks from Mena. What's the big choice going to be? Does he want to go 2 0 up or is he going to wait? He's going to wait. Safe here. Near the corner. 
Oh, and immediately changing up the situation for the drive gauge and, uh, for both. He can't be too. Oh, he can't dude. be too what? He can't I, be too eager. I was about he to say. He can't be too anxious. I was about to say, he can't be too obvious in trying to close the gap with a dry brush or something. But even then, he was mixing in different versions of the Sand Blaster. You thought he was going to take a moment of pause. And when you saw that, that's when Bonchan thought he found his opportune moment. But Mena, again, they're high level. Some of the strongest loot players you see in the world in course in those situations, depending on what it is. You're going to think on the exact same wavelength in terms of how they want to oppress you, as well as how you're going to counter. And there's another OD uppercut to interrupt some pressure. Oh, here in this anchor match once again between these two. He might get six games in a row. Let's see how it goes. It's looking like it right now. And a little bit of a stagger again into the Carlton Jazz. Off of that counter hit. Yeah, yeah. making him pay that fee just in case if he wants to get out of that corner. Still hasn't been able to get the perfect parry on the heavy knuckle, though. I like that he's holding the parry. No drive reversal from that, though. Well, he got a perfect parry off of something. Yeah, that's what it is. As long as you get the perfect parry in the right situation at the right time. It's all good. No anti-air, surprisingly. Did not you, even a crouching heavy. Have you seen how laser focused these guys are on the ground? I don't blame them for not anti-airing. What? Oh, oh it. what a top. I don't know. Man, RD kind of like shook up in his seat. I don't know if he wanted to do that overhead. Uh, Pretty far. Not. From there, gets the back throw. Positional advantage in Mena's favor. He can turn this round around in this scenario. Bonchan doesn't want to put himself in burnout unless it's going to be a hit oh. confirm or something. Word. And oh my! Throw. Hang on a minute, someone's gonna have to take a risk. They're walking it out here, one button will do it. As soon as green happens for anybody on the drive gauge, best believe it's gonna be an OD or a They've drive They've still rush. got level ones available. Oh boy. They just, oh dear, that's scary. And there's the drive rush. Ah, oh, so you thought Bonchan also thought it was his turn, but no, he was way too close. Great reactions from NRD. I think he set up the position to kind of see that drive rush coming there. Good that he checked it with the light kick there, but he can actually Put his team in a very good position, and he's confident with that as well. Oh my god, it's all falling apart for Bonchan. Men RD establishing that life lead early, getting that drive gauge back as well. What's the choice now for Bonchan on defense? Okay. Very deep uppercut. He's not deterred by the situation here, and that is going to close it out because he's going to get the flash knuckle into the 20 points to equalize for Team Bandits here. So that means we're at 60 apiece, Vicious. Oh my god. They heard our cries, man. We want more Street Fighter? Guess what? NRD delivered. He said, you got it. The bandits, stay alive! To bring ourselves into another big dilemma. The bandits, they gotta switch it up now. They gotta switch sides. Major deliberations. And this is it, because we saw this in you guys this SFL at one point. This has probably happened with us, according to my memory. But dude, again, <laughs> the back and forth. You sure? <laughs> uh, I should be sure. The back and forth these guys had as well. But I, I noticed there were a lot more situations this time round, similar to the previous encounter these guys had, that Bonchan capitulated over Mena RD. And I think he thrives off that, the crowd energy, the kind of precarious situation that Bonchan's always in and the panic that he might be feeling. But he was pretty composed in a lot of situations, yeah. even when he was at a huge life deficit there, turning things around. And we, again, we saw a lot more OD uppercuts in neutral, or sorry, to counter drive rush cancel pressure on wake up. He From was again, time primarily. Yeah, and you notice as well, he's getting a bit too aggro, a bit too uh, impatient there with the drive rushes. And because Mena had a huge success rate with checking a lot of drive rushes, different buttons, by the way, crouch, medium mm -hmm. kick, crouch, medium punch, stand light kick at one point as well. Everything where it mattered as well. And notice how those drive rushes with no co context came with when um, Bonchan was low on health or needed to turn around the game in his favor. We saw that Mena identified that, and boy, did he count it in style. Right, keeping himself within that range was the big, if you look at it, right, if you look at the replays itself, uh, even from the VAR from the very beginning, you're looking at the spacing that Mena RD has taken in consideration of the drive gauge and the life from Bonchan. So it's a very good awareness, good call out there from Jammers as well, but most of the time you're looking at it, Mena RD looking at complete control, even in the moments where it was a single hit left for either competitor. You can see it there, throwing it out, thrived off that energy. And there, that perfect parry. Even when situations are not good for him, he can still make things work out. And then there's those grabs. 
taking it in there as well. And I don't think we, we only saw level threes this time round. I don't think we saw any level twos or level ones. It was really to just let's firm and get the big damage here because mm -hmm. that's where we were going to strike the real fear into our opponent. And then this is ex I was worried because I thought one of those would do a Vulcan Ooh. Blast, but Bonchan was too close because he's going to try and do something else. But Meta beat into the punch there. To Weird the stand like kick, yeah. <laughs> That's what you do. I love that jump. Oh my god, yeah. I, it still surprises me seeing it again. What happened here? So yeah, just baited because he thought our uppercut was going to come out and then he just flinched. Is all it took because again, that was... You could see, you could see the expression on Bonchan's face. He was like, I guessed, I guessed, man. But it was beautiful that Menno goes for a shimmy there or a throw bait there because it's too close to the corner and Bonchan already knew what was happening into the corner when we were on that side of the screen. He wasn't really winning many exchanges. He said, okay, I might need to take to prevent that. You're not really thinking about backdash or holding up back at that point either. So it's very hard to make these decisions on the fly like that. Sure. Make sure you're still in the right mental state and make sure the outcome is conducive to you. Yeah. It's crazy sometimes how yeah. it's hard to keep out everything. All the top players say Street Fighter 6 is difficult, but there's so much more into consideration, but we got to consider this. It's currently a tie game. Ladies and gentlemen, 60 points to 60 points for both Ends Bandits and FAV Gaming. It is time to make the switch. If you're talking about making hard decisions, this might just be the hardest one yet. Who are you sending off from the Bandits camp to try to close it? And who's going to be countering from the side of FAV Gaming? And the best part about that is they still got that time to deliberate, kind of chill on it for a while before they even get into the battle. <laughs> it's crazy because Mena makes the most sense to close it out here. I agree. Especially with what the results have been producing. Bonchan, he may have to sit this one I out. also <laughs> agree with he that. With the way that it went out, 3-0 in favor of Mena RD. Well, remember, he lost the last exchange as well in terms of the first of three, and it's gotten to this point. So it's like, okay, do we get Tokido to do it and then have a Mena RD versus Tokido, Capcom Cup 2017? Grand final there. We put Sako up to the plate, but he's not going to do it because he don't like the Luke matchup. So hear me out. How wild and far-fetched would it be to save Ryusei? Because he's done this before. He's been in a clutch situation where he has to face off against one of the Lukes in Japan. Do you know what? But we've seen a lot of OD Amnesias be unsuccessful today. Do you want to put yourself in that situation? But he has, he's not really like keen to doing that as much, I feel like. True. It's, it's hard. It's crazy. That's the best part. Well, yeah, this is the thing. And we said this time and time again, right? It's just it's, uh, the, the strength in depth that FAV have. You never thought they'd be in a situation like this. It's like, okay, so who do we put up? Does Bonchan say, give me, give me one more shot. I can get the title for us. I don't know, man. That's, like, that's too much to ask for. That's too much to ask in everybody. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, Come on that's now. Fair, that's fair. <laughs> but immediately after facing off Mena RD in comparison, like what, how many times over? Literally since the beginning of the day. Well, Literally it, since it, the beginning it, of the day. Uh, look, in, the so, anchor in the anchor match, sudden death, and then anchor matches again and again and again. So Tokido beat Kaba, Tokido beat Zhao Hai, Tokido beat Chris T. Maybe? Uh, so Tokido, perhaps? I mean, like, Maybe. yeah. Okay. If we're going off statistics alone, but then He's hot. He's if, the I, if I remove the statistics, mental state, the frame of mind, remember, that's an exuberant crowd. It could True. be anything. But. We're about to find out, ladies and gentlemen, our last match. It seems the fixture has been determined. And it will be... Man! Ryusei! Godlike. <laughs> Actually godlike. He's been in this position before, I tell you. In Street Fighter League Japan, he is not a stranger having a face-off in the anger spot against a Luke player. However, oh my, wait a minute. Wait a minute? What if it's Blanc? Oh no, wait, did, he, did he lock in Luke? Uh, he I still has so. a chance to switch, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, okay. It doesn't he matter. Does, he does, okay, he does, he does. so... Very familiar situation for Ryusei. However, Mena has the option of going into Blanca if he loses the first game. Right here, baby. Right here. Oh, yes. called it. <laughs> All right, I'll give you your flowers. Don't worry. That's a good choice because it's been a little while since he's come on. He's been watching. He's been eyeing up the teammates in the back. Maybe he felt it's like, look, I, I really need to do something now. And it, it is a game changer. It is SFL World Championship game changer yeah. as he uh, squints yeah. at the screen. What's funny is, like, Kaba's already kind of like Loki popping off. He was looking at like the camp behind him, or at least in the stands. I'd imagine this is something that he was already prepared for. Like, Menardi, obviously, he has a pocket JP in his own hands as well, and also faces off against Xiao Hai, if need be, and also the other JPs of the world. So, well, we'll see, man. Kaba was already looking or sounding kind of confident. I can kind of hear him from here. He's like already popping off. So. We'll see well, how it plays out. They're, they're talking about it right now. Zhaohai is giving Mena RD a little bit of tips, maybe, maybe some insider knowledge at a certain situation on how to counter a certain thing, because again, he does play JP. He has a formidable JP himself. 
hailing from the Chinese region. And yeah, it is Luke. He sets up with the JP here, Ryuse. He's probably had a little chat with Bonchan, or he's had enough data to collect over exactly the, the past six encounters, or so I say three encounters. Yeah. But my, my biggest matches. fear is how he responds to the chaos that Blanca can deliver to him if the Luke doesn't do it from an RD. He would have think he would have thought about that for sure because usually if you're going up with someone with dual mains or more than one character in their pocket, you think about one, you practice for one, but you have to keep the other oh, one in the back of your mind just in I case. Forget. Mena RD is also not one to shy away from the JP mirror match. He's done so before at Street Fighter League uh, US. Okay. Man, this is tough. This is actually the, the hardest draw. It might be one of the toughest matches you see of the weekend. Kaba hyping up the crowd. He's doing our job for us. Hey, Same man. with Chris Atarian. Appreciate y'all. Keep, keep that noise. Keep that energy, ladies and gentlemen, because this is the final match here at SFL World Championships. Ryuse. Mena RD duking it out to see who wins the title and the four rings. Let's get to it. This is essentially a $50,000 money match. Well, we'll see. First Blood literally went to a sandblaster there. And you've got to be careful. I mean, there was a whiff punish there, but no dry rush cancel. Amnesia to kick things off. Well, I might have lied when I said he's not too keen on throwing it out there like that, but you know? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Really full screen already, low on drive gauge, full Snap. conversion there for Ryuse, and he is laser focused from what I can see on that player camp. He's going to set up a departure as well. He's got the 15 degree tilt, Jammers. He is definitely on serious game yeah. mode for sure. Look at the damage to the drive gauge and also the chip, putting himself in there. Totally fine with that because he has the corner positioning. Oh, but this really turns the team. Oh, oh he got hit. What he timed it. He wasn't expecting the strike to last that long there, and he gets the overhead kick. He's with the button there, he really wanted the three piece there, gets the crouch fist and his drive gauge is back, but so is Mena RDs. Sam Blaster could get rid of the Odin departure, this is huge, and he can take the round. He's got to do the whole thing. Man. Even in perfect parry, where's the scaling, man? I mean, he was going to do a decent amount of damage anyway, and he built the level <laughs> two punish counter, flash knuckle, but too far to get any sort of conversion. And it will be interdiction. Mm. That rolls the animation here, but what's the set play going to be? Is it going to be Odie's departure? Or will he chase him down? Why not? He, he does chase, though. No, he walks him down. <gasps> he okay. called him out, too. But you say went for the jump after the faint. I mean, the hammer of justice is not pulled back for no reason. Oh, there you go. Gets out of there and then tries to faint something with a check with the heavy flash knuckle. Odie departure. He just waits. And only one connected because the other one disappeared off screen. Yeah, same with this, this instance as well. Oh, you thought you could do that so right in front of him? The recovery gets clipped. He is being so stubborn by making sure he doesn't get any sort of scenario from those departures. Lands at level three. Drive rushes in. Throw what tech there from me. You say the check. So delayed. He's got to push him away. He has to keep him out. That could oh have been my God. Surely. Crouch and medium punch, perhaps? Even crouch and medium kick? 14. It could have caught him with a sweep, but it's irrelevant right now because he gets the target combo, the triple threat, into... The OD uppercut here, this first game, boy. OD gonna, on OD. He's going to change everything, gets the conversion oh, once again. what was that? Maybe one of the hammer. Oh, the head block. Great defense from Mena RD. The drive gauge slightly in favor of Mena. And this is exactly what he needs to get his offense and the quarter carry. More importantly, spine buster, that's one. Damn, oh, okay. who's popping off in the crowd? I hear you. He tried to press a the button. There's a crouching fish. You can't get out of there. And the amnesia failed attempt. And he's trying to perfect parry. He's feeling the pressure, Vicious. He's in you there. You think you could get a departure here? Meta RD immediately going right into the drive rush to punish accordingly. Ryusei, he is stuck in the hot seat. We still got a best of three to go with Bonchan. Immediately standing up to give advice. The 30-year-old pro from Japan. Ryusei, no stranger to the readjustments. No stranger to any scenarios, I feel like. Would you believe at one point it was 50 10 to FAV? Yes, I can. And what? They turn around. It's, F it's FAV. <laughs> and he's getting final words, wise words from Bonchan. His perception on when Amnesia is going to come out is huge, Mena. He knows the stakes of oh, what yeah. they have to do. And Amnesia, I really got to give credit for that. Elite game sense for sure. Man, word. Why not? Shake it up. We've punished there with a the stand fierce. Gonna set up shot with the departure as well. Again! Oh, okay. It's something he's not expecting, and he can't formulate a strategy to counter it on the fly. 
It's very difficult to do that in this game. Oh dear, that's huge. Trying right. to get somewhat of a bait. Ryusei trying to back up. Trying to swing with that fierce, but then RD getting the big opening now. I like the projectile to stop the OD amnesia and wake up there. He's still doing the projectiles and it is not working uh -oh. out. He's thinking he is definitely deep in thought while he's actively playing. He's like, how do we turn this around for FAV? But Mena RD, he is literally on championship point here, but a conversion for Ryusei. Keeps him back in the mid screen. He can't. Oh, That's a punish! No, no, I thought that was going to be a punish. Never mind. All right, here comes Lavushka. He needs the side swap. And he will jump over and set up something nice. Did he leaves him too far. No, he's going to attack the drive gauge. This is huge. Do it Bang. again. BT. Try to bait something there. Didn't quite work out. Needs to replenish as much drive gauge as possible until that arbitrary sweep comes through. And Another again. one. That was a good challenge. No, he still gets the pickup, though. Wasn't good enough of a challenge to keep Ryusei knocked down. This is huge. If Ryusei can take this to one apiece. That'll be a big choice there for Mena and the check. He's been checking drive oh, rushes for damn day. Builds level three for himself if he wanted to now, especially after that throw. Another oh one. He's gonna he do it again. Are you gonna bulldog him? Bodjet has his hand on his head. He's stressing out. <laughs> he's gonna side swap here and he's gonna burn Mena RD out, which limits his options. But what's it gonna be? Is he gonna firm it or is he gonna try and escape with a super? That's the question. He's gonna firm it. Has to firm it a little bit longer. He tried to bait something, but just by doing the roundhouse alone. Again, he's gonna throw away. He's gonna no, he press the button. Yeah, he's he press the button. Hey, look, we used to didn't believe it. This is it. Guess for game. He might get his drive gauge back in time. Just a little second. And the grab gets teched. He's got to block it out, where you say he can't jump or anything. His options are severely limited. He's fighting two for nail. The defense has to be immaculate. The yeah. approach is there. That's a counter hit. Set up the departure. And RD. Do not fall asleep on that zone again because he'll drive rush in. And the grab takes it from Mena RD and Team Bandit. They are your Street Fighter League 2023 Championship players. Absolutely phenomenal. From the 50 10 down to 10 and then 70 60. And they're right in the center. We used to have it in the country. But it was unfortunate for him. But the mental fortitude, the captain's contribution, holds it there. For Mena RD showing you why he's one of the greatest Street Fighter players of all time in our community. The US has truly cultivated some of the finest champions, and it's been proven here. It's not me just saying it, but more specifically, the Dominican Republic. Again, stand up, DR. That is all you, ladies and gentlemen. That was brilliant to see. You can hear the crowds make the noise, respectively, showing you why he's one of the role models, the icons of the Eps. Only 24 years of age and compete with some of the finest that have been in our scene for such a long time. This it's, is brilliant it's, to it's see. So, it, it's so hard, man, to like, even consider the amount of brain power being used towards the end of that set, but it's all so relieving to be like, you know, you walk up to your opponents, Truly good friends, all of them, all across the board, too. It's cool to at least congratulate the other, considering how much history there is between them and how much camaraderie there is, despite being on different teams. Well, look, this isn't a solo effort. Obviously, men are closed out the final game, but this is a team effort. Kava, Zhao Hai, Chris T doing their work during the regular season of SFL US, as well as doing the deed here for the SFL World Championships. They hold it up and they represent bandits. Nice and high. Be very proud of yourselves, gentlemen. A well for hard earned victory. Commiserations to Team FAV because, dude, they took it down to the wire. Yeah. They had a very solid strategy at the start. But boy, did these guys turn it around. Let's hand it over to Rob TV. So give it up for Street Fighter League World Championship 2023. Bandit! Now, first and foremost, as you can see, looking at this camera right now, they are fighting for this right here. This is what they earn. And of course, that is the Street Fighter League World Championship rings. Kaba, you deserve it, not me. Go ahead, put your finger out, brother. There you go. There you go. You show earned off, that, everyone, my show guys. It off. You earned that. 
Love to see it. Mena RD, I'm gonna start with you. You already are a two-time Capcom Cup champion, but now for the first time, you can call yourself a Street Fighter League World Champion. What is going through your mind right now, brother? What's going through my mind is that, you know, all due respect to the Japanese players, I didn't think it was an honest, you know, perspective of our skill that we've never won. Only Japan has won the Street Fighter League. So I promise you, and I promise the Blue Coast team that's here present, I was gonna bring it home because y'all deserve it. And here you are, you're world champions too. So this is a question for Kaba. You said, Cuando FN Isles, four uh. FN years, that's what you say when you won Street Fighter League US, you are now world champion. Tell us about your journey and the triumph that you feel right now. Incredible, realmente. O sea, fueron cuatro largos años de pura frustración, cogiendo tabla. O sea, nos estaban dando durísimo. Pero qué nosotros hicimos? Nos levantamos y seguimos adelante. Mira, ahora somos campeones. Todo el que tiene una camiseta de Bandis ahí, eso vale el triple ahora mismo. Ahora mismo esa camiseta vale el triple ahora mismo. Bandis Queen, carajo. That bandage shirt expensive. That's the first thing I'm gonna translate. He said the bandage shirt has tripled its price now. <laughs> Love it. He said it's been you know four very long years and we've been losing a lot. It's been it's been a process, you know, and it's it's inspiring that finally we, we got to make it happen and that it's indescriptible. You know, there's no words for this for this feeling. Chris Tatarian. My brother, we saw it in your face. We saw it in your gameplay. We know how much this type of thing means to you. Even the people that have doubted you, they can call you this and that, but now they have to make sure they add world champion at the end. What does that mean to you, Chris? First of all, I want to give all glory to God because without him, we would not be here standing up in front of everybody right now. So. It, it means everything to me. I mean, we literally, as soon as Street Fighter League was over, we started training very, very hard every single day. Get home from work, train for hours and hours. I got to thank my family for supporting me the whole time. My girlfriend was very patient with me the whole time we were training. <laughs> That's my pops right there. Got that victory for him. Thank you to, to Mena. That's Sharky right there. We, we tried our best. You know, there were some losses, there were some wins, but. Whatever needed to happen, happened in order for this man to show his true skills. So I want to I wanna shout out to everybody that supports us. And uh, glory to God, man. Glory to God. We wouldn't be here without him. And last but not least, Xiao Hai. You know, your name means little child in Chinese. So you started off really early in your uh, young childhood. And you've been dominating the scene for so long. And now you have become a world champion. How were you able to stay in scene for so long? How to? Um, I, I love fighting games. Uh, yes, I love fighting games. Yeah! Yeah! Because, yeah! because uh, the fighting games, because uh, my English is not so good. But when I sit down here, it's the language for us, right? Yes! Yes! Yeah. yes! It, it's amazing, it's amazing. Uh, I'm so happy Mena find me with the, uh, be the teammate. Because Mena become the world champion. Oh, it's amazing for me. Yeah, I'm so happy. Uh, but my performance is not too good, so it's a long way for me. Yeah. So thank you, Mena. Thank you, Bandis. Thank you, Bandis. Thank you, thank you everyone, yeah. Okay, and before we move on to our next part, I do want to make sure we do something extremely important. Can we please show some love? Can we please show some energy for FAV Gaming? Phenomenal, phenomenal.
And now we have a very special and important guest with us. I'd like to welcome Ms. Yukiko Yoshino, the Chief Design Officer from Tayo Holdings. Please come on stage. As you all see, the check is for $80,000, $80,000, and this is supported by Tayo Holdings. Thank you very much and congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a long buildup. There were three different Street Fighter leagues all around the world. We, were, we set out to find the best team in the world, and we have finally done it. One more time, make some noise for the best team in the world, the Street Fighter League World Champions, Team Vega! But big congratulations to our winners, our champions representing Street Fighter League US, and now the world champs. It is Team Bandits. Again, I do want to sincerely thank everybody behind every single project. I know we're supposed to recap the event at this point, but again, it is with, without saying, these guys are working so hard in production from the US side, from the EU side, from the Japan side. Again, big thank you to you guys for even giving us a shot in the FTC and making our dreams come true even further. And all the guys, Back home as well, Tasty Steve, St. Cola, as well as Logan Sama, F-Word. Yo, you guys, the hottest talent in the world for sure. Wish you could have been here with us. It's been amazing watching those guys literally upgrade their title from the US champions to the global champions there. They'll have the bragging rights until that next season. I'm jealous of those rings, man. They look good on all four of those really players do. there. Shout out to Cabot, by the way. He said, hey, listen. Our shirt is unavailable to purchase, but yeah. the, the, the price has tripled. I've already got two copies of each, so I'm fine. Nah, I'm big chilling. That's brilliant to see. And again, you heard it there from Jao Hai himself. He said, my English might not be so good, but hey, when I sit down, we all understand fighting games. That's the universal language. It's just me paraphrasing there. But hey, these guys, and you hear it from our Capcom Cup champion. Always wise words. Always making everyone feel included and everyone have positive spirits from his speeches. And again, even he's elated. Everyone's going to be elated. And he shows so much respect and admiration for FAV Gaming because, again, he looked up to those guys for years. No doubt. Until he was very, able very to, young age. Yes, until he could compete alongside them, against them on the world's biggest stage, and even having another shot here to make sure he gets that title for his team, Bandits. But what a gem we have in the scene here with Team Bandits as a whole. So shout out to those guys Truly. for playing phenomenal today. And for everybody tuning in, again, we've been so adamant about really hammering home who's going to take down Capcom Cup. So you guys taking the time out to check out today's schedule. We really truly appreciate you. And speaking of the schedule, let's take a look again. A reminder, the big finale of Capcom Cup 10 happening tomorrow for the grand finals, starting off with top 16 at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Please, 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 you've waited for so long to see the culmination of all the fine talent, to figure out who will become our very first millionaire and ever very first Street Fighter VI champion. It's all coming to a close really, really soon. But first and foremost, Jammers, man. It's a pleasure. You're godlike, bro. Always a Everybody pleasure. Everybody knows it. This is what we love doing. And again, the Street Fighter VI action doesn't stop here. You don't want to miss tomorrow where we crown our first million dollar championship. Rest up, recuperate your energy, and we'll see you on this channel tomorrow for the top 16. I was highly aware of that, and he still threw the fireball in. I can't believe he still threw the fireball anyway. There we go. Woo! I think he was very cognitively detonated. He doesn't need to snap his fingers. Doesn't want to give him any free space here, Zhao Hai. Now he has to run in at this point, but I don't think he's going to get the chance. What a trade-off! He knew it! He was willing to risk it because it would only benefit him with a round win. It's but not pressing anything for a good five to 10 seconds. Initiate something with a throw. Do it again. Get the grab. Try to rush again. Oh, the uppercut. Good awareness. Going for the dunk for the damage. Dunk 
again. Bonchan needs a drive rush cancel. He's got to be careful what medium he uses. It could get with punished. Dropping it out. The low! He gets the conversion of the opener! Level 3 catches Bonchan walking back! All the way down to Memphis! The bandits are still alive! Because of the Vulcan Blast and how close he is. And the delay jab worked. The one thing Bonchan was trying to do on his defense, it doesn't work for him when he's on offense. And Mena RD takes that. And again, he's looking to get burnt out here. And that's not even going to be the problem because he will lose the exchange with Tokido. And it'll be 2 1 for FAV Gaming in this first. He can chip. <gasps> what? Oh! oh my word, he still blocks it. He's got to deal with this Lavushka. He's done. He could grab him. Oh no! The first goal's actually interrupted. The OD Shoryuken after the invincibility was gone. Worst chief executive officer decision you've made if you do it. But what if it works? No. Ah, oh, the delay, you saw it too. Snap the back. Ugh, cash and check the DDT. Enough damage. A 3 0 oh, sweep. Great patience there, resilience. But if you lose this, bandits are in the finals. Throw. Might as well do it again. Go out with a bang. Mm -hmm. And I literally. That fierce was far? Far enough? He needs an SPD at this point, and he's done. That's not going to be the round, but he is done. Oh, no, I lied to you. What are you talking about? Ah, what are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean? Hey, it's no level two yet. And a bad amnesia once again. And he will close it out with Shout to Earth. Bang, man, RD. And the Bandits camp reign over the Team EU champs. He gets out, and because he defended that, that puts him in pole position to take this round fish. Exactly it. He has nothing else to fear. The damage mitigated, the gauge drained. It was all Shao Hai after that. And Max still scared, Kaba, with his ball oh, choices. Oh, that's everything. He's cashing out. He is doing everything vicious. Scout, uh, you know, I think he's alive by a pixel. Maybe. I, I think he's alive by a pixel. There you go. Good call. Oh, One hit will That's give his team the advantage, and he doesn't even need the super up. Catch him. Oh. Using it so sparingly. Gave Shao Hai a little false sense of security as well. Majority of the times you talk about that, the big adaptation of using a Christitarian. Doesn't want to burn himself out. He doesn't want to get burnt out, but the level two is there, and I think he's got him in the range. The last hit should probably do it quite. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, Kaba into level three damage. Now the lead is with Kaba right oh, now, and he's God, really he's trying to burn he's out Sakonoko's beat. Being patient about it, I like it. Oh dear. Now, no, no, no. Jammers, I'm going to ask you a question. That was a four fierce, but it was after the drive rush. Well, on that range anyway. This is Christy. Could still My God. establishing that life lead early, getting that drive gauge back as well. What's the choice now for Bonchan on defense? Okay. Very deep uppercut. He's not deterred by the situation here, and that is going to close it out because he's going to get the flash knuckle. Set up the departure. Then RD. Do not fall asleep on that zoning gate because he'll drive rush in. And the grab takes it for Mena RD and Team Bandit. They are your Street Fighter League 2023. The captain's contribution holds it there by players of all time in our community. The US has truly cultivated some of the finest champions, and it's been proven here. It's not me just saying it, but more specifically, the Dominican Republic. Again, stand up, DR. That is all you, ladies and gentlemen. That was brilliant to see. You can hear the crowds. Very solid strategy at the start but boy did these guys yeah. because